Oh, look at that. I think it worked. The Famicom version of this has an epic intro, too. <laughs> Excuse me. Good evening from my time zone, really, really long a thon. I'm so glad to be back again. Diner of the Car Crashing Channel. <laughs> DQRTA Marathon is on right now, but <laughs> for those who, uh... Yeah, Jerry Kandro, who I think has run for really, really long time, is running Dragon Quest XI right now. But, who, who be that they say? I want to run the old one here. Check out these, uh... Weird resolution sidebars of this uh, nice title card. Way nicer than uh, any others in the earlier series. Yeah, this game came out in 1993. Uh, <laughs> press RRLAT in chat if this game is older than you. <laughs> or just post Mothman. Well, yeah, I've run this game before. I forgot to submit anything for really, really lots of lore this year, and I was kind of sad about it. Then I got hauled back into Fantasy Star Online. I've been playing that for three weeks, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm running a race of this tomorrow night. I better practice for that. So, hi, this is my practice run. We'll maybe do the, um, the bonus scene in Nismet Village. If, we, if it looks like we have time. Otherwise, uh, once again, I'm going to try and beat my PB in seven hours and one minute. Somehow I'm the only runner who hasn't got sub seven on the leaderboard. I feel like I should be able to do it, but I just don't have it. Maybe it's because I keep doing these marathon strats that are, you know, the show must go on <laughs> kind of mentality. Other monitor. I'll sit up and look at him if I have to. Okay. Has anyone got uh, a name? This name's going to appear a few times. Notice how text is printed out one letter per one frame, so longer names means I will lose frames. So be merciful and pick a short name, please. Also, picking mail will um, shorten some dialogue by about five lines at the beginning of chapter five, you know, uh, 70 frames. <laughs> I don't know. Few seconds, but if I have female hero, I can equip the golden barrette for a little bit more defense power for chapter 5's first boss battle. Uh, yeah. How about we just go with the old RR lol? For question mark? Everyone wants question mark. Alright, perfect. And uh, male or female? These are the two options of character select long before I'm picking female. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan. Uh, and I'm gonna pick slow, and I'm gonna start the timer in uh, five seconds from now. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, start! Alright, we're the Royal Soldiers. This is a story of a, a Royal Soldiers that was Malcolm called Brilliant. One of the Royal Soldiers is you, Ragnar. One morning, the King summons all the soldiers to the castle to speak to them. The King will speak to you. Listen carefully. Everyone at ease. You must have heard the rumor that children have been vanishing recently. The mother of some intimate village came to me in tears this morning, begging for help. As the king of this country, I cannot ignore this problem any longer. Find the cause of these disappearances. Report back to me, my soldier. Oh, soldier, please find our children. They're alive. I know it. Huh? What is this, an MC Chris routine? I'm... I'm Ragnar? I'm Ragnar? Well, thanks for the good luck. I'll, I'll definitely need it. Dragon Warrior 4's random number generator is seeded by... <laughs> How many cycles it took to execute the last assembly command. Like, it, you can, like, wiggle your inputs at the beginning and it'll, like, just fire the game up in an emulator and try to get the same thing to happen twice. You won't. You just won't. Like, wiggling your wiggling your d-pad and flicking buttons. Like, go watch the task with input display on. You'll see some amazing things. Oops, I was supposed to equip in town, but it's okay. So anyway, Detective Ragnar, we're supposed to just find some missing children. We probably don't need a sword to do that, so we sell the sword and get a wooden hat for more defense power. And the castle is well guarded. This, this is safe territory. You can walk back and forth on here until a certain point in the music. However, I had the menu open and was equipping stuff. I was supposed to do that inside. Okay, yeah, the second measure of the of the second phrase when you walk up. And we have our first encounter already. I'm already pressing B quickly because this is faster than setting the battle speed the fastest. <laughs> and just watching everything happen. Um, I don't have an auto-fire controller, but uh, somehow I do still have the, the endurance to marathon match. Not like, you know, it's not a sprint, 
<laughs> you just have to go fast enough over about seven hours. I'll be, I'll, I'll change it to manual uh, during the final battle. That's it. <laughs> so the other thing about running away from random encounters in this game, uh, yeah, the, the DS version of this game is called Chapters of the Chosen. It's kind of like you play as like different band members who will join up and form a progressive rock supergroup at the end in Chapter 5 to join the hero who we named earlier. I like that two people had the idea for question mark. Um, so yeah, in chapters 1 through 4, when you fail to run away from a battle, uh, there's only a 75% chance that uh, one of your foes will make a move. So I, I have to mash for mash B for like an indeterminate amount of time. I can wiggle the D-pad, I think, to make the, the text prompts come up faster too. Okay, they both attacked. Uh, also, your chances of running away are uh, 50%, 50%, 75%. Oops, I'm supposed to arrive here at nighttime, and even the day-night cycle is random in this game. There we go. Just didn't react when I was on 9 o'clock. Okay. We're getting ready to wake up back home after a, a rough battle. I have to either talk to this kid or talk to Alex in jail. Talking to the kid is faster. Unequipping first is uh, optional humor. Now we just have to get into an encounter and get wiped out. Funny that because I don't have a copper sword, I can only do four damage to myself. Now here I can just mash AB with both my thumbs. And a feature kept from Dragon Warrior 3, you're allowed to target your own party in this. Demon Stump is very powerful, that's great. So now I lose half of the five gold that I have left. Wake up in church, back in Berlin, excellent. Didn't even have to spend a night in the drunk tank. And we're still naked, let's talk to Flora. What? Alex, my husband, is in Ismet Village, take pot stealing, take me there, please! This is really, really lots of lore, so... I'll do my best to read all the text boxes aloud as they stray by. <laughs> it's maybe a difficult energy to maintain all night, but uh, who knows? Maybe it's uh, like maybe I'm like Celine Dion. I just build up energy, you know. I, <laughs> I can't believe it's been three weeks since I streamed or performed in any way. I haven't streamed on my own stream, and really, really long a thon was ready for me when during cosmic alignment when I just go, okay, I need to. Quit PSO for a bit. Let's see what else is going on on Discord. Oh look, Miller Run is needed for the marathon I wish I was part of. Perfect! <laughs> and I can squeeze this into my schedule before my other marathon run tomorrow night. <laughs> Perfect. Once again, we're still running away from all enemies. We'll get our best in slot weapon in the final area of this game. Now with the rest of my money... I can buy three herbals. Maybe two is ideal, actually. Yeah, this could be foolish. This is not enough to revive Healy. Wait, we're not buying anything yet. We are turning in <laughs> our quest reward. Go over here. It's you, isn't it? Who are you, ma'am? Don't you recognize me? I'm Flora, your wife! Don't you even remember this? No, it's a kiss. Flora, yes, it's me! What came over me? I must have lost my mind in fear after being attacked by monsters. Soldier, thanks for finding me. I remember hearing this from some children. The secret playground is four steps to the south and four steps to the east of the village signpost. You may find something there. Be careful, soldier. And that's right, I don't even need to save for this. We're just proceeding directly to the secret playground. Ah, yes, that's a place where kids would probably go. When I grew up, there was a place called the Dirt Hills, where there were no houses. It was just exactly what it sounded like, just little hills made of dirt with, like, scraggly grass growing on them. And we would just ride our bikes up and down there. Our playground had a bunch of tractor tires lying down, and some that were, like, half dug into the ground to make a, a maze, I guess. But you could run along the walls, of course. They're just big, round, bouncy tires. So, yeah, of course, a Dragon Warrior tech sort of setting would have a place like this. <laughs> if you were a kid, you'd come play here, come on. Alright, Detective Ragnar is on the case. We're gonna follow this voice beckoning us. Come this way, come this way. Okay, I feel like I've been talking constantly since the run started. I was gonna say, yeah, this game came out in 1993. Tied with Kirby's Adventure for largest NES ROM of one entire megabyte. 
I crammed quite a bit on this game, and it was very expensive when it came out, even in 1993 dollars. So I think they just changed one coefficient to like double or triple the encounter rate so people would really get their money's worth, so to speak. There's a lot to explore in this game, and it would be a lot of fun if there weren't so many encounters in the way everywhere. Like, wow. <laughs> this is... This is kind of like the tales from Topographic Oceans of the console JRPG genre, like the, the NES era. Oh, this is new. Well, the game is still functioning. Hmm. Okay, as long as my NES doesn't lose power, it'll... Here's the thing, this cartridge has a... a has no battery in it. <laughs> but as long as my NES maintains power, it'll uh, retain whatever's saved on it. I am planning to death warp out of this cave, but I have to talk to my new companion, Healy, first. Who will heal me if I get below half HP, so I'm in the awkward position of... wanting to fail to run away so that the enemies who don't always act will wail on me. Going down to 8 HP right away is a good start, though, I gotta say. I did bring herbs with me. This might be getting too low, actually. Hello, Healy. You're a healer, but I dream of becoming human. If I make friends with humans, perhaps I'll become one. Take me along. Yes. Hooray! Thanks! Healy joined the party. Okay, let's get unsuited right away. I'm really liking this background, honestly, but, uh, you know, maybe we should keep it in. <laughs> I mean, like, if the game is functioning, you know... Oh, the foe suddenly attacked! Oh, perfect. Ragnar taking six. Ragnar taking seven. Amazing. Wow. Okay, I feel like this could be, like, potential PB. Better just keep it going at all costs. Uh, okay, it's, it's a bit visually trippy, I must admit. Liftoff split. A minute and a half ahead. In this way, you brat. I'll have an opportunity to save later. Again, we're just gonna run away from everything. Healy has 35 HP. There's a couple of, uh, helper characters in some chapters. Who, uh, well, most chapters, actually. Every chapter except two, honestly. Um, yeah, see how Healy is a kind healer? K for class? Oh, what the? Uh, let's block for a turn so Healy can heal himself. There we go. What happened there? Uh, let's block again. So Healy can heal me now? They are kind of beating up Healy, but Healy is not below half HP and will not- oh no. So much Ragnar's taking while blocking. I think I have to just, like, try to... No, I'm just gonna use one of my herbs. I need to make room in my inventory. So yeah, my best in slot weapon for Chapter 1 is waiting for me on the bottom floor of this tower. I'm sh maybe it was hard to visually tell what was going on there. Uh, <laughs> with the graphics and all, but we used the flying shoes, which flew us from the church. I guess it doesn't have a roof, don't ask. Apparently, only women are good at architecture in this game. I, I'll, I'll conclude that joke at a, about five hours from now in Chapter 5. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we flew right out of church to the top of this tower, and we saw some monster dragging a kid down the stairs, so we're giving chase. we got to climb to the bottom of the tower from the top. I think it's so cute. It's so awesome. When I Deacon, thanks for the raid, and thanks for the good luck, have fun. I will need both of those. Uh, we got some, uh, some glitchy snow going on here. <laughs> the NES card is not supposed to look like this. Here we go, best in slot weapon time. And I can equip this and swing it in the same turn during a battle, so... We're gonna... Yeah, don't have to... Don't even have to open the cumbersome slow menu, slow sticky UI of Dragon Warrior 4. Whip and target Pixie. Oswarg will shoot his Ice Bolt and then run out of MP. Healy blocked it, excellent. Healy, yeah, Healy knows when to block. He's played Fantasy Star 2 and 3 and 4, I think. <laughs> Understands the, the value of a good block. Oh, Ragnar's at 15 out of 27, so Healy won't heal me yet. I'll... Here's the thing, I'm not gonna get to save the game for quite a while, or maybe... 
I don't know, I haven't seen people... Let me, let me squint the chat here, I got glasses to make this easier to read. Them to you look a little different in this marathon. <laughs> I still gotta do another run of uh, Nocturne HD with like the triple Dante glitch. Uh, this is just something... I don't think luck really does anything. Well, there's plus three, we'll see if it does do something. Yeah, I'm in the spooky scenario here of, like, this Dragon Warrior 4 card has a dead battery, so I I can't turn off my NES. I can soft reset it, though. Like, you know, I can use the reset button. That keeps power cycling. That keeps RAM alive. So, plus three strength. Very good. Only two more HP, but that's not a big deal. Ragnar's HP could be anywhere from, like, 45 to 60, and your odds of survival are about the same all the way around. Probably should have used my herb on Healy. Oh, no, Healy was smart. Right, Healy was one below median. Yeah, the NES processor is, uh, makes mistakes while dividing, basically. I don't think the NES processor has, like, a dedicated d divide function. I think you just had to, like, hard code it. <laughs> have, like, a little math routine you'd have to jump to, I guess. Or just calculate it in house. Just double it and add 30. So, anyway, we are. Now we're going to fight until Ragnar is level 6. What'll probably actually happen is Ragnar will become level 7. Although I am on PB pace and I'm feeling, uh, feeling some greed. Make whatever they're saying up. Yeah, I know, I know the plot of this game pretty well. I could probably do that. Yeah, and here I'm just... I got both thumbs working, both buttons. Oh, and my controller is very close to the mic. That must be some uh, very strange uh, auto-sensory meridian response, I believe. Sucks to your ass, Mar, whatever. <laughs> I, can, I can mash behind my back, you know, over over the head. Yeah, like Van Halen, let's go. <laughs> like <me> Malmsteen. <laughs> Whoa, that was big damage. What was that? Ragnar must have got hit by Sap. I'm gonna have to use one of my herbs. This is, uh... Do I really think I can block through that in one turn? I'm going back to town anyway, probably, because it's a marathon. Still... <laughs> Match with your teeth, yeah, Prisee style. Prisee just completed his first run of this game. It was just, like, a f less than 30 seconds over 8 hours, <laughs> which is pretty similar to some of my early times. Yeah, the Oswald is gonna whiff. Healy lived. Excellent. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a couple of chests with big money in them in Chapter One, and then I would like to use that to get the bronze armor, which will really increase my odds of winning the boss fight of Chapter 1. The strength seed I can use... Three strength! Excellent! It's anywhere from... You can get plus one, two, or three. I got the three. Duxbill can cast Sap and reduce your defense to zero, so it's priority. I take them out first. And the big money chest is just uh, on my nine o'clock here on the way out, and then I can jump out the balcony to... Oh, right, in Dragon Warrior 4 you have to look at doors to open them. There you go, bronze armor costs 700, and I've surely made more than 60 from all the fighting I've been doing. Yeah, and when you when you come out of these like Ultima roof transitions, the game is just so much more likely to throw an encounter at you. I think it's because the game just like forgets it doesn't know what kind of tile you're walking onto, so it just doesn't apply a limit for you're not allowed to get an encounter here or whatever. I guess it like rolls a one in one hundred, <laughs> but uh, no, that doesn't make sense. Look at that, I'm level six already. So many big strength ups. 
but my max HP is not very high. Well, luckily, I'll have to come back to this tower from the top again, and I'll take all the fights on the way down, and that should get me to level 7. Which, uh, I don't know, 6 is the important one. Becoming level 7 doesn't shouldn't improve your odds, but I feel like I really need the, uh... <laughs> I didn't even take this fight, it's just so worthless. But I just can't help but flex. Look, even Healy is doing 3 damage. These dive rats can summon reinforcements, but I can use the Sword of Malice in battle, which was called the Cautery Sword and every other version of Dragon Quest for whatever reason. I can't afford that. I've played, that's like 1200. Wait. I need, I need a slot open. And I guess I'll stay at the end too. Gonna save the game, because... Wait, there's, no, there's actually no reason for me to save, though. Okay, you're just gonna have to believe me that, uh... Upgrading to bronze armor is just better. Than... Than having leather armor. Ragnar will get an iron shield of his own later in, uh... Chapter 5. You know what, we're just gonna go back at it. Because, like, I, I can't do anything with my money. So if I die over and over again and lose half, it won't matter. Why did I go after the healer first? I think I one-shot Duck's Bill, especially with all these strength ups I've been getting. And Ragnar's been reduced to zero defense, good job. And, yep, Duck's Bill was one-shotted. Are these weird graphical artifacts, or these blocky things in Bagaman use a background for them in this game? Um, I mean... This is my Dragon Warrior 4 cart sitting crooked, is all. <laughs> it's just, you know, blow on the cartridge type of stuff. <laughs> this means the contacts are not all lined up perfectly. It's, it's not an issue with the, uh, the capture feed. I'm seeing it on my CRT. <laughs> This just happened while I was sitting down, and, uh... I haven't saved the game yet. I get a free save as I finish, uh... Chapter 1, though. Here's the... Example of using the Sword of Malice to cast, the uh, Imitation Fireball. These healers sometimes resist it and take zero damage, but it worked on both of them, so I got that turn efficiency very good. Here's the Wing of Wyvern I can use to warp to the end once I'm done, but first I have to beat the boss waiting for me at the bottom of this tower. Yeah, it seems to be mostly around enemy sprites. And look at the UI at the top right corner there. Yeah, like the sprite it uses for top right of dialogue box. Uh, that's a little mistake there. I got some... Something that should be cleaned off my screen. Bonk, bonk. Walking into the Armo statue. Oh, they're in separate groups, so I'll just attack them one at a time here. Anyway. I got a new NES power supply, so... Um, I was afraid of using this cart last time, because I'm like, Oh, if my NES loses power, the run is toast. I'll play on my flash cart. But I forgot that, like, to actually battery save to the flash cart requires more effort than it just would on a normal NES with the actual game. You have to... You have to, like, say yes in a menu when you're done playing. Oh, Vitality plus three, that means... There we go, much better max HP roll. And we... Whoa, this guy's way somewhere else. At least he better not be in my way. Oh, Gopher. Gopher can build up power for a stronger attack. Trying to figure out what Ragnar's new max HP is. Healy with the reactive heal, very nice. Usually Healy is pretty fast. Excuse me. I went to the buffet tonight and got powered up. It was actually good for the first time in like years, because it was busy. And I realized that like, whoa. Buffets like, scale quadratically. Because like, if there's lots of people there, then the kitchen is working hard to make lots of fresh food, and it's not like stuff that has been chilling there in the corner for 35 minutes. 
Mmm, it was so good. So, I kind of enjoyed the melting into the seat and being like, wait, I can't full food coma? I have to be ready. Ready to present? Oh, here we go. Wait, I should not be taking fights anymore. I'm level 7. Like, getting, getting level 8 is a pipe dream. It's too many fights. And it won't improve your chances of winning either. You see... I guess I can start talking about what the boss fight is. This is like the biggest random encounter there is, and I've had the triple escape fail, so... That's the longest could have, could have possibly been in that fight. But we did it, we sat through all of it. Uh... Yeah, the... <laughs> you could call it like the MMO raid group. The giant Bantam there, that giant chicken as a sleep-on-hit attack, like sometimes after you take damage from its attack, you'll fall asleep. At least you take half damage while sleeping in this game. <laughs> You're just really nice and tucked in, just so snug. Alright, here we got the healing tile in the basement. So the, the boss of this place is going to be that pointy hat wizard we saw on the top floor. Just, uh, you know, looks like a spellcaster and like, yeah, is a spellcaster in terms of like, nose fire bow and will damage both of your guys. Looks like I only have 49 max HP. That is on the low end, but my strength rolls are so high that I just can't help but feel confident. So yeah, the Sorrow Shadow, the main attraction, is 250 HP. It's going to be a long fight. But it's also assisted by Giant Eyeball, which is an enemy that we'll see in random encounters again in Chapter 5 early on. But it's kind of a tough customer in its own right. Thing is, he's got like 60 HP, but after taking damage, is likely to go into a stance change. Where he'll attack twice, which will either, you know, miss or do one damage, or it'll be a critical hit for a guaranteed 15 damage. Well, the eyeball block, that's not a good sign here. Uh, Star of Shadow is not attacking too much. Healy is in trouble. Uh, Ragnar's really slow. I'm not going to bother using an herb on Healy. There we go. So now the eyeball has changed into a new thing that has 30 HP. Or, well, this will have to go down in two attacks. Or one attack. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, just go in. I think maybe... Oh, wow. I was going to say, that stick can do 20 damage. Healy could have gotten one shot by that, but I was lucky and uh, low rolled. I guess that's the plus three luck on Ragnar that we got from the Lux Seed. Kind of like <laughs> these little visual bugs are nice. They're kind of like an earthbound background aura to this game that normally just has empty black backgrounds. Kind of a very severe compromise that they made, make, making... Uh, Dragon Quest games for the NES. Healy is always selfless and will heal Ragnar. Okay, I got pretty lucky there that Healy didn't get targeted. Good block by Healy here. They can have damage from the spell. Healy still has a ton of MP left, so, you know, as long as I don't get into a spooky double death scenario. Which I'm gonna I'm gonna herb Healy right now. Because you know, I don't want him to get one shot by stick. And if there's any leftover herbs in Ragnar's inventory, I'll just have to, like, get rid of them in Chapter 5. They won't be needed anymore by the time Ragnar joins. So using all of them is just objectively good. Objectively! Un ontologically good. Well, I'm playing one of the good guys here. I'm Ragnar. I'm a soldier of Berlin, and I can't believe I lost. I'm sure other monsters will seek out and destroy the hero. All of mankind will eventually be offered up to the ruler of evil. I'll see you in the dark world. <laughs> Hooray! Thank you, sir. We can go home, right? I heard you can go home if you jump from the top. <laughs> I forgot to read uh, You fool! As you wish, I'll smash you to bits. So that soldier on the ground there has the, who's dying has the whole exposition here saying uh, there's a prophecy that a child will be born soon who will destroy the ruler of evil. So all the monsters are just trying to get a, you know get all the children they can, reap them all if the you know if there's no children then there won't be a child who beats the evil one. Haha. -ha. So yeah, I had to use the flying shoes to go from the you know the inner lake there. Back to the top of the tower, jump off the top of the tower to get in the fight, drop off the kids who went missing from Ismid Village, use the Wing of Wyvern, <laughs> go back to Berlin. There we go. Make sure you do this stuff in the right order. 
Uh, vibe check for money. 671? Hold on. I should have bought an iron shield in Ismit. Do I have anything left? I can, I can sell the scale shield. I can pull this off. Do they sell wings here? No. <laughs> I should have checked my money in Ismit. Well, I'll sink my money into a chain sickle then. <laughs> the change the call of shame. What a oh, so much lost time there with the menu shenanigans. So yeah, there's no gold total. Like my gold will reset back to zero in chapter two. All the liquid money that Ragnar had will be forgotten. All right, so let's solidify it and buy a change. Well, Ragnar, welcome back. I'm truly impressed with your accomplishment. I'm proud of having a soldier like you. Name, I will give you a reward. Name anything you want. What? You want to go on a journey? You intend to find and protect the hero who is still a child. I see. You'll have my full support. Ragnar, take this gift from me. A scholarship of 3,000 experience points. And then I get to sit on the A button for a bit. And get ready to fix the NES. Alright. Yeah, Ragnar would be very underleveled if he just joined up Chapter 5 at level 7, so this is, a, this is a nice amount. So I guess the final boss is worth 3,100 experience and 100 gold. Uh, I could have got Ragnar's own Iron Shield, though, without having to give one. That's so tragic. That would have actually just been the best. For... Anyway. Oh, uh, 122. I'm used to saying an hour, huh? If I was an hour behind in a T Nocturne run, I'd. Okay, saved on the Imperial Scrolls of Honor. Sometime long ago, there was a very tomboyish princess named Alina. One morning, the king summoned Princess Alina. Your father wishes to speak to you. Alina, your tutor informed me you're planning on a journey to test your strength. I forbid it. You're the princess of this country. I won't allow you to venture into the outside world where monsters are. Never go outside this castle. Is that clear? Wow, pretty harsh. Anyway. So it's the usual uh, birdcage scenario where you can't go outside, but all we gotta do is talk to Left Guard here and talk to uh, two other characters who will be our party members in about 70 seconds. Princess Alina, your tutor Bray told me you plan to go it alone. That's so reckless. If something happens to you, I, I mean the king, would be devastated. <laughs> so just because of a little ellipsis, someone made a guide for game facts. Princess, why are you such a tomboy? Your late mother was so refined. As your tutor, I feel responsible for how you've turned out. So Christo is going to be uh, a pilgrim, you know, white mage with uh, skinny swords. There's a fairy water in the back of the church that you can loot if you want. So yeah, the maid is repairing this wall, but by talking to those three characters, the maid will be out of the way. We can uh, falcon kick our way through the wall. Falcon kick! Alina, use your up B to recover. Now we make it all the way to the next town. Oh, wait a minute. Christo and Bray ratted us out. Princess, this is reckless to journey alone. If you're determined, I'll accompany you. I, your humble servant, will accompany you also, princess. Let's go now. Bray and Christo join party. Wee, 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 wee. Excellent. Okay. So our reward for completing... Chapter one is to have a party of multiple characters. There's two things you can do with this leather hat. I'm on the aggro route that sells it. It is the best in slot headpiece for Alina. It gives you a whole four more defense points, which is like one less damage versus Samson. We'll be getting through this early chapter two grind quicker is much better. Squeeze me, and once again, ugh, I shouldn't even fight this, but... These Cascos hoppers will just, yeah, they'll all target the same person. Oh, I guess it's each group will target the same person. Oh, let's go, Bray, with the Cypress Stick for lethal. But they only give one experience each. They're, and they're also resistant to Ice Bolt. Like, they're, they're just too hard to defeat for what they're worth. Everything else is good, though. Oh right, now that now that I've saved the game. I have to try to fix the visual snow, except it's it seems to have vanished anyway, actually. <laughs> also a nice prank gopher was bewildered. Oh well if it if it comes back we'll uh, work on it more. 
See if Christo and Bray together can take down Prank Gopher. They did. Excellent. Alina has gained a level. My only goal here is to get Christo to level 4 so he can learn the spell Upper, which uh, has been known as Buff in later translations for the series. Over on the DQRTA channel, Error of Ruto remarked that uh, the nice thing about playing the Dragon Quest series in Japanese is that the spell names have never changed. The spells have had the same names in every version. Makes me think, uh, maybe I should <laughs> go to the Ultimate Tournament and play as Dragon Quest Hero and insist, let's play in Japanese, because <laughs> I can read the spell names in Japanese. <laughs> My opponents can't. They're not cultured weebs like me who can read Kana in a flash. I mean, I've got a pretty good score for on Yuka and Kana, but I still feel like I'm not very fast. Alright, so... Oh yeah, I guess that's the thing about enemy initiative, too. If they go first, then... You know, not every enemy will act, maybe. Alright, so here's the other village of Tempe. This is our beef gate, as TV Tropes website would call it. TV Tropes web zone. The issue they're having is uh, they got an altar and a monster keeps coming to it. That wants uh, <laughs> wants girls sacrificed to it, and the mayor's daughter is next to be sacrificed and uh, just in a tizzy about it. Oh, Christo took a lot of damage from Rabbit Hound there. But of course, Selena is like, hey, I'm a girl. Offer me a sacrifice, see what happens. I'll, I'll give him a dragon punch. <laughs> so, we are just grinding to be powerful enough to stop the monster. We just need Christo to learn that nice defense up spell. Buff spells are actually good in this game. I, I've started playing Earthbound again, now that my, my buddy Platinum Hawk has fixed my Super Nintendo Flash Cart. <gasps> Christo took four. Okay, Christo got a spell off. Whew. Oh, he took four more. Hmm, I gotta scroll my notes. Chapter 2 is interesting not just for, you know, having multiple party members, and now teaching you that mechanic. Uh, the way you finish Chapter 2 is it's a five-round single elimination 1v1 tournament that Alina has to enter. So, truly the goal of Chapter 2 is to just get Alina to reach level 11 with good stats to have a, a chance of winning in the tournament. Taking a beating again. Got two ice bolts will do it. So yeah, what are what's the most efficient way to get Alina to level eleven? Well, metal slimes do appear in chapter two at the very end. There's Bray learning sap, that's gonna be another uh, key component. And yeah, just like in Dragon Warrior 1 and all the other games between this one, uh, hills have a higher encounter rate than than other types of tiles. Huh. Interesting division of damage. Christo's out of MP already. Ray's still got some, though. I think I win in two turns anyway, so... We'll separate block here. Yeah. So yeah, some people do like to um, 
You know, just get all the experience at the end for Metal Slimes. I've done it for really, really long a thon one time and got uh, two in a row. It took a long time to see that first one, but then I got two in a row, which was uh, just wonderful. <laughs> but I, I still don't like doing it that way. So there's more middling approaches where, okay, we'll just uh, kill off Bray for reasons I'll talk about a bit later. <laughs> Uh, then you just kind of keep Bray- you keep Alina and Christo at like level 6 while you run away from everything and then once you have some money you just uh, grind in the final area for a while until Alina reaches level 11 and Christo gets some levels as well. Which is nice. Christo is going to be uh, part of our endgame team. Alina and Christo are actually half of our main four characters who will be- we'll just be like pumping all our resources into in chapter 5. Although Bray is going to be the the honorary like MVP, the water boy, the the number five. He'll be used in the final battle to great effect, you'll see. So even though only four characters can fight at a time for your side, in chapter five you can use the wagon during certain fights, generally outdoor ones, but there's an item that lets you bring the wagon to the final battle. And the wagon is an air-conditioned Pokeball, where even though Necrosaro is exhaling humongous titanic blazes and glittering blizzards, uh, whoever's in the wagon will be just fine. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So not only can we, uh... Use Bray in a clever manner to cast by kill on our other three damage dealers during phase one, when things are nice and safe. Medical herb on Alina is great. Alina hits level four first. Ooh, only plus one strength. Plus three vit though, can I at least get... Okay, that's pretty good HP for an early level. I'm more so interested in strength though. You want Alina to have at least 40, 40 strength, maybe 42. Oh, 11 was good enough this time. This game has, like, hit dice, like, early D&D, where enemies in this game have, like, you know... An enemy that has 100 HP can spawn from anywhere from 75 to 100 HP. Like, 75% of their max. So we'll see some metal babbles that might have 3 or 4 HP. Okay, I don't think anybody, like, used... Oh. Let's see. Enough for two uppers and one heal, I'll take it. Yeah, there is someone strong enough to put an end to the monster. If that's true, please go see the shaman! Right, I'm supposed to be reading the dialogue out loud. It's really, really lots of lore. You plan to destroy the monster? It only appears when it's given an offering. Are you willing to be given as an offering? Yes. Please wait a while. The littering offer will be here soon. Get in their offering litter, please. Don't ever litter the litter. This is no time for puns, shaman. Right, sorry. Yeah, I want to be carried in a little basket with handles, too. Wait a minute. Guys? Uh, what's the safe word again? End scene! End scene! <laughs> okay, the monster is here. It's Chameleon Humanoid and two rabbit hounds. Maybe I was supposed to stick Bray in the middle? No, actually, he's kind of important. We need to try to keep him alive. Okay, one rabbit hound down. That's great. Gonna heal Bray. So even though it's safest to take out the two rabbit hounds first, it's also the um, this fight is hard coded to always drop an item. If you kill the and whatever drops from battles is determined by uh, whichever enemy was killed last. So if you kill the Rabbit Hound last, you get a Wing of Wyvern, which the task actually does, which is funny. Because <laughs> they, they just want a free Wing of the Wyvern for fast-traveling reasons. You know, it's the tool-assisted run. They can just, you know, wiggle their controller in a funny way to make it so that they don't get random encounters. Alright, Chameleon Humanoid was defeated. By killing Chameleon Humanoid last instead, I get Life Force Nuts, which is great for ensuring my Alina has good stats for the end. There's plus two strength. 
Very nice, plus 6 HP. That's good for an early level. Chris, those stats don't really matter. We just need him to get to a high enough level to learn heal all at the end game. And by end game, I mean you will see that I am the only runner who's greedy enough to not get heal all on Christo before S Turk. I think by just fighting a little more carefully, you can beat S Turk with just heal more. <laughs> All right, humanoid down. <laughs> Seven point four seconds ahead. That's that also amuses me. Okay, Christo needs MP back. All right, so. If you are a Bray fan, you may want to look away from the stream for a little while. I've noticed Japanese runners like to stop in that shop over there and maybe buy a boomerang. Um, I haven't looked into that too much, though. So I was using the Luxe Seed and Strength Seed with Ragnar in Chapter 1, and of course it just used them right away because Ragnar was the only selectable character on my team there. But it turns out it is just a feature of this game that, uh... Whoever uses a stat-raising item uh, just uses it on themselves instantly. You don't, like, target a character or, like, most other consumables in games like this. Luckily, I want the, uh, Life Force Nuts to go onto Alina, right? Yes, the 1v1 in this tournament. I need to give her every possible performance advantage that I can. Alright, so we stuck Bray in the middle and then killed him off here. You will probably have heard, well, if you've ever seen a speedrun of this game before, you may know about uh, coffin blocking. This is a thing that's uh, leveraged. It's a great effect here in Chapter 2. For some reason, if you have a dead character in the middle, uh... Almost every enemy will just not know how to target whoever's hiding in the back. Uh, darkest dungeon strats, maybe? <laughs> so yeah, I just cast Upper on Alina, and uh, Alina might be a martial artist who can't equip very many weapons. Um, kind of limited for armor choices, too. But in these games, half of your agility is added to your defense power, so Alina has really high agility as a martial artist. And uh, her defense is surprisingly high because of this. There we go. Now Alina just won't take any more damage from these demon toadstools. So yeah, this is kind of a growing pains chapter here. We're just gonna get some chainmail for Alina, and that'll be the best in slot armor she gets for the rest of the chapter. And then from here, you either go the slinky route, where you just keep these two bozos at level 6. You know, just run around, death warping, losing all your cash over and over. Tower will give you headaches, though. I've started copying this route that Dr. Mr. Holmes invented. Ooh, plus one strength, yucky. Now oh, I wish I saved the game somehow. Oh well. Anyway, we're, what I'm gonna do here instead is kind of like a grind-as-you-go approach. Instead of running from every encounter, I'm probably just gonna fight every encounter. And, uh, to do this effectively, I'm going to have to upgrade Alina and Christo's weapons as fast as possible. Not to their best possible thing, though, just to, like, weird mid-range options. There's a chest with enough gold in it to instantly purchase Alina's best-in-slot weapon for the chapter. But I can't, I can't get it until I'm in Endor, until I can get to the, the last chapter. I got poisoned by the toadstools, unfortunately. Oh, some kind of hostage situation. No, let me go, help! Stop, or the princess will be harmed! Wait, what princess? Is there a bigger kingdom than Santim on this landmass? Anyway, I'm gonna sleep in the Weeping Guys Inn for eight gold pieces. <laughs> Lena had to sleep with a tummy ache while poisoned. Okay, need... Yeah, about this much money. Sell Silk Robe. Oh, we get Chainmail and Wooden Hat for Alina. Yeah, there we go. There we go, best in slot! And you're gonna need five wings on Christo. 
over the course of the whole thing. Can't afford it right now, though. I have to depoison Alina for five gold. Uh, and then I'll save the game and roll my life force nuts while I'm here at the church. Darn that it's five gold. If I had one more, I would have bought that wing for sure. Actually, I should maybe keep afloat. I gotta, like, actually read this here. Gonna need that extra 12 HP on Alina right now, so that she can fight effectively in these bigger battles. Maybe I'll accept 5 plus 6, though, for, you know, in the spirit of the show must go on. 5 plus 6? 5 plus 5, I'll not accept that. Welcome back, Alina. Six, save again. I am continuing my quest. M plus six, excellent. Okay, I can't equip armor during battle, so let's equip it right now. I guess I could use one of my wings to, like, leap to the edge of town right now. <laughs> okay, fight more monsters until you get 500. Get the gold chest, go to the bazaar, and buy an iron spear for Christo. I see. Brammeard A is asleep. These Brammeards are spooky. If they go to low health, sometimes they can do a, a body slam attack that can instantly kill you. Oh yeah, the, only, the very first Pokemon to use Snore. They can do damage in their sleep sometimes. Oh wait, leave that one alive. Brammeards have a small chance to drop a Strength Seed, which would be like a free level up for Alina. In view of it- oh wow, that critical hit's very rare. Critical hits in this game are based on... well, they're 1 in 64 for most characters. But for Princess Alina, it's her level divided by 256. Well, I guess... I still see it as like a higher than normal crit rate when she's level 4. <laughs> okay, I guess it wasn't that rare then, my bad. See, my attack power is pretty bad. Usually I just go into the cave immediately, like just loot the whole first floor. It's gonna be hard to get in and out of there, I think, though. I think I'll just attack. See, the thing is... Upper costs the same amount of MP. Yeah, look at this. Alina is taking one damage anyway. I've been wasting my MP in, these, in the last fight with Demon Toad's tools. Just decided to take longer to win. Alina is poisoned! Oh no, the screen is gonna flash red every four steps and lag a little bit. Even though, even though it was only one damage, that's all it took. Well... Let me at least get the Agility Seed. Four, three, forty-two. Storm the Beetle. These guys can cast Sleep more, which uh, puts you in a sleep that lasts longer. Whereas, just, yeah. I think how strong the sleep is is rolled, like, at the time it hits. The other chest up top here has a wing of wyvern, but I don't want that going into Alina's inventory. Basically, Alina's inventory by the end has to be like all her gear and five medical herbs. So like anything, anything else that goes into Alina's inventory will have to be transferred out. And I'm even talking about this like it's a big deal because, well, I mean, it kind of is. Um, because the look how slow the interface is in this game. Like pressing the A button and has to draw the menu in the corner. Beep. If you like watch footage of this game at a slower speed, you can see the 
menu being drawn like one line at a time and the, the arrow that moves around feels sticky as you move it around with the d-pad and <laughs> uh, and, then... <laughs> and then you have to you know press item and then pick the character and then pick the item and then pick what you want to do with it and then pick which character you want to transfer it to. And then the game will tell you one letter per one frame at a time. Alina took the strength seed from Bray's ghost and gave it to Nara's ghost or whatever. This is not like in Pokemon where low health would make you go faster in a speedrun. Oh yeah, like uh, the torrent special for Mudkip or whatever. Wait, Mudkip? No, it's for Squirtle. Oh, sheesh. I refuse to fight Blaze Ghost. Well, that's one of the reasons why. But also, attacking them can just completely miss or cause them to split, even. Uh, I think I'll heal Christo, too. Just in case the front line goes down. Okay, here's the big money. 360 is not that big, actually. Hmm. Well, Alina's already poisoned. Every starter has low health equals more damage. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not Squirtle? Is it Squirtle or Mudkip that has Torrent? I actually have not played that much Pokémon. Oh, my Thorn Whip and Copper Sword are really showing how pitiful they are here. <laughs> oh, both of them have it. All the water starters have Torrent. Huh. And Blaziken as Blaze. I think the Grass starters have different passives, though. I think, don't they have Growth instead? Or I think, I think Bulbasaur has Growth. Demon Toadstool was defeated. Uh, I don't know if I should fight this one, actually. Yeah, I'm actually not gonna fight this. Uh-oh. Getting hit does not make it any more likely that you wake up. Okay, well now my sleeping Alina is just a tank. Alright. Uh, I'm still gonna get the wing. I'm gonna need that wing later. I know I am. Ooh. This fight takes so long to win, though. I should not take two of these. It's so big, though. <laughs> <coughs> Boost the power of their respective types. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. Cristo. <laughs> Christo is called Clifto in, in the Japanese version. Sure would be nice if I leveled up after all these big fights so that I can do more damage. Ah. <sighs> There we go, someone's gonna level up. Please, a good strength roll this time. Two is not a good strength roll. Three max HP, that was like half a level up. That was so pathetic. Have I got a medical herb? Yeah, I have to run now. Well, I'm still half the way to the bazaar. I'm just gonna try to get there. If Alina dies, I can transfer all the armor to Christo. He can equip all of it. Wait, Alina one-shot one of the toadstools? Oh, 
Ooh, overkill. <laughs> oh, their combined power should do it here. Lena taking two. Very looking forward to rolling that agility seed, because that will just mean more defense power for Alina. Nice plus two strength for Christo. Turn surround. On his next level, he'll learn Antidote, which will be very good for climbing a dangerous tower somewhat soon. Here we go. The encounters are about to get harder, though. I would have liked to fight this, but Christo has no MP left. I cannot cast Upper on my front line. We made it. Alright. Let me buy a nice weapon for Christo. Yeah, there we go. I sold too much of Christo's stuff, actually. Because I think what I'm doing next is death warping. I'm gonna have to at some point. I should do it here after spending my money. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I have to talk to this guy to advance plot triggers. There's an item shop. And Alina has the fifth one. Can I fill up Alina's inventory here? I think I will. Save the game again, roll my seeds, go back into the cave. I'm supposed to get a chain sickle for Alina. Well, let me use my seeds first, so that said grind will be better. Two agility? That's okay if I get a three on this. I did not. The agility seed is less important, but... I mean, agility is defense, and uh, out the, the first couple arena opponents are speedy, so... Being more likely to... I would initiative them and kill them before they deal one more hit to you is very good. And three strength, excellent. Uh, I have to stay at the inn and I have to remember to equip Christo's Spear. Three HP. You want Alina to have 80 at level 11 for the tournament? There is one more Life Force Nuts for me to pick up, though. plan here. I just gained a hundred gold. I'm gonna lose half of it. Okay, I do have to do a death warp. I should do it now when I don't have any money. <laughs> Either that or when I get the chain sickle and also don't have any money. But like... 
I can build up some nighttime by like doing my grind first, so. Yeah, taking that five plant fight was a mistake, I guess. I'll just run from the rest. Yeah, there's a thing I have to get. It turns out those kidnappers want the golden bracelet, which is kept in this cave south of Freenor. And you have to meet them at nighttime in the graveyard for it to make the transfer. Bracelet for hostages. So, of course, uh, if Bray was very, very leveled up, he could cast outside and get out of this cave, but Bray is much more useful as a uh, an aggro resource, basically. Uh, just a, a grim totem that forces my enemies to attack Alina. Except for the orcs on the bottom floor. They are ruthless and will just uh, attack any of your party members randomly. Christo is liable to be attacked. That is why I actually should keep those Wayfarer's clothes on him. We may see orcs on the way to Birdsong Tower, which is the, the next place I'm trying to get to. I need to get a Thief's Key just to enter it, though, and that's what I'm actually going to get out of completing the uh, Hostages quest. Just need a key to open differently designed Dragon Quest doors. These Tevros have a 1 in 6 chance to emit a fireball, that, uh, that breath attack with the noise sound effect. We saw Sorrow Shadow doing. Yeah, it's something that can just happen in a random encounter. And even though there was five of them, I guess not all of them acted. Well, this is the bottom floor of this cave. It's not very long. This second floor has different enemies, though. This is where even Alina can be taken out. I guess the carnivorous plants fight wasn't really a mistake. Because I'm gonna lose half my money and I need some of that to revive my other character. And if they were a higher level, it would be more expensive. So it, it really is better to do this uh, death warp thing earlier. When you're a lower level and have less max HP. Alright, we'll have Alina stripped down. Let's see if we can make it to the magic potion. This kind of uh, item with funny uses. Oh, fireball? I think I can do 10 at the most. Not Krista with the self immolation, though. Oops. Lena charging into the into the press, into the mosh circle. But the Tebro surroundage will do. Can't really use my splits for measuring this part out. There we go, 50 gold. I actually needed to kill those plants. I'm gonna save again. Not, not really sure why, actually. <laughs> like, I have no money. Like, if I die again, I can't... I'm not gonna lose one battle. And boom, just get my armor back on. Now let's head back to the bazaar. We're gonna fight our way to the bazaar. And upgrade Alina's weapon in the process. And then we'll use our wing to go to Santim Castle and prance on the roof where there's no monsters until it's nighttime. But by walking outside, that's still like getting us closer to nighttime. Walking on hills on purpose here because I do want to get into fights. Hmm. 
What experience total is level 9? Forty-four for level ten. What is it for level nine? This I actually want to know. Woo! It's Cordra. Definitely need to block my way through this one while setting up. Because Christo is not very fast, especially when casting a, a non-healing spell. Uh, let's take out the Cordras first, because they can actually perform a terrible blow. They can do a critical hit that ignores defense power. Better heal Alina above 30. <laughs> Order number one is down. You know, with Thorn Whip. So practice swinging it, all right. Hopefully I get a Strength Seed for a drop. I think it's like a 1 in 250 chance, though. There we go. Two. I guess that's why I saved the game. Another low strength Lena level up. They're all low strength this early on, though. Oh, wait, do I have enough to upgrade Alina's weapon yet? Should. Won like five fights on the way here. Nice dodge by Alina. I just need 550. Alright, now we just grind until it's nighttime, I guess. Until Christo's out of MP. And spend the rest of the time prancing on the roof. I forgot to equip the Chainsicle, the Kusarigama. <laughs> Crystal level. Antidote that will make my ascent up Birdsong Tower much easier. Work is dangerous. Maybe we'll win if we take him out first. He can cast Surround as well, which will ruin my accuracy for the rest of the fight if that lands. died when I wasn't looking. 
How did that happen? What? Oh, wow. <laughs> and now it's daytime again. Can I afford this? Barely. Actually, do me an inform here. I'll just add this to my notes right now. When is Alina's level 9? I'll need 288 more. Okay. That means it's uh, 1088. Actually, yes. Now what do I do? Go grind in the same area, I guess. Fifty-three. I'll do it and save the game right before Alina hits uh, level nine. But I can roll for a good level nine. <laughs> I feel like my Alina's strength is way too low. I don't think I've had a single strength plus three level up yet. Two twenty-seven. Plant the eludes, no. Two thirteen. Quarter ran away. Minus 28. No, it's 185. <laughs> nice guy, Shinra. 143. Oh, it's nighttime already. Uh, one more fight. <laughs> uh, this, this is actually hard to win. I think Surround is actually the winning play here. Yeah, because see, they cast defense. They'll, like, just undo my upper spell anyway. I think we'll just attempt Tank and Spank with Alina. <laughs> okay, the Surround spell is definitely working, though. Like, better than it should, honestly. <laughs> like, wow. I'm very lucky they're all in one group. That I can just hit all three of them with Manusa. Surround. Hmm. My next up for him. Okay, there we go. Don't even have to wing the same team. I've got like an extra wing now. That I can maybe use in chapter five.
Okay, little little glitch in chapter two there. Here's the princess. Bye. Thanks for rescuing me. I learned a lesson. I'm not really a princess. My name is May. I'm just an actress. I got carried away because people treated me nice when I acted like a princess. I'll join my companions now. It not, it's not much, but I'll give you this thief's key. Bye, real princess. Thereafter, the fake princess May and her companions disappeared, and a new day began. Okay, great. Uh, I can just, yeah, go straight to the tower now, because there's an inn over there. Oh, right, I was going to save the game. Uh, well, forget it. In the name of going fast, we will just proceed onward. Grisly Sabres. These fights can go on for a while. They can summon reinforcements. Reinforcements that also act in the same turn, so sometimes the marvels can really spill. They can also do terrible blows, so I have to keep Alina above 40 HP at all times. Well, that's Krista with the terrific blow, though. Alina with about 100 TNL to next level. Very cheap in in, in in here. But I should have saved the game to like keep my 400 money. Like if I die and lose half of that, that would be annoying. There's a big money chest in here that I have to get as well, and I'm gonna one time all of it. Wait, so if I grab this and fail it, I actually have no recourse. Huh, well. I'll show you how good it is to be level 8 Christo with antidotes, I guess. That's that's what I'm gonna say. Not a great fight to take, actually. Like, why why did I go for it? Yeah, I like it takes more than two attacks to bring one of them down, and sometimes they can cast Infernos. Okay, well, I definitely win on turn three, then. Good dodge by Alina. Oh, this is Alina leveling up here. Five strength! Okay, wait, that makes up for it. I would lock in this level nine. Three more HP. Eh, well, I'll take it. I'm really gonna fight a butterfly dragon. I, I'm just so gassed up by getting plus five strength right now. Butterfly dragons can cast heal, but Alina is really fast. Mm, mm, mm. Plus three agility seed. Oh yeah, definitely not fighting four of those though. In fact, I, I'm so spooked. Okay, I'm gonna fight this one and then I'll heal to full. <laughs> They also got that breath attack. They can harm Christo. Oh, now Christo gets to be level 8. There you go. Perfectly timed. Now we get Christo to his new max HP, which is three points higher. 61 out of 61 for Alina. There's one more Life Force Nuts waiting for me. 1200. Strength Seed. That's the last Strength Seed available for pickup in this chapter. Uh, these Spectats only cast defensive abilities, it's a waste of time to fight them. Ooh. I'm not gonna fight a Tyranodon, I think. They can cast Fireball. That would be big damage to my side. They are not as squishy as they look either. These guys are also fast and surprisingly durable, and they cast Stop Spell. They probably will outspeed Christo. Though the, the strategy of cast up on Alina might not even go off. So it's funny that in spite of, like, I've been grinding and I have, like, better gear than usual, this tower's still pretty dangerous. Like, imagine, imagine just being in here with both of them at level 6 and you just run from everything. And inst instead of my Alina having, what, 61 max HP, she would have, like, 45. Maybe even 40, actually. Like, she would have, like, 40 while Christo has, like, 33 or something. <laughs> and here's a triple escape fail. Ooh, Alina is poisoned! And that defense got off. See, there we go. That Alina probably would have died.
Uh, there's like walking around on a, a narrow balcony on the top floor, so I do not want to be poisoned for that. <laughs> Three poison lizards have appeared, and we're both poisoned. I wanted to see if the next encounter had more poison lizards. Well, I mean, I lose frames every time the screen flashes red, so... Someone sent me three-part sheet music for this tower music. I gotta- I really gotta learn it. You could make an awesome, like, gent guitar track out of this piece. A lot more MP on Christo for more heals as well. <laughs> Which means less time spent shopping to buy herbs. Well, here we go. It's time for the big grizz. This is how I used to grind up to level from level six to nine, just fighting grizzly sabers like this with with the iron claw, Alina's best weapon. Like you just kind of unlock the whole chapter, then go backwards to grind wherever you want, but. Here I am, I'm already level 9, and I guess I will work on some chip damage to grinding toward level 10. So I'm very behind on my splits that use an old route that's, you know, more risky. You know, a route used for going for PBs, not for marathon stuff. But I may be very behind on those, but I'm going to very quickly be level 10 and then level 11. So I can, like, just hit my lock-ins for level 10 and 11 pretty quickly. I think I will actually be looking for, uh, <laughs> higher HP this time. Elena's got very low HP this time. But I think her- I'm probably gonna look at her strength and be bereft as well. <laughs> yeah, see, they didn't finish building this top floor. We're putting a, a little safety rail there. <laughs> There we go. Butterfly Dragon was defeated. Yeek! You're humans! Lita, we're leaving now! Yes, sister! Oops, I dropped the medicine! Don't worry about it! Leave now! Alina searches the area around feet, finds the birdsong nectar. Alina obtains the birdsong nectar. All right. 18 and a half minutes behind. Well, I'm also like three levels ahead of where I should be. I am ahead of my level 10 lock-in split, which is actually my next objective. So, all things have worked out in the end. So the King of Santim, Alina's father, has lost his voice spontaneously. Uh, uh, oh, I, I, I can speak, I can speak. You did, I, thank you. I thank you. I had terrible dreams. A big monster came into the evil world and was destroying everything. At first I intended to keep them to myself, but I kept having the same dreams over and over again. I became world, and I wanted to tell the council about them. Then I lost my voice. I won't stop you anymore. Christo, accompany Alina on her journey. <laughs> so we finally, finally our dad approves of our, uh... <laughs> our ladylike journey of strength. Time to stay at the inn again. Recover Christo's MP. Look how rich I am. I'm gonna save the game and travel to Endor now. Because now that we have our dad's blessing, the guy standing at the shrine, the, the border guard to this kingdom's travel gate, uh, you know, normally he'll stand in your way and not let you leave the country to go to Endor. Now that our dad approves of our journey, we're allowed to pass through the border. We can finally go to Endor, which will be a recurring location in many other chapters in this game. 
it's the largest kingdom in this game's world. It's kind of, you know, the capital, world capital or whatever. <laughs> It's certainly a center of commerce, as we'll find out in the next chapter. So, many... It's it's a whirlpool town, you know. Many, many people and ideas uh, congregate there. I'll just all swirl into the vortex. <laughs> but, you know, if it's, if it's a big country, there's a lot of people there, and that means there'll be someone we can fight. <laughs> I'm sure Alina would just want to go to the bar and fight somebody. <laughs> I wish to do other boyish things. I gotta do a bar fight. I'm just taking every fight along the way. Uh, my notes say what the uh, experience total is for level 10. I'm pretty sure it's 1,844. And as usual, I still refuse to fight Blaze Ghosts. You really need Bray alive in order to beat them, but we're keeping Bray dead because he's a very useful uh, rampart for Christo to hide behind. Wait, what am I doing? I should have gone straight south. Oh, here we go. Sandmaster is here. I think I can afford to. Have... Oh, wow. I'll leave a one shot. Chainsaw. Chris to attack the other one because if you <laughs> you can you can you can hit the air if you uh, you target the same thing in these old RPGs you can't just mash A to win you got to pay attention yeah I should have gone straight south here we go we're allowed to pass through Should have checked status inside here. Oh, wait, 1649. Okay, I'm like 200 away. That's basically two fights. But winning one fight out here without the Iron Claw would be tough. Okay, here we go. It's always dark when you get here. But I definitely want to use the end anyway. I gotta be at full fighting power now. Alright, so it cost me 1500 for the Iron Claw. I think I can afford... Uh, the Iron Shield. Probably afford another one by the end. Yeah, looking good. Uh, I need two more wings to finish the chapter. Let's give the I forgot to use my strength seed. Right, and we fill Bray's inventory with fairy water. This is something that's got to be done at some point in Chapter 2. Fairy Water works just like Repel in Pokémon games, it just prevents encounters versus weak enemies. And uh, it works very well in Chapter 5, because... Remember those helper characters like Healy who showed up, who don't have equipment, you can't give them any items? Uh, their level is a question mark, and this includes for the game calculating what your average level is when using fairy water, and the game goes, oops, they don't have a level. What does that say there? Oh, the index number for where they are in the array of entities? Oh, what is it? 200? Okay. Yeah, sure. Hector's level 200. So we just, as long as we have like a guest character in our party, which is almost all the time, uh, yeah, we'll be good. <laughs> And so, Bray is going to be uh, alive, actually, for all of Chapter 5. And he'll be able to use these fairy waters anyway. Welcome! The King of Sand Team told me about you. I admire that you're concerned over this doomed world and are embarking on a journey to prove your strength. I have a request win the tournament. To be honest, I'm regretting what I promised. So, the King of Endor is hosting a tournament of duelists. 1v1. Single elimination. Make it through the most rounds and you win the tournament. Uh, the, what's the prize? You get to marry his daughter. And he goes, whoops, maybe I shouldn't have promised my daughter's hand in marriage. That could be a, that was a bit of a, uh, fumble on the old political football there. 
Uh, okay, Princess Selena, please do me a fairy a favor and you win the tournament because a princess can't marry a princess. Uh, it's for political reasons, not... Uh, this game did come out in 1993 and Xena Warrior Princess was on TV. So, maybe the princess can marry a princess for love, but... Remember, they're both princesses, and uh, that has, like, political significance of, like, these two kingdoms are going to do a merger type of thing. We're Dragon Warrior heroes here. We're, we're supposed to be a, a bit utilitarian, you know, do stuff for the good of the people. So let's, you know, we're, we're busy being heroes, not political footballs. So, whatever, we'll win the tournament and cause the, the marriage uh, firework to not pop off. And yeah, that's our objective. Uh, this tournament is not easy to win, though. We are leveling up to get to that point, so I'm saving right before I hit level 10. I'm 200 experience away. Okay, plus 3 strength, perfect. That's plus 1, 2, or 3. That's the max roll. Need all the help I can get for this here tournament. Five minutes away from my level 10 lock-in. And here's the last Life Force Nuts. I need a six. Especially because my HP is very low. Welcome back, Alina. I wish you a safe journey. Oops, no, I don't want to talk. Very well, travel safely. Come back anytime. Four points. Four points. We'll get it eventually. I've had such good luck on all the stat rerolls. It was about time I had one that didn't go so good. Okay, I fibbed a little bit about um, all your gold going away at the end of a chapter. So there's a casino in Endor. You can buy one coin for 20 gold, I believe. And uh, there's only one coin total in the game, so... I can spend all my leftover Chapter 2 gold on some Casino Coins. Which will actually be pretty smart. That'll actually be, uh, helpful. <laughs> because when I get to Chapter 5, I will have some Casino Coins to spend on a Magic Potion. Which will make the first boss fight of Chapter 5 a little bit more bearable. Like, every, every bit helps for that one. Oof, okay. Iron Spear to my rescue. 190. That's actually a great amount. I'm gonna save again. Because I got my I got my plus six locked in. Uh, let's also clean up Alina's inventory, sell that chain sickle. And we'll buy the second iron shield right here. The one that I was supposed to buy for Ragnar. Ho hum ho hum. Oh wait, the second one was for no, wait, Taloons is for... Okay, whatever. I'm bringing an extra Iron Shield to Chapter 5. <laughs> like, Christo used to have, like, a Morning Star to sell for Chapter 5. Now I have, like, a little more solid stuff. Alina should immediately hit level 10 after whatever fight comes next. Midoru! You stay. Alina attacks, miss. Christo attacks, one damage. Metal Slime runs away. Metal Slime disappeared. There we go, that's some lore. You gotta narrate what Metal Slime does. Ooh, okay, uh, yeah. again I need to block first. <laughs> These armor scorpions can also do a terrible blow. So if that happens, I'll at least take half damage from that.
This is the biggest fight there is out here. It takes a little while to win, though. Oh, there it is! The terrible blow. Gonna have to spend two turns healing Alina, I think. Actually, I think I should get another... Actually, it's more like Alina's... Oh, Alina's hits are two-thirds. Okay, that'll kill B. Good. Now Alina can take another terrible blow. <laughs> Scorpion got me right in the nip! That would be a terrible blow indeed. U20 gold. Three strength. Six HP. Okay, where does that put Alina's stats? Only one more level up in my future. It would have to be amazing. 37. 73 HP. Uh, yeah, I think I'll be okay. I think I'll be okay. Let's lock it in. 26 in the red. <laughs> oh no! And Alina's dead, just like that. Well, there you go, I should have blocked on turn one. I saved the game? No, I'll just fill... I'll fill Alina's inventory with herbs, though. And I'll give it to Alina's ghost. Is that more letters? I think that's more letters. This was not the right time to do this. Okay, well there you go. That's five herbs, right? Yeah, it is. Perfect. Okay, Alina's inventory is ready. And I think all my leftover gold will just go toward uh, casino coins. And I'll have to remember that I don't need to buy... Well, I probably will buy an Iron Shield for Taloon anyway, but I don't have to for the sake of giving it to Ragnar. I have it on Christo. It's... whatever, it's flex. I can... I can do either. Okay, so 2798 is level 11, and I just got like another 190. I think I'm at like 2000 right now. Well, Metal Slimes are a little more common at night, but it's... Also pretty impossible that I beat them on <laughs> with only two characters alive. Oh wow, fast Christo. Kinda wish I upgraded Crystal's weapon to a Morning Star instead, actually. Yeah, buying that Iron Shield was was bad. Now now Pteranodons are showing up? Nighttime is terrible. Why am I fighting Pteranodons? Five hundred away. Sell the Iron Spear for 660. Rogue Knight D is down. 
Should switch the targeting here. Morningstar costs 1250. Yeah, sell the iron spear for 660. Well, maybe after this fight I will have enough. Actually, no, I'll be... I'm almost done the grind. I should just put all the money into coins. Oof. And Krista will never attack in Chapter 5 until he has his, like, much stronger weapon as well. Oh, nice Kaishin by Alina. Multiplication. Overthinking who's got got HP, who's taking damage. Gotta keep Alina above forty HP. Uh, I hope I didn't in action. Zero drop frames. That's just been quiet for a while. How are we doing, chat? It's a it's a cozy night in the new world, and uh, I'm for morning tea in Europe. Instead of drinking a bottle of wine every day, I'm still drinking too much Mountain Dew. 62. Oh, look at that. I'm under 100 to level up. It's time to heal and save and sink in them casino coins. Ah, they're like 20 each and I've got like 892. You have 44. Don't I need 30? I think I need 30 for the magic potion. Oh wait, let me make sure Christo has those two more wings. I forgot to get two more wings for Christo to end. Okay, that's just 50 out of the reserve. So I actually have 842 to spend? Okay. Cool. 84 coins. And if I can get six more... In chapter three, that's three magic potions. Got to buy these earlier when I was filling Bray's inventory. All right, now we save and just, uh, Get a sick level 11 and save the game again, and then it'll be time for tournament attempts. With low strength. Oops, dirty is in my way. Skeletons! We don't, wow. A while since I saw these guys. They always just had this alternating attack pattern of casting defense, which is called Kasap in the other games. What am I trying to get? Forty-four strength is ideal? Uh-oh. I only have what, thirty-seven? Plus three. Four vitality could be nice HP though. Eight HP, so I have eighty-one. Four T strength. I think I want to roll for five strength. Yeah, I find I feel like having seventy-seven HP is too little. 
So having like 80 or 81, I think is ideal. Those, those of y'all who remember my automatone, unfortunately it has stopped working for good. I was on vacation for a while, and it was, I noticed it was like getting quieter, I'm like, okay, well, I'll fix it when I come back and left the batteries in it, and then I came back and it had stopped working. You know, I wonder if there's like a correct way to store the automaton. Like, I think if you, if you store it lying down, do the batteries leak? Is that the idea? Or if you store it upright, like, the batteries leak out the negative side? Maybe I should have tried to read the manual more carefully. Make those up four points. Vitality up two. Oh, that's a worse HP roll! That's gotta be five strength. I think having an odd number of strength doesn't... ends up not mattering. But Razor Wind is bewildered. I don't think I've ever gotten six strength from one of these mid-range Alina level-ups. Feels like five is the most you can get, but dang, do I ever need five. Like, I'll take three or four as long as the HP growth is good. Three strength. Two vitality. That was the, the worst of both worlds. I'm being too greedy on this level 11, I think. Apparently the first one was the best. Or can I get, like, four strength with good HP, maybe? <laughs> well, I think I've said, like, four doesn't matter. Look here, skeleton. Ooh, big skelly hit. E5 experience points, gained 88 gold, 3 strength, 2 vitality, 4 HP. <laughs> I'm getting... These are like the worst level 11s I've seen. Why are they all so bad? Notice how I'm getting a different outcome every time I turn on the game. Like, every input I make frame to frame seems to affect RNG. You look how fast I get an encounter this time. This is like a lot of lost time, because I could have just been making tournament attempts already. Which is kind of the more important part. You know, that's the actual bottleneck we have to squeeze out of to get out of the ship in a bottle. You know, getting out of Chapter 1 is just your prison cell. Getting out of Chapter 2 is getting out the block. Okay, 4 strength. 5 agility? Hello. You know what? I'll just lock in this one, because it had a ton of agility. <laughs> uh. This might be a, uh, grind until level 12 scenario. <laughs> or just get super lucky in the tournament. Might have done okay with, uh, you know, 81 max HP. Okay, so, wow. 7 point... 7 minutes, 17 seconds in the red for <laughs> how long my level 11 lock-in took. Did I really save the game after that? I feel like I should have done a chapter... Like, I should have done a tournament attempt for each of those <laughs> level 11s. Just, just combine it into one motion. 
So here's our first opponent, Han the Jobber. You get to use medical herbs between each round. <laughs> they restore 30 to 40, so having only 76 max HP, as you can see, is a bit awkward. I think the most I've had is 88. And that kind of makes a difference. I probably will not be able to one-cycle this round 2 guy, Rorik, now. Yes, he's often faster. Like, when I saw the plus 5 agility, I'm like, okay, maybe I can do this one. Because I want to be faster than Rorik. See, I want to outturn Rorik on the turn that I try to kill him. And having lower max HP. Oh, wow. <laughs> he blocked and then I got a critical hit. <laughs> it just went boom. And he died. Up next is Vivian, the spellcaster, who used most of her MP in round 1 and 2. She was doomed to not make it through. You can use medical herbs, but not wizard rings, I guess. Ooh. There's possible strats where you can just, like, block until Vivian runs out of MP. She does no heal more, but that costs, like, 5 of her MP, so... You know, if you just attack her, you, like, burn through her MP quicker. There you go, not even enough left for Ice Bolt. She's probably gonna spend the rest blocking, hopefully. Don't do damage to me, Vivian. Vivian has bunny ears in the Japanese version. I took away the bunny ears for... NA. Censorship in my gaming, am I right? Oh dear. Round four, the real beefgate Samson. Rumored to be Prince Reed of uh one mile mode. Oh <laughs> now I have a chance. Now I have a chance. Wow. Just <laughs> Okay. If I beat Linguar, Chapter 2 is done. However, there's a bit of a problem with Linguar. I set the FPS to 60, but my capture card is only giving us 30. You may not see- yeah, you're not seeing it correctly, how Linguar splits apart. It splits into four different ones, and you have to guess the correct one. The famous Mirror of Ra is a prize in the casino. Something known to reveal illusions and the true nature of things, and you can use it on Linguar, and it'll show you which one is the real Linguar, and then the Linguar laughs at you, and it's the Linguar's turn again. So it is, uh... <laughs> Very troll prize. I can't believe Phoenix did that. A and Prey seems to be working here. Okay, funny thing, if the Linguar builds up power, it has to be the same Linguar. And so Linguar A, in fact, did do the extra damage to me. Linguar is also very fast, so I'm going to have to use an herb soon. In fact, yeah, this turn. I'm gonna have to use an herb this turn. Luckily, I have so many of them. Linguar has 55 HP every time. I've already done two hits. It's pretty much impossible to have an Alina with enough strength that'll two-shot Linguar, like doing 28 plus 27. But, I'm one hit away from winning. Let's see if we can make it happen here. Uh, I think I better heal. Oh wow, it was D. So I could have just attacked D and won after taking that hit. Let's check D again. Oh, here comes C. Something something Monty Hall problem. Always attack the Linguar that built up power. Oh wow. Here we go. We did the the samurai the, the samurai slash again. Drive by past each other. Wow. Kremiolina got the tournament down first try because I got an instant round one crit. Where is he? Bring Necrosaro now for round six. Necrosaro is missing. Hmm, we can't wait for him forever. I declare Princess Alina the winner of this tournament by DQ. Princess, good going! Congratulations! Princess Alina, I thank you for winning. I know your father, the King of Santine, will be proud of you. Perhaps you should return home and visit him. So there's a strange force containing return. That was such an inspiring victory that Bray came back to life. Princess Alina returned to Santine Castle immediately! <laughs> Whoa, okay. Uh... One sec, let me put six more coins in the casino. Right, because magic potions are 30 each? Yeah, okay.
There we go. Now I have 90 coins for three magic potions. So I think I have to walk out of town, and then I won't be Strange Forest anymore. We can wing back to Santim. And nobody's here. There's not even music. There are not even musicians playing. How strange! What happened? Well, we take one more step after that, and the Strange Force will go away. Use a wing to go to anywhere. What did the dreams of the King of Santim mean? The mysterious Necrosaro. Why did he suddenly disappear? And what befell the people of Santim? Determined to solve these mysteries, Princess Selena's journey of power continues. Almost all batteries can be stored in any position without issue. Usually it's just wet cell batteries like a car battery that get upsetty when upside down. This is Lakanaba, a small town far north of Endor. A man named Tulun lives in this town. He works for someone now, but his dream is to become the world's greatest arms merchant. Wake up, you must go to the shop soon or the boss will scold you again. Wake up. You're up at last. Here's your lunch. Go out and head west. Don't be a sleepyhead, okay? Bye. Yay, I'm Tulun. I work in a weapon shop and have a wife. But it's time to take the secret herbal stash. And smoke. Every day, every day, every day, every, every day. We're not going to work. There's a whole like mini game where you do stand behind the counter in the weapon shop and various sprites will walk up and buy and sell weapons and you get, you know, paid on commission. It's It's pretty cute. It's not very fast though. It is true that you can get a sort of malice sold to the shop, and then you can end the day early and be like, I'm a customer, I'm gonna buy the sort of malice, and that's the... It's the most expensive thing you can buy and sell in this chapter. Of course, the task can set up the perfect luck to always see it. No such luck in this game. As I was saying earlier, this game's RNG is seeded by however many processor cycles it took to execute the previous command, so... There is nothing predictable about getting it to behave, and this is the most damage I've taken at the beginning of Chapter 3 ever, I say. Alright, so we gotta walk down this hall to the south, but I will lose a second to activate the water slide. Whee! Is he making a little V? I think he is. So in this cave up here is a special item called the Iron Safe, but we're actually not here for that. We're actually just going to get a chain sickle from a chest in the next room and then we're done here. Uh, the Iron Safe makes it so that you don't lose any gold pieces when you die. Instead of losing half your money, you lose nothing. The problem with the Iron Safe, though, is that it's stuck in your inventory the entire time. There will be no way to get rid of it ever, and giving up an inventory slot in Chapter 3 just would be very yucky <laughs> in a speedrun. What the? Wait, Talun attacked himself and then eluded nimbly? <laughs> I'm going to commit Sudoku. Wait, no, Juke! <laughs> Juke's himself. Alright, so we haven't gotten any money, we lose half of nothing, perfect. Back at it. The nice thing about Chapter 3 is we are not going to win a single battle. We're not going to put a single experience point onto Taloon. This is the Something Something Capitalism Ho chapter. Although, uh... I don't quite know what's going on. It's it's more like, uh... More like being a shady arms dealer than... Than, uh... You know, providing... You know... Goods or, uh... Like materials or useful things. <laughs> uh, what, what, what's the word I'm thinking of here? Manufactured products! Like Ash says in the director's cut version of Army of Darkness. Anyway, there we go. That's our starting capital. We sell the Kusare Gama to get 412 gold. We're gonna spend that on transport costs. This is fun to think about. Like, your, your paycheck, at, like when you're working the weapon shop, it's about 100 gold a day, and then it's nighttime when you're done. It kind of implies that, like, you know, a day worker could afford for a Wing of the Wyvern, you know, and there's two of them to get to and from the job site, probably, you know, to avoid monsters. So that's, like, their transport costs. So yeah, we're just gonna get some transport costs of our own. So the prince is gonna give us a hug. Prince, you shouldn't talk with such a lowly commoner. Leave now! Yeah, he's saying, uh... 
I want you to meet me behind the weapon shop after dark, Talia. Cause you're a you're a merchant. You probably get around. He's gonna pass us a note. Use us as a courier. So anyway, we're gonna do some NES era stealth gaming. Hey, Taloon, it's me. That's right. I'm the son of Grandpa Tom. How stupid I was to get caught and sent to prison. No more thieving for me. You're a merchant, right? Would you get me a wing of wyvern? Oh, you already have one. Could I have it? I'll make it up to you when I return to town. I'll see you then, okay? All right, we're going to give chase, but not quite yet. We're just gonna dance on the roof until it's nighttime, where it's safe. <laughs> to hear some of that Taloon music. <laughs> Oh, here you are! It's me, Prince Reed! I'd like you to go to Endor as soon as the bridge is repaired, and hand this letter to the Princess of Endor. Taloon, receive Prince Reed's letter. I'm counting on you! Okay, now we wing back to Lakanaba. Time to cash in our favor with, uh, Tom Jr. Jr.? Tom III? No, oh, wait, he's named Tom. Son of Grandpa Tom. He has a dog named Tov. Taloon, it's me, Tomson. Thanks so much for everything. Yes, I'll reward you. What? You just want to borrow my dog, Tov? No problem. Wow, wow, wow. Tov. Always obey Taloon. I suppose I should have, like, just winged a Lakanaba instead of walking all the way out. Why do I always do this? Am I so greedy for 25 gold? I kind of am. It's, like, kind of a big camel breaker if you can get the, the bronze armor after this next part. This seems sketchy for our starting capital so far, but it'll all work out, trust me. We're gonna take this dog and go to this village of mischievous foxes. Mischievous foxes with magical powers. Uh, because Japan. You can kind of walk in a a loop forever on the track there. You can buy overpriced things. No, help! I hate dogs! It's too late! My supernatural power is... Yelp, yelp! I'm sorry, please let me go. Okay, I won't play tricks anymore. Thanks, here, let me give you this full plate armor in appreciation. Yelp, yelp! Bye now! And then Dagardi the Architect. I'm Dagardi, what happened? When I woke up, the village was gone. That's right! I was supposed to go to Bomalmo Castle. Excuse me. <laughs> Semi Masen. All right, we got a full plate armor, and this is a big deal. We gotta talk to the king. How skilled the guard is! He came here and repaired the bridge in no time. Now I can invade Endor. Ha ha ha! And over here is a very forgetful guy. We're short of armor in this castle. How about selling me some of yours, like this full plate armor? Twenty six hundred plus or twenty three hundred plus? Yeah, twenty eight seventy five is good, pretty good. We'll take that. All right, if you have any more armor, come back. You know, if you take- if you say no to his offer, he'll just come up with another price. <laughs> it's just a completely random mechanic. Again, shady arms dealer. Alright, now we gotta make it to Endor while relatively naked. With all this money in our pocket. This is the only, uh, dangerous part of Chapter 3, actually. Because we're short of armor in Balmama, we can't buy any nice armor for Taloon. Yet. But Endor is not very far away. Oh, you can also get random encounters with friendly merchants! Maybe I could have bought another wing from that guy. So this, this is my starting capital here. As you can see, I've somehow turned... <laughs> oh, Taloon, I lose nimbly! Amazing! I somehow turned my 412 from selling the chain sickle into uh, almost 3,000. <laughs> Just from kind of being in the right place at the right time. Anyway, let's buy some best in slot armor for Taloon. The Iron Apron. Only he can wear this. Uh, an Iron Shield. Shield for Taloon. And a bronze armor. Am I right? Am I right? Now we go to the item shop. Gotta buy best in slot hat for Taloon. Wooden hat. 
And we have enough room in our inventory for one herb. Oh, no we don't. Am I carrying two wings? No. Oh, I have my lunch. <laughs> okay. So I already have a healing item. Okay, I just thought of something funny. I'm gonna switch in all my armor right in front of the princess. So I'm all suited up and then use the prince's letter and be like, <laughs> Worst though, my planner seems to be planning to invade Endor. You must stop him. Please inform him of this. Oh, I must tell my father. Father! I heard the news, Mia. You do not need to worry. Tulun is the name, is it? Would you take this scroll to the king of Bon Malmo? Tulun receives the royal scroll. Ayaku, please hurry. But we can do that a bit later, honestly. We're gonna wing from Endor to Endor to get from deep in the throne room to right outside. And just uh, head straight into the next cave that I must go to. Without even healing at the end. I'm at 16 out of 20, like whatever. I'm going to find a, a, an herb in the cave that I'm heading to and a wing of wyvern that I can use to get to Bon Malmo and read the Royal Scroll. Uh-oh, Ducks Bill casts happenly, they'll go for built-up armor. Good thing I already burned through my two escape fails. So there's a, a guy in a nice house on the eastern part of Endor who says, I want to acquire the silver statuette, a priceless objet d'art. <laughs> Art object. Whoa! Please go hitting me for max damage 12? Twice. Okay. Oh, that's annoying. I'm in Bon Malmo. Fine, I'll just walk from Bon Malmo. With... Oh, 100 gold gone, too. Unfortunate. I don't know if that even matters that much, though. I had no room to, like, solidify any more of that. And no encounters from Bomelbo to here. Wow. That was, like, the longest I've ever heard through Taloon's theme, <laughs> just from normal play. are kind of a wall of text. Maybe I should format these better. I think no way to tell where I am. I have to actually read. Oh, I think these LF rovers are harmless. So yeah, the rich guy wants the silver statuette and would pay a lot of money for it. It just so happens this cave has a silver statuette in it. A little bit of a water temple puzzle to figure out how to get to it, though, but it's not very hard. Hmm. I'm gonna ride this boat down a waterfall, just totally natural behavior, of course. I gotta make room in my inventory already. Also, this dog is just gonna be following me for the rest of the chapter. In Endor, there's two mercenaries you can hire. Oh. Why do I have basic clothes? I just forgot to get rid of those. But yeah, there's two mercenaries you can hire in Endor. Uh, one of them is in the inn. He's a, a minstrel named Laurent. He's got some useful battle spells. On the west side of town is a, a guard with a spear named Strom. He says, get rid of that dog, I hate dogs. <laughs> and I did say, Balloon is not going to get any experience, and in fact seeing a metal slime is quite terrifying. Sandmasters can do up to three damage, but every other enemy in here can't even lay a finger on Taloon. His defense power is too high with all this best-in-slot armor, even at level one. 
There's a button. I am going to push it. So one nice thing about this cave is you can come here in chapter 5 and it just... the pointer aims at the exact same cave. Any chest that you leave unopened will still be unopened in chapter 5. So I'm going to very carefully open some of these. Just these three in the middle. There's a chest on the left side of the room that I'm going to leave intact until chapter 5, though. Same with the, the others in the basement. Taluna's only one guy. He's only got eight inventory slots. And three of them are being taken up by my best in slot armor. If you were, like, actually fighting this stuff, like taking fights, you would have a weapon as well. So you only, maybe you're carrying a wing of wyvern so you can get back to town quickly, so that only leaves, like, three slots in your inventory for loot. It's pretty tragic. I did not need to buy that herb from the guy outside. That was just a waste of eight gold, I think. Yeah. Snap. To just make room for this iron spear. I guess I'm going for maximum insurance. You know, it is a marathon. I'm running the game tomorrow night for a race. So this is basically my practice run right here. I'm just like, yeah, once a year, that's enough Dragon Warrior 4 for me. <laughs> and then I play the game and I go, oh, this is so fun, I should go for PB attempts again. And then I start doing PB attempts and I do not have a fun time. This game is quite a casino. Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne is quite pleasant to speedrun compared to this, I think. This one is fun too, because it can, you know, can be a matter of like, how do you roll with it? And I mean, I, I think I could still PB in this run. I had some kind of mishap somewhere in Chapter 5. Yeah, Silver Statue at Splits. Now that we have it, it's time to strip down so we can die quicker. Also, these are not statues, these are just like ground, like, embossings, or engravings. Oh, I'm carrying the Iron Spear! I can, like, Iron Spear myself. <laughs> Would've saved a turn, what the heck. Alright, wake up in Bomalbo. Use the scroll on the king. Sire, there's a naked man in the throne room. Yes, I know. What does he have? Ahem. <clears throat> Tulun reads the royal scroll. Dear friend, King of Bon Malmo, please listen to what I must say. It appears that my daughter Mia and your son Reed are in love. They don't have to marry now, but I look forward to their marriage. The King of Endor. Oh, this guy. If my son marries the K Princess of Endor, I'll inherit the Kingdom of Endor. I won't have to invade. You can go. You've done well. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Anyway. Now I'm going to haggle all my armor here. I can get more than retail for every single piece, as long as I just talk to this guy over and over until he offers a number I want to see. Anything higher than 1710 is what I'll take. Again, NES processor, no dedicated division function. It ends up being a couple of discrete buckets that it can fall into that are either above or below retail, and there's some real far outliers where you can get, like, almost double retail. 1875 is great. For the rest, I'll take pretty much any amount of profit. Oh, that's a good one. I paid 650 for the Iron Shield. Paid 700 for the Bronze Armor. Yeah, 10%, I'll take it. Uh, the Wooden Hat, I'll take any profit. That's minus 10. That's like double? What the heck? I got the critical roll on the most worthless one. Uh, whoops, I have no more armor for sale. Use the wing to go to Endor. Okay, now we sell the Iron Spear. And we buy all the armor we can here. Oh, this is perfect. This is three Iron Aprons. And then two Wings. 
Do you see what's going on here? There's a shortage of armor in Balmalmo, this warlike kingdom that wants to invade. I guess they don't have enough armor for their soldiers, though, so they're paying ridiculous premium rates. Armor's in very high demand in Bon Malmo. So we just go buy armor for retail in Endor and pay the price of transport, which is extremely cheap, you know? 25 gold gets you a wing of wyvern that lets you fast travel to any place you've physically walked to before. One other thing, though, there's this annoying little plot MacGuffin in my inventory called the Silver Statuette. Let me just get rid of that. Uh, for 25,000 gold pieces. Okay, no big deal. So what are we gonna do with that? So the next uh, plot thing I'm striving for here is if I were to go talk to the King of Endor, he would say, Good job, Tulun. You talked to those bozos in Bon Malmo for me. I'll give you permission to own a shop here in Endor as a favor. And there's a guy selling a shop for 35,000, which will allow us to make money even faster. Okay, fine, I will take a 710, even though that's supposed to be bad. 17-10. That's the... Hey, you want to try to take nice margins on these iron aprons, which are the single most expensive piece of armor we can buy at a time. So yeah, now that I got the statuette out of my inventory and a ton of money, I can do seven aprons per trip here. Oh, I should have bought a third wing, actually. Darn, I forgot. Because then the other wing would be at the top of my inventory and easier to use. Ooh, 2812, Critical Super Golden Wind. I have nothing else to sell. Back to Endor, I guess. The other nice thing is that if you have a wing in your inventory already, you will, um... You can't, like, overfill your inventory, but instead I will just do <gasps> math. Okay, and now I can hold six more, so that's 9,000, so my gold will say 21,000. And I have seven more, or seven in total. <laughs> if I accidentally buy one too many, it's fine. You can just equip one and walk to Bon Malmo and probably be fine. Probably. Okay, two more, because that's 3,000. Okay, there we go. Now there's room enough in my inventory for one wing, and then when I get to Bon Mamo, I can buy another one that'll appear at the top of my inventory by the time I'm done shopping. So yeah, we've had, um... Crimson, the Japanese speedrunner of Dragon Quest games, has organized uh, Dragon Quest IV community races. Where we've had Japanese runners racing with uh, American runners, both playing their own versions of the game. Now, even though the Famicom version has a couple of glitches to take advantage of, like, uh, uh, it also functions differently. You can throw fairy waters at enemies and it guaranteed does 10 damage, and this even works on metal babbles, so... <laughs> makes grinding a lot easier. The text also goes by quicker, because if it's one character per one frame, well, every single phonetic is kind of like two English letters, you know, a consonant and a vowel, double duty, so... You could see, I think, some Diener pulled into the lead in the first one of these, uh... English versus Japanese version races, where the, the Japanese runners running on the Famicom version didn't use anything that was version exclusive to their version, like they were pretending they were playing on a Dragon Warrior 4 cartridge. Sticking to all the same limitations, but you could see the Japanese runners pull ahead in real time during Chapter 3 because the text is so much shorter. This chapter is kind of like a one hour long cutscene boss of so just <laughs> clicking yes on many things. Okay, here's a nice string of sales all above 1710. Usually it takes about three reps of these uh, Endor armor runs. Fine, I'll take another 1710. Because I feel like it's gonna be a lot of rerolls to go again. I don't want to get just above 35,000. I need a little bit of a float to go above that. Okay, so after I buy one, spend 9,000, so that's gonna be 230. Make love, not war. I mean, yeah, the. The romance between the prince and princess of Bon Malmo and Endor 
saved an entire war from happening. There's a little, uh, you know, Dragon Quest positive mini fable, mini moral sneaking in there. Ooh. Yeah, try to menu good here. Try to trim those frames. I have to look at the screen all the time to make sure the numbers are good and to make my A presses well timed. <laughs> mm. I could run the Japanese version of this game on my flashcard, but the wagon interface in the final battle is all different, <laughs> so that I lost time there when I tried to do that at the last community race I participated in. I have a lot more fun uh, being a commentator for those, especially when it's like a really crazy like eight-way stream, <laughs> like eight feeds to talk about. Fifty-three. Another critical offer. The Nest Cardinality special. That guy always wins in the casino. I think I want thirty-six thousand six hundred or like thirty-eight thousand. That's when I'll be done. Okay, those are two more good offers. Very good. Oh, whoops, I can't sell it. I got the Wyvern. Got 36,600 or 38,200. Yeah, that's good enough. I was thinking I could buy a wing to wing from Endor to Endor. I don't think that saves time if, if you don't already have it, though. Received the message from the King of Bon Malmo. Thanks for your help. As promised, I give you permission to own a shop. Alright, so it's been what, like 45 minutes since we saw our wife and kid? Let's finally summon them to Endor now that we got it. What the? Phantom menu just opened! My, my right hand was on my head! And my menu just opened somehow. Dragon Warrior 4 just does that sometimes. I'm about buying my shop for 35,000 gold pieces. My shop gets split as blank in my... My splits. I think it's like 222 in my PB. Alright, so now I have a shop. What happens now? Nada is going to run the shop for me. And somehow she's going to, like break the rules of economics and perhaps even uh, like the law of conservation of mass here. I'm going to buy an abacus of virtue for retail price across the street. I'm gonna give it to Nada. He says she'll sell it for 2400 even though they're selling it for 1600 across the street. All right, I'll try hard to get good prices. You work hard too, smack. Giving us a kiss. Erratic Erratic, thanks for raiding for five. You did great hosting my run of Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne at RPG Limit Break last year. Last last year. <laughs> oh wait. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to bed.
Are you tired already? It's still early, but do you want to sleep? Alright, rest well, good night. Oh, I'm so stressed out, man. I spent 35,000 gold on this, and you're gonna try to sell an Abacus of Virtue for a 50% markup for what the guy across the street is selling it for? Oh my god, she did it. She sold it for 2450! What the heck? Uh, okay. Whatever. I, I won't ask how. I don't I don't know what you were up to during those two days I was sleeping. Anyway, let's uh let's try it again. This is really weird. Is this this is like having like, you know, the the golden lamp with the Midas touch here. I'm gonna accidentally turn my wife into gold here. I mean Abacus of Virtue is uh, a bit more of a big ticket item, but this fits nicely into, you know, two slots. Let's try selling two morning stars. Let's uh, see if this works. <laughs> oh, oops, I actually don't have something else for sale. I have the lunch you made for me yesterday that I haven't eaten yet. Alright, Nada, uh, you try to get good prices there. Uh, I'm, I'm really stressed out. I'm gonna go back to bed. He's <laughs> been working so hard now. I mean, he, he worked hard all chapter long, and he, he earned this by being a shady arms dealer and just buying things for retail and selling them for hire somewhere else, somehow. Apparently this is how capitalism works. Oh wow, I guess both of them sold. We don't have any merchandise. Okay, she sold both of them. Basically every time you go to bed, all the stuff in the Nada shop has a, I think, 75% 70, chance to sell. Uh, let's do Abacus and Double Morningstar here. It always gets started kind of bumpy, but then before you know it, you're, you know, going across the street with a full basket of Abacus of Virtue. Uh oh the feds are closing in here. Strom is gonna cut off access into my house. They're gonna find out I'm evading Endor taxes. I'm definitely not paying tax on any of these. <laughs> I can see why Strom is uh, snooping around in my backyard here. I'll try hard to get good prices. You work hard too! <laughs> no, it's not like, you know... 90s marriage trouble comedy, haha, <laughs> we're hitting each other. No, it's supposed to be a kissing sound. I think it says chew in the Japanese script. Proceeds from yesterday's sales. What? Uh, okay. We don't have any merchandise. Bring some soon. Okay, well, I can get you four Abacus of Virtue just like that. So I've turned one Abacus of Virtue into four Abacus of Virtue already. Just buying stuff. I'm going to be... Oops. I accidentally bought a chain sickle. I think that's fine. I can still get three more of these Abacus of Virtue. Never mind. We're, we're just maximizing. Just profit maxing with two X's. Get you. Yeah, like that. I keep having a menu around the lunch. But I, I gotta keep it in the inventory, otherwise we're gonna waste three more lines of text about Nada giving us another lunch when we wake up. Time to sleep for two days, I think. Probably... Drink all my water. Because my only bathroom break in the run is at the end of Chapter 4. Actually, I guess there's my big level up reports in Chapter 5. I can put something heavy on the A button and that'll work. Wow, 12,000 gold pieces. Everything sold. Okay, we can give the week old lunch to the dog, I guess. The loon's wounds heal. Yay. Okay, uh. I think I just buy eight of these. Two. Oh, I can't afford eight of them. Three? 
Wow, I'm 50 short of affording the eighth one. I guess I buy a Morning Star for the last one. Well, that death where I lost a hundred mattered in the end. <laughs> I had to eat that. The loon can't be equipped with this. Is that all right? One more dialogue line box there. All right, now I can just mash A. Let's review here. How many abakai? Abakai works, by the way. If people have asked about it before, you can say either abakai or abacuses. How many of these have we sold? We sold seven today. Sold like four the previous day, three before that. It's probably gonna be like 15 all told. Oops, you don't have any brought anything back. I mashed A a little too hard. You work hard too. Yeah, sure, babe. Whatever. <clears throat> I'm sure they intended this to just be like a place to super sell all the stuff that you find in chapter 3. There's an extra drop code or like routine for every battle where like any enemy can drop anything in chapter 3. So you're just, if you're actually fighting stuff, you're getting oodles of gear all the time. And with one of your slots hogged by the iron safe, that's no fun. I don't have any merchandise. Okay. Alright, one last big one then. Eight abacus and drop off the rest, I guess. I think I only need... I don't even need that much. I think just eight will do. Yeah. Like, walking back and forth across the street another time is just not worth it. I don't need that much money to finish Chapter 3 in style. I just need about 24,000, I think. 24,600. I think that's 8. Yep. Should not have even checked. Okay. Rinse and repeat until 24,735, or 24,615, you don't need the wooden hat. I already mentioned earlier, I do not need a, uh... <laughs> don't need an iron shield, I bought an extra one in Chapter 3. This means I can fill Taloon's inventory with more expensive stuff. You can buy casino coins in Chapter 3 as well, but the rate is greatly inflated because, as you can see, we can just turn retail price into, like, greater than retail. We can actually just create... Like, it, it's... It's built into the game's story that this scam causes hyperinflation. And... Like, a casino coin was 10 gold in Chapter 2, and now it becomes 200 in Chapter 3. We cause inflation by a factor of 20-fold objectively, in Chapter 3. It's an economic war crime. But it's all worth it to stop the ruler of evil, right? Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, this, this is kind of a stealthy cover-up. Like, there's some added value in whatever Nada is selling, am I right? <coughs> I don't think we gotta worry about it, though. Don't have any merchandise. Okay. I am filthy rich. I think it's time to Fund some public works here. I smell a new score here. So we've sold what? Like over 15 Abacus of Virtue. We've sold. Um... Oh, and again, spend 9,000 from here. Oops. That's not what I'm buying. I'm supposed to buy half plates. <laughs> We're not suiting up the merchants anymore. The merchant class is well defended enough now. Now that the merchants are well defended. You know, it means that all kingdom activity has to go through them. Right? It's like, hey, merchant, I want your half-plate armor. 1,200 gold pieces, please! And then they pull a sword and be like, no, I think it'll be zero, actually. 
But the merchants that are random encounters all over the place here in Endor, well... They've all got the best in slot gear that there is. So they're not they're not getting mugged by no bandit or soldier. Therefore, commerce will blossom properly. Just as Taloon, the world's greatest star merchant, would want it. So now that this is in place, I think Taloon is going to confidently uh, fund some public work things, such as upgrading Endor's military. I think the next plot point here... You gotta talk to the king, I think. How about taking a big order from me, he says. We have already sniffed out the scoop because we're gamers. We know about it before we're even gonna talk to him. Taloon, I hear you own a shop now. How about taking a big order from me? I want you to collect weapons and armor for my soldiers and deliver them to the people downstairs. My order is seven broadswords and seven half plates of armor. Yeah, that... One of these soldiers outside says, we're still working on copper swords here, this is pretty sad. Alright, so this guy takes our seven suits of half plate armor right out of our inventory, the rest of the order is seven broadswords, and if we had a stupid iron safe clogging our inventory, look how inefficient this would be. First thing I'm gonna buy is another wing to get me out of here. And now we're gonna go to the only shop in Chapter 3 that sells broadswords. On Malmo's Grand Weapon Shop. Which doesn't even have a mowed lawn. It's gonna cost me 14,000, so down to 9,087. Broadswords have a lot of attack power. I'm kind of surprised that Taloon can't equip them, though. He can equip the Sword of Malice, which has more attack power. It kind of gives the image that it's like a bigger and heavier sword if it's stronger than a broadsword. Oh well. I'm gonna buy one Iron Apron. Alright. Looks like I have 7,500 to spend on luxury. So the nice thing about Taloon making infinity money is that I can spend it all on gear that I can sell in Chapter 5. And things in this game vendor for 75% of retail, so... It's actually a pretty decent investment. In The Seventh Saga, another RPG that Enix published in the 90s for Super Nintendo, you can buy gems that sell for 100% of retail as a way to, like, bank your money. Uh, anyway. I also need to buy two more wings, I believe? I can afford that. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just buy five more aprons for the rest. That should be a nice slush fund for Chapter 5. Easy math, too. Could have been all um, Abacus of Virtue, except I accidentally bought that iron apron and lost 375 gold. <laughs> yeah, that... Oh, wow. Okay, that would have been enough for, like, four Abacus and... Uh, yeah. Four abacus and one apron. Okay, now I gotta save the game here. Just because it's a marathon. With an iron apron equipped, I should be safe to just walk outside to the little cave and back, but Duxbill could appear and cast Sap. And then if I lose 30,000 gold, that's like another seven minutes of, uh, Nada shopping. <laughs> to make it up. <laughs> Thank you. 
There we go. We got our treasurer for our final party. The the uh, producer for the Prog Rock Supergroup album that we're gonna make. Uh oh, it happened. But there's no escape. Made it. <laughs> Alright, and now I'm gonna be an angel investor in some more public works. I began digging a cave to go to an eastern port town. I dreamt of owning a ship and retrieving all the treasures of the world, but I ran out of money and I'm getting old too. If there were 60,000 more gold pieces, the excavation could be started again. Would you like to carry on my dream? Yes, I've received 60,000 gold pieces. I'll use this money to hire some workers and get started. We go in and out, and boom, the project has started already. Saloon, look, I started the excavation again. I started the excavation again. When it's done, I'll send a message to your house. It will be soon. Alright, so the casino is closed for maintenance, but now that everything in the chapter has been completely done, you can go in and out of the casino, and that's actually the plot trigger that, uh, Let's us complete chapter three, because Nada will say, why don't you go to the casino to relax? And now we've done that, so we can talk to Nada again. Hello, darling, I just received a message that the cave was completed. I didn't understand what it meant. Are you leaving on a journey again? Yep. All right, I won't say anything. You're always chasing dreams, but that's what I love about you. Why don't you go on and do it? I'll be waiting when you return. Wow, Nada is so understanding. I hope she does real well with this uh, random trinket shop plus masseuse parlor that she's starting up. Anyway, off we go. Look, it's even it's even paved on the inside, so you can take a wagon through it. Amazing. Good job. This guy dug this whole tunnel in like two minutes. All right, chapter three is done, and somehow I've lost time again. Even though it's just basically like pressing A until it's over. The story up to this point. Time for Chapter 4, The Sisters of Mumbarba. The story about to witness is about two beautiful sisters who are seeking to avenge their father. The story begins in Mumbarba, a town, a, tong, a town of song and death. This is a tale of two beautiful sisters. Mara the younger is a dancer, and Nara the older is a fortune teller. Mara, you're the best! Yoohoo! I love you, Mara! Good performance, sis. Did you see him? No, I didn't see a cute guy in the audience today either. No, I mean him! Our sworn enemy, Balzac! Oh, right, I didn't see him either. Don't be so discouraged. If you continue traveling, someday you'll find him. Here, I'll pay you up through today. Thanks for performing for us. You're so popular. I want you to stay longer, but I don't want to interfere with your pursuit of revenge. Rest well tonight, and leave tomorrow morning. So we got our daily paycheck of 100 gold, about how much Taloon is getting paid every day. It's like... <laughs> That's a lot of coins being minted, you know? Seems like inflation is kind of high in, in this game. Oh, which one is it? It's this one? Where's the dead drop? There it is. That's like 80% of someone's daily wage. I think they were trying to buy some full moon herbs or something. There's a strength seed. We know how important those have been in the other chapters, right? Well, even when I was a kid, I was like, man, these, every Dragon Warrior game, they give you a hero who's blue, who has a lot of HP and a lot of physical attack, and learns some basic spells. It's always a meathead who's, like, good at everything. I want to play an RPG where you start with wizards. And that's exactly what Chapter 4 is. And I learned why that's a, you know, you think you want it, but you don't. <laughs> kind of moment. Nara has a max HP of 18, and Mara has a max HP of 16. It's not fun. Uh, not interested. But they have this this awesome like Roma themed music. They got some great music in their chapter. Oops, we don't go up. Just go straight ahead. All right, it's time to get a career change. Sell. Copper Sword, and the Strength Seed. <laughs> These wizards are not going to do much attacking. We need money more. There's very little money to be found in Chapter 4, and not a lot to spend it on either. Guess I'm getting a career change for Mara. Collector's item, we can sell Mara's dancer's costume. We're going to get her a leather dress instead. 
career change. And a feather hat as well. For Mara? Oh, there we go. Two wings. Alright, we gotta fill Mara's inventory. I remember why. Two wings, two antidotes. Three herbs. Should have 21 left. Because even if you die, you'll go from 21 to 10 gold, and that's enough to revive a level 1 character. Go around the dog. Right jar! That dog got me. Uh, whoops. Those nuts were actually supposed to go to Mara. The amount doesn't matter. Get the new gear on. Put Mara in front. There we go, suddenly Mara is my tank. So that's... That kind of makes sense, because... Nara is the one who can heal. So we... want her to be a little bit more alive. Angel Head, now that's my... one of my favorite named enemies ever. Better to heal once I'm in the cave, because look how the menu disappears a little slower. The animated water tiles make the game lag when you're in the outdoor map. Gotta save those frames. Hey, it's Arahabaki! From the Shin Megami Tensei series. Whoa, seven damage? Anyway, that's both of Nara's casts of heal. Have fun. So right away, the very first thing we gotta do is get into this cave that has even more dangerous enemies. And I am definitely not going to be fighting with my two unarmed sisters who don't have weapons. Mara with enough MP to cast four blazes, and I feel like about half the things in here resist blaze. It's a miserable time being two spellcasters in Chapter 4, so luckily they put a big strong man in there somewhere to add to our party who will carry us for free. So, of course, that's what we're doing in the speedrun. Making our way down to the deepest floor. I <laughs> have this very cool elevator illusion. See, it makes a sound and goes down the bottom of the screen to appear on the top, like an elevator! Or a lift for everybody watching in the old world. Zemime or uh, Zemime. Taking a little bit of our MP, not a big deal though. Yeah, at least the enemies in here are not like... They're more like high defense, you know, they don't do a lot of damage usually. Okay, we're like three-quarters of the way there. Here's our next lift. That chest is important, but we're not going to open it until Chapter 5. Huh, Mara Nara, it's me, Orin! You're after revenge? I've been recovering, dreaming of revenge too. Balzac allied himself with the evil ones and gained great magic powers, but the Sphere of Silence should let you overcome his magic powers. I'll accompany you. Let's go! So yeah, this is Orin. Mara Nara's father was an alchemist named Edgar, who, uh... was betrayed and murdered by his apprentice, Balzac, and I think Orin was another of, uh... 
Hang on. I need to kill one of the sisters. We're doing the coffin blocking thing. Except the sisters are unarmed and can't hurt each other, so... <laughs> I need to get both of them to level 4 or 5 uh, by the end of this chapter. Or, well, in time for the boss. Orin is that strong. He'll carry us when we're both low level. Okay, let's go Nara, Orin, Mara, I guess. It doesn't matter, Orin's always gonna go first, and he has an Iron Spear, he has a lot of attack power. Like, what I do will not matter. Orin is going to one-shot something first, and then the battle will play out. That's how every turn is gonna play out. Nara is poisoned! Perfect. But Nara isn't alive. Yeah, I like leveling up Mara first. I mean, she's got all the armor. Anyway, now we go Aura, Nara, Mara. And like I said, I want things to go into Mara's inventory. Her inventory fills up, and then the Sphere of Silence should go into Nara's bag, without me having to do anything. There we go, some more nuts for Mara. Don't use them yet, though, that's just to max out her inventory. Luckily, I haven't had to use any of the supplies that she's carrying. She's at a decently low HP already. That I can death warp out of here, I'll be done in this cave before you know it. Just gotta go down this elevator and around the corner, and the Sphere of Silence is right there. <laughs> And just like that, Mara is level 4. I'll keep taking fights though, because that'll just still be like a head start going into chapter 5. I mean, like, Orin is a bit of a killing machine. Uh oh. No! It happened again. Let's keep Nara dead. I don't think I'm supposed to use my wing for this, but... I can buy another one later. Sizzle Mage, get him! Oh, that critical punch for six. Are so mad. Understandably. 22 experience for that easy of a fight. I feel like that Majimonjo just took away my chance of a PB, <laughs> even though this is not that big of a setback. commentating the community races that Crimson has put on. I've learned some unusual strats for Chapter 4 that the Japanese runners seem to like doing. So for the- of course we're gonna fight Balzac as the boss of Chapter 4. You know, we're gonna try to resolve the narrative arc of the sisters, but it, we'll see what happens. But anyway, 
for the boss fights. Of course, we're going to keep one sister dead and do this corpse blocking strategy again. So one of them is going to survive the fight. Who is it going to be? The obvious choice would be Nara, because she has the heal spell and is uh, a better natural attacker. But I've seen these Japanese runners choose Mara for the fight instead, which requires like a minute of preparation of just shopping, just filling Mara's inventory with medical herbs one at a time. All one at a time. But surviving the fight, she gets uh, 500 experience points and gains several levels. And if she doesn't survive the first boss fight in Chapter 5 in the Lighthouse... And this is pretty handy, because it means the experience that she got in Chapter 4 from Balzac means she should still hit level 11 and learn the traveling spells Return and Outside, which are evac and zoom for all you uh, Dragon Quest zoomers who only know the new localizations. You know, the, it's the magic that lets you fast travel. It's really important to have, particularly in a speedrun. <laughs> I, I'm still gonna take the fights, because, like, either I sit there running away or I guaranteed win in two turns when Orin attacks and Orin attacks. So I will just let the money trickle in, even though I'm about to lose half of it. Oh, and we get another encounter three steps later. Thanks, Dragon Warrior 4. Yeah, money does not really matter in Chapter 4. There's nothing good to buy. Not a lot of great stuff you can sell, so I just kind of like buy consumables that I'll need in Chapter 5. Maybe I'll be able to get something like a silk robe or a chainmail. <laughs> Take with me into Chapter 5. Oh, come on. Yeah, I, I did get away on the third turn. That was a little bit faster than fighting. Everybody gets a turn. Upper doesn't do anything, Orin is too powerful. Okay, here we go. Here's the last elevator I needed to hit. Wait, what the heck? That elevator I took must have gone twice as far. How did Majimonja outspeed Orin as well? That was like... Two outcomes going bad in a single fight. Like, losing the initiative roll, and the Ice Bolt targeting Mara, and the Ice Bolt doing enough damage. Okay, I think she got 12 HP, she was dead from an Ice Bolt no matter what. But, you know. It could have targeted Orin, come on. Alright, full inventory. Wait, Mara, what? Oh, it's because I used the wing, I forgot to... I did have to buy another one. Okay, pretend that went straight into Nara's inventory. Alright. Sacrificial sister time. Let's get blazed. <laughs> Orin with the terrific blow. Can you do it again? Oh my god, you did it again. I have to get 12 experience point those. Wow. Amara's not becoming level 6. There we go. What the? Amara outspeeding Orin. Incredible. Oh, I forgot to split for Orin joins. Alright, now we revive the other sister and switch who's alive on our way to the next place. Uh, I'm going to need one wing again. <laughs> Thank you, Mara. Let's go. Hmm, let me 
think. Right, I want to put the junk in Nara's inventory, so let's keep filling up Mara. I'm going to have to fill Mara's inventory with herbs, but, but much later. Oops, I have this all backwards. Should be Mara or Mara. And the two sisters punch out a manjar. Nope. <laughs> I should have used Blaze. What was I thinking? I wanted to see if they could punch out the Monjar, I guess. Okay, here's the castle of Kileon. We can't break- well, it we can break in, actually, but we can't do anything meaningful there yet. Actually, I'm gonna sap the outlier. And attack Mara. <laughs> Nara can't do damage. Why bother attacking? There we go, we one-shot C. Do, do, do. <gasps> Nara with the- Oh, that was so clutch. What the heck? And Mara goes down right on time. Oh, that was textbook. That was so good. Now it's Nara's turn to level up, and Mara's gonna be the coffin block, the, the palisade. Or in Mara Nara. And this is convenient because uh, I want all of these chests to go into Nara's inventory now. Uh oh. This looks like a bunch of slimes, but it's not. They might do a uh, foul union, you could say. Dark Doriardo. That's a Yu-Gi-Oh card! Dark Doriado. <gasps> That's a wooden hat! Wow! I think Nara can equip that, actually? <laughs> I I'll get to sell it, actually. Sure. I think these guys are actually kind of tough for Orin. Oh, he's fine. And if you get all the way here and Mara's still alive, here's the mining town of Ectemto where there's been a gas leak and you can just, uh... Jump in the swamp. So yeah, there's a gold mine here in Actemto, and uh, the Kingdom of Endor has needed a lot of coins minted. They needed to, you know, give 60,000 gold coins to some merchant to hold all at once, so... They've been working really hard in the gold mine here, and they dug too deep and too greedily, and... Uh, caused a great big gas leak. Not enough MP, wow. Higatarinai. That's a relief, because those mad clowns are very dangerous. What the? Mad clown? The Rogue Whisper gets jerked away, mad- What?! That was the worst outcome imaginable. Wow. I don't even know what that means, like, Rogue Whisper gets jerked away, what does that even mean? Should have stayed at the end to recover Nara's MP, apparently. It's like, Orin's not even at full HP, and this is all I get now. Why is he attacking the Rogue Whisper first? The Rogue Whisper's harmless. Now Orin's asleep? Rogue- oh no. Jerked away again. I gotta walk out of here and just use the inn. That's... That's embarrassing. Wait, I didn't even, like, gain anything. I could have just hit reset on the console. I guess I wanted to keep half of this money that I'm going to lose half of anyway. Uh, 
Yeah, Nara's still very low level, still doesn't have a weapon, still doesn't even know the sleep spell yet. They may not really do anything to offensively help out poor Orin here. Well, these Rogue Whispers are supposed to be just harmless. Like, this is usually what they do, is either, like, attack and either do one damage or miss, or they just sit there being flustered. So it's actually just like a, you know, sit there watching Orin win the fight for you, waiting room. And there you go. Easiest money of my life. There we go, now I learned sleep. <laughs> okay, this will just take way too long to win. Oh, here we go, look. Uh, C didn't act. All the rest of them did, though. I am gonna get a weapon in this cave, I just... it's really close. It's on this screen. I'm almost there. Do not need Nara to hit level 6. Once I have the weapon for Nara, I will start taking it. Oh! Nice, get a surprise round. Escape for free. They're trying to put me to sleep. One more? Aww. <laughs> I did 31 to one shot one of them. 108. Here we go. This is the thing you want in Nara's inventory, so this is why it's better to level up Mara first. Here we go. Finally, have a weapon I can equip and swing. Uh, wow, that still does. Pretty lousy damage. Because <laughs> I'm very underleveled, though. And I mean, my sisters are both spellcasters. They do not have very good physical attack strength. There's Sleeping Orin taking half damage. And all this damage I put in on Vamp Dog A is just gonna be wasted. Okay, well, there we go. There's the little play up. Orin can one shot this one now. Or what? Or not? Okay. That was what, like 7 plus 27 plus another 7? There we go, level 6 Nara. More than I need, I think, but look at that lousy level up. I gained one more HP, amazing. Alright, so what are we really here for in this gold mine? Orin is an alchemist and he can break locks. He can break that magic key lock and let us explore Balzac's castle of Keyleon. It's called King Leo in the Japanese. And we learn that the Chancellor uh, is easily spooked by loud noises. So we're going to take this gunpowder jar. These guys who are digging by hand just don't even notice. Stick Nara in the front and let's death warp to get out of here quickly. And she just has a silk robe for defense, so she got kind of wrecked. Okay. Let's revive... my sister. And I'll fix my party and stay at the end to restore Nara's MP. She's gonna need all of it for this fight. Wait, if Nara's dead... Getting revived restores your MP. I actually did not need to stay at the inn. Yep, yeah, see? 25 and 29 MP. Stats are exactly the same. Oh, 
Wing. Keyleon. Also, give the gunpowder jar to Nara. Uh, whoops, I don't have room. In fact, my inventories are very cluttered indeed. Okay, Mara, take one of these herbs. She's gonna need all of them later anyway. Give the gunpowder jar to Nara. Oops, forgot. Right there, okay. Let's give one of these herbs to Mara. I need to max out Mara's inventory. Because the next chest I'm going to open needs to go to Nara. Okay, drinking all the water at the end of Chapter 3 is lined up just right. This should go off first try, no problem. Let's hope that it does. This guy won't go into the room if he sees anybody in the hallway, but there we go. I think if you're, like, frame perfect, you can, like, walk up to the thing while it still appears to be open, but you still have to search the wall. You have to wait for it to close. Alright, so turn one is always going to be the same. Mara uses Sap. Nara uses the Sphere of Silence. You need this in order to win. Because once this guy gets to about 25% HP, he would just cast Heal All. <laughs> and you have to start over. Still going to have Nara heal herself here. And we need to get Mara, uh, you know, eliminated here. Okay, Coffin Block established, now we just heal Auron every turn until his HP stabilizes. Balzac will usually be faster. I guess I can sneak one attack in. You can also use the Silver Tarot cards like an item. Uh, it's very risky, though. One of them is Card of the Stars, which doubles your uh, experience and coins after winning a battle. Which, of course, would be huge for this. One of them is Card of the Sun, which casts by kill on someone on your party. But every other card in the deck is uh, dangerous or has a downside. So it's kind of not worth shuffling through them. Chapter 4 boss down, no big deal. Yeah, it's just chapter 3 done, Orin joins chapter 4 done. Those are my splits. Oh, plot battle time. Is Keleon, the actual king of this castle. Get him! Uh, never mind, he got us. Mara's party is demolished. Well, this old guy was trying to escape from this country, but he's too old and he's sick. He has given up. He's gonna give us his boarding pass and allow us to... Use the getaway tunnel that he dug too? Oh, cool. Jailbreak. They found us! Hurry! I'll stop them! Run now! Okay, Orin. We're trying to go fast. We'll do that. Alright, so here's the port town of Havil. I believe it's called. Can I do anything cool with my money? No. <laughs> Let's just buy fairy waters, I guess. <laughs> Never mind, my inventory is completely full. Yeah, this, whatever. <laughs> 139 this is not even worth the menuing to try to transfer that wealth to chapter 5 somehow. We brought a boarding pass! Hurry! The ship will sail soon! Uh, wait, I gotta go there second. You have to talk to one specific person on the boat. I won't tell my brother Pippin what happened to our father until he's old enough to bear agony and despair. 
Where's Dad? Why isn't he coming with us? Well, anyway. Typical cheery Dragon Quest stuff. Once the ship leaves, you won't be able to come back to this country. Do you have anything we should take care of before leaving? Can we set sail now? Anyway, this is my break. I'll be back in a minute. This is how Maru and Nara, without fulfilling their wish, left their home country. What are the small lights which will help them? The end of chapter four. The sisters of Manbarama. Yeah, there's a shrine on the coast I walked past that I didn't go into, where they meet an older fortune teller who tells their fortune. We're finally here. We're finally in chapter five, the chosen ones. There was a small nameless village deep in the mountains far east of Endor. The villagers lived quietly. They never left the village or let outsiders enter, but one day... It's done. My dear child, take this lunch to your father at the pond. He's fishing. You brought me lunch? You're already 17 years old, entering adulthood. Listen, you must always be righteous and forefront and courageous, no matter what happens. A soldier says, today I'm going to teach you a spell called Zap. Thank you, do you want your lunch? Okay, sit there, I'll make it. Monsters finally found this village! They'll be here any second! Oh no! Flee now! Follow me! That's the guy in the end. We'll take care of the monsters! Take the hero to a safe place! If anything happens to you, I... Hide! Hurry! I'll be there soon! Those monsters! They found the hero! We only needed a little more time to make Ruth the great hero. The time I feared has come. We didn't tell you this before, but we are not your true parents. We want to explain, but we have no time. You must be safe now. You must go hide. Oh no, the monsters are coming! We must fight! Listen well. <gasps> the monsters seek to end your life. You are a threat to them. Born with a hidden power, you have the potential to become strong enough to destroy any evil being. But you're still weak. Escape and survive. Understand? <laughs> I don't know if I do. I'm only 16. Like, I want to go to the mall and listen to my Sony Walkman. Boink, I've enjoyed growing up with you. You're so cute, I've always thought of you as my little sister. Don't worry, I won't let them take your life. Celia trans transforms. Celia transforms into an exact replica of the hero, who gave me four extra lines of dialogue because I picked a female hero. Objectively a downside. The monster's voices are heard from outside. Necrosaro, we've destroyed <clears throat> the hero. Good work, everyone. Let's return to our base. Well, let's go above ground and see how it went. What the heck? They destroyed all these buildings. Well, that's, that's Celia's feather hat. I can't equip it, though. Too much of a tomboy. More than Alina, apparently. She can equip a feather hat. Make sure to stop here before you go, though, because her basic clothes are not very good protection. Stop at this here woodsman's shack and loot all three of these jars. Gained 50 gold pieces. Finds the medical herb. Finds the leather armor. Do equip that. Look at that, double defense power. There's the town of Bronca, but um, it's already on our return list, and if we die there, that's where we respawn. We don't even have to physically touch it. Copper Sword is not a great weapon. Her stats are actually pretty low early on. 
I think this hero is actually the weakest hero of any Dragon Quest game, now that I think about it. <laughs> like, stat-wise, our hero is very slow, very low max HP, uh... <laughs> I feel like I need to use that herb if Demon Stump is doing that much damage to me. The Zenithian gear that you get is very good, though. Okay, uh, crossing the tripwire did not win at the casino. You can win 2,000 casino coins coming through this tunnel sometimes. I think the odds are like 1 in 32. I guess if you just walk back and forth through it, you would eventually get it, but you can get a meteorite armband, which doubles someone's agility, but it's not that helpful. Anyway, we made it to Endor, the same town the sisters ended up in. We're gonna talk to Nara first. Would you like to hear your fortune for just ten gold pieces? Alright, I'll tell your fortune. I see seven lights around you. They are small now, but they will soon grow. What? You are the hero! I've been searching for you! The one with the untapped power to defeat the evil ones! Do 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 Nara, join the party party! Let's go. My sister Mara should be at the casino. Okay, great, but before we do that... Nara, I hear you have some junk in your inventory that you want to get rid of. And I've already shown everybody how horrible inventory management is in this game, so let's just permanently deal with these. <laughs> Alright, there we go. We dealt with the Chapter 4 plot junk. Now let's buy some... Oh wait, let's talk to Mara first. I knew you'd be here! Uh-oh. You spent all the money I earned on gambling! We're broke! I'm sorry. Huh? Who's this? This is the hero we've been searching for. How nice! You can take care of us from now on, right? Mara, Mara, join the party! Let's go, Ikuze. Yes, I would like to get magic potion for Nara. Magic potion for Nara. Magic potion for Nara. <laughs> All right, and you have coins, come back. Handy way to restore Nara's MP in the lighthouse, but later, okay. Sell the Mystic Acorns. And the Silver Tarot cards. hero. Just all the clothes, the leather hat. have a wooden hat that I got as a drop. That's great. I got a feather hat you can wear, Nara. Where'd you get it? Don't ask. Okay. Three fairy waters eventually. My inventories are so full! I'm gonna sell one of these antidote herbs, there's no way I need two. I am gonna need some room to <laughs> manipulate inventory as well. Give one of the potions to Mara, there we go. There we go. So there's another... We need two wings.
Hero can carry one of them. Okay. This is gonna be messy. <laughs> My inventory is a little full. Still don't want to take fights yet. So yeah, look how the interface looks all different now that I have multiple characters in Chapter 5. Something has fundamentally changed about the rest of the game and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Except use the Game Genie code, what is it, uh... I, I did a playthrough on my channel uh, using the Game Genie code for Dragon Warrior 4 that instead of having the tactics menu, you can just control all four of your front row characters. But you can't swap anybody out with their air-conditioned wagon during battles anymore. I leveled up Nara a bunch, but uh, I over-prepared and the final battle was still easy. So yeah, I can only give a command to the hero now. Everyone else is controlled by a sort of vague Persona 3-style tactics menu. The options are... What are they again? Uh, normal, tryout, offensive, defensive, save MP, and use no MP. Those are your six options. Here we go. Here's a Morning Star. The hero can't equip this, though. But Nara can. Now Nara's got a decent life. Way better than those tarot cards. Let's do it. Let's go offensive mode. Now that I have a good weapon on Nara. Don't have a great weapon on Hero, though. I'm here to get the best in slot weapon for Hero. There's a broadsword and a half plate armor waiting for me on the bottom level of this flooded cave. So that's what we're here to get. Offensive tactics should have Nara casting sleep against groups as well. I think she'll learn Infernos at level 8 as well. And I gave her the extra experience from Chapter 4's boss. So hopefully she'll have it soon. Uh, Mara's gonna learn Firebell around level 8 as well, I think. Sandmaster's got low defense, I'll aim for them. And Mara should always cast Blaze in offensive mode. I mean, the alternative is punching for zero damage. And of course, once I have the... <laughs> once I have the broadsword and the half plate, I'd like to death warp out of here. So I have the very awkward challenge of trying to get my sisters close to dead, except both of them are holding medical herbs, and even on use no MP, they will use the medical herbs when someone is at half HP or lower to keep someone alive. I've also heard this game's, uh, like, AI personalities were assigned incorrectly, and Alina is actually like Christo, and she's willing to heal people who are, like, under 70 HP, so if you... If you put herbs in Alina's inventory, she'll use her very high speed to quickly heal people at the start of a new round. <laughs> Especially if you put the Staff of Healing in her inventory, she'll just get busy healing everybody, it's kind of funny. Instead of attacking. <laughs> uh oh, speaking of uh, attacking... Nara, save hero. I can't tell- oh wait, I can tell the hero to block. Amazing. Mara uses the medical herb. Oh, Nara gets the kill. Well done. I needed room in somebody's inventory. You take this fairy water. Sniff. Hmm. Okay, switch to use no MP. Metal Slime B cast Blaze, Nara takes 10 damage, Mara misses, Nara misses, Hero misses. <laughs> Stays, Nara takes 10 from Blaze, Mara uses the Medical Herb, Nara attacks for 1 damage, Hero attacks for 0 damage. Metal Slime runs away, Metal Slime disappeared. Alright, now I walk around back and forth. Oh, right. Uh, equip swing at Mara. Oh! Went to one. I just start running away now. Oh, 
far as spells are contained. <laughs> okay. The Mara in the front. No, Nara in the front, then Mara, then Hero. I don't have room to, like, take the herbs out of their inventory. I was not expecting Mara to survive that broadsword swing. Oh. Yeah, if I give them a turn, they're gonna, like, heal each other with the herbs. armor. The other thing, Chapter 5 gets harder in that if you fail to run away, all of your foes will always act. And I keep getting all these first turn escapes when I'm trying to get caught up in it. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, rubber attacks before you're ready! Okay, Mara has gone down. Nara has healed the hero, but that's okay, because I have control over the hero. Wait. I actually want to fight my way. <laughs> Just want the hero to get to level 4 before I respawn. Excellent. Thanks for the good luck, a Starburst 3. Nice plus 4 strength. Hero getting better strength gains than Alina. Hero with this gear might have done okay in the tournament. Being level 4 would have been a little ridiculous. Alright, that's one down, and we're dead. A voice is heard out of nowhere. Chosen ones, it's not the time to give up. <laughs> oh, I remember the voice I used for that guy. Okay, I need to revive the sisters now. Luckily, I can afford it. I'll save. If I die on the way there, it'll be annoying to sell stuff and revive the sisters. Okay. Put Nara's armor back on. Put the hero's new armor. Change the party order. There we go. I like that there's like a, a party of adventurers here. Do you want to come with us? Oh, our party is full. Sorry. <laughs> These guys could have hired the hero! The hero! And they blew it. Oh, heck. This is where I'm supposed to use my first... berry water, honestly. <laughs> oh, whatever. I'm already out of the easy mode encounter zone, basically. I think once I cross... Yeah, this... This vertical meridian. Here we go, we're in the good stuff now. I think the Bantams resist Fireball, but that's okay, Amara only has Blaze. Infernos, I think. There we go. Now the grinding becomes gooder. And Mara learned Firebell. Wow. Right when I needed them to. My hero to hit level 5, though. That she learns heal more. I feel like I ended up getting in less fights than usual. I didn't exactly fight to the death in in the cave there. Okay, here we go. There's some there's some mountains around there.
wonder if I can get another encounter zone up here. Mm, not quite, but that's that sure is nice. Marcos Firebell. Boom, boom. Doesn't work. Hits. Three out of four, pretty good. And here's Infernos now, doing less damage. But all damage is good damage. More Infernos. Doesn't work. Hero attacks and gets the kill. 80 experience points! Not a lot of money. I mean, they're chickens, though. They haven't even got, like, thumbs or purses, you know? Go learns heal more. Now we can go in. I'll, I'll heal inside where there's less menu lag. Also going to... Oh. Good, the hero's inventory is already full. Perfect. Perfect. The room in Naras? Good, 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 good. So, there, yeah, I'm here to get another plot coupon. The symbol of faith. So, yeah, we learned pretty quickly we're in a contained area. You know, everyone in Santim went missing, so the border... Uh, the border gate from Endor to Santim is sealed off. Can't enter the kingdom of Santim. We can go north to Lakanaba, to Loon's hometown. But, uh, yeah, otherwise we can't really go anywhere else. Like, if you go all the way to the east, you end up here in this cave. So, okay, there's a little shrine to the south, bottlenecking the entrance to the desert. But, you know, it's the desert. You're, you know, you're gonna get a cotton mouth if you try to cross it. You're gonna get thirsty. That was a very nice kaishin there. Use renewable heal more to heal again. Yeah, Hector owns a wagon, but he doesn't want to let anyone borrow it, let anybody cross, because he went to this cave and his friends betrayed him, so he doesn't trust anybody anymore. So we're going to go to this cave and figure out what happened, I guess. So the first thing that happens is that Mara and Nara are dropped into a, a pit trap. <laughs> And it seems like they keep turning into monsters, and we can't trust them either. So Expel has about a 50% chance to work on these vampire bats. I won't get experience from them, but they give very little anyway. I might have taken out both of them in a single action, but instead we got the usual, getting rid of one. We got the 911. We killed both Trixie Urchins, though, in two hits each with our broadsword at level 5. Very underleveled victory here. Thanks to all the best-in-slot gear we left lying around by, you know... We didn't have room for all of it in Taloon's pockets anyway. Might as well leave some of it to the heroes so that we have a, you know, a turbo start in Chapter 5. Look how expensive that stuff was. Like, a broadsword was 2,000. Half plate was 1,200. We saved so much money by leaving them there. Okay, start mashing B. Was Nara at the casino in Endor? No, Mara was. Sorry we doubted you. We've been chased by your imposter for so long. Let's go now. Alright, so the sisters are united with me. We're strong enough to blast through those uh, big gravel tiles there. As long as we're a group of three. Now that we're a trio again, we can blast our way into here. And claim the, the valuable treasure of this cave. A big gem called the Symbol of Faith. And we had better keep it out of the hero's inventory. Let one of the sisters hold it, because they're useless. I mean, well, we need them to get past the first boss fight of Chapter 5, but then they're uh, not going to see another fight ever again for the rest of the run. And as for the hero, well, like I said, we can't control what our allies do, so giving them any fancy items that have a use in battle, it, it's there's no purpose. They're not going to be smart enough to know to use them. You could set them to try out, and they'll just start using random things in their inventory. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Wait, did I just learn Return? I don't have enough MP to use it, though. Because I... got here too late. What the heck? Uh-oh. Oh, Hero just died. Good job. Hmm. 
Frank uses the medical herb. Well, sunk cost. Let's see if they can clean it up. Oh, but Mara casting Fireball now. That was all on me. I could have have had Nara just use heal. Oh, what the heck. I was thinking, should I use my wing and just go back? Well, I literally needed to. It's safer to go from this side anyway, and I can use my fairy water and get zero encounters. Another time loss, but we're, we're still chugging along here. Uh, we'll not save. It's not, not time for that yet. <laughs> Do the worm here. We went our way all the way over here. I think it's cheaper to rest here than at uh, Hector's Shrine. Okay, let's use our first fairy water. Oh yeah, like the, I was saying, the hero's inventory is what matters. Like, whatever you put in the hero's inventory should be- should serve some sort of purpose. Because if it doesn't, you're gonna have to take it away later and give it to someone else to make room, so... You know, try to be careful. You again! Huh, what's that gem? Why? Looking at it seems to purify my mind, the symbol of faith. I got it! The most valuable treasure has been trusting each other. I was wrong. Let me join your party. Of course we can take the wagon. Hector, join the party! <laughs> Shall we go now? Alright, chat. Hector is going to introduce his horse to us. This is my horse, Primrose. Everyone be nice to her, okay? Stick Hector in the front. He's got a ton of HP. Hero has more defense power, though. Okay, go east first, where the encounter zone is easier. Uh-oh. Okay, we have to win one fight with Hector. And then the game will recalculate our average level, and there he is. He's a young man with a question mark for a level, which is actually about 200. So now when I use my next fairy water, let's use Mara's to make room in her inventory. There we go. We will not be bothered by any outdoor random encounters for uh, the rest of the run, actually. Oh, I'm gonna have to stay in the inn here anyway to make it daytime. Alright, and then Apocalyptic Inventory Management is about to happen. Give the Magic Potion to Nara. So Nara's Antidote Herb, we can't get poisoned in this tower that we're going to. Time to give medical herbs to Mara. Although I'll, I'll give the one from Hero's Inventory as well. There's one in there? Yeah. Do I need another wing? Probably do. Nobody has room for it, never mind. Then I can sell Hero's Copper Sword. Oops, Hector doesn't seem to want to sell it. Sell Hero's Leather Armor too to make room. Oh, he's, he's already, she's already carrying a wing. <laughs> okay, fine. I also need room for... Hector isn't carrying anything. Uh, Alright, Golden Beret. A hero can equip the Golden Beret. There we go. Alright, we're all set. 
Save the game. Tashkani, I certainly recorded your progress. I guess we'll walk out instead of using the wings, sheesh. Okay, and you want to use a second fairy water around here, like somewhere in these woods. Alright, so with, with Mara's, or Nara's three magic potions, we can just freely cast heal to heal up between fights here. There are metal slimes in this tower, though. If I can kill one, it's whatever. If I can kill two, though, then Mara will learn bang and I'll have a much better chance of winning the boss fight. Gotta manually heal. There's no Monton button in this here NES game. Gotta keep Hero's MP intact. Need to use the Hero's uh, Offensive Magic Expel. Oh, one of these is a Luxie. Uh oh. Hitaru. Hmm. This is such bait, I should not be doing this. Hector can build up power, and that can do two damage to a metal slime. What's going on? Metal slime rolled like lowest for initiative. Yeah, metal slime went last! Terrific blow by Hector! Metaru defeated! Alright, well, I guess even if this lighthouse attempt fails, I will just save the game after. Two levels for the hero. Hero learns Fireball. Nara gains a level. Two vitality for plus four HP. That's about the most I could hope for. Nara gained another level. Fight was bait, or it was legendary. <laughs> Learns the spell Numb Off. Yeah, here's Paralysis, which also goes away if you just take, like, 15 steps. Mara gains a third level. Well, well. I think she learns outside, right here. Awesome. So, Mara's got outside and Hero has return. I think that's all the travel magic I need. Whoops, wrong chest. I wanted the other one with 400 gold in it. I am going to be doing uh, greedy stuff. <laughs> what the? Metaru? Metal slime disappeared. Okay then. Hey, who's this? Who's this purple pajamas guy? Oh, I don't know who you are, but you've come at right time. I want to extinguish the evil fire burning in this lighthouse, but powerful monsters have been preventing me from going any farther. Will you extinguish the evil fire for me? The fire of serenity burned in this lighthouse until recently. It should be able to... Oops. <laughs> they say a remnant of it still burns somewhere in this lighthouse. It should be able to extinguish the evil fire. Shall I repeat this? No. I'm counting on you. I'll be waiting for you in the port town I forgot the name of. Wow. Who's that annoying level one guy? Who does he think he is asking me to help him? So yeah, Conan Bear is a, a coastal town of trading. Except the nearby lighthouse has been hijacked by the monsters and they are... Uh, aiming the beam wrong to make the ships crash on purpose. So, uh, you know, Taloon got rich enough to buy a, a boat, but he can't go anywhere. Well, I guess he could leave. <laughs> well, maybe the lighthouse will make him crash in the daytime. 
He can leave, but he can't come back. Because the monsters took control of the lighthouse. What the? Oh dear, they're all gonna act. Skeletons are just gonna cast defense and the rogue whispers, their AI is just completely broken. In chapter 5. Oh, they can attack, apparently. Uh-oh. Skeleton attack imminent. They double hit Nara. Come on. Uh, well. <laughs> triple escape fail. Okay, we get to sit through the skeleton using defense again. Whatever. We'll just take the, the 1500 experience and jump out of here. Oh, Mara has returned already. Thanks for the good luck, Kaishi Kasara. Save again. Lock in that first metal slime, at least. I also noticed uh, Hector is not at full HP. So I'm gonna do this cheeky maneuver, cast return to go to the front of town. So I can walk to the inn. <laughs> nice pronunciation, fuck. Thank you. We took a, a, long, a long car ride home one night. Because we, we missed the last ferry back to our part of the island. We had to take the next one that went to a different part of the island, and we had to drive back from there. So during that 90-minute car ride, my friend Flair taught me how to say all the Japanese phonetics properly. So that is that has always stuck with me. Japanese is the, the first language I'll try to pronounce things in, because it's more reliable, you know? Okay, everyone else take out the grizzly sabers. Oh, never mind, my turn is wasted. <laughs> is Taloon still going to be in my way? Oh, good. Those haven't seen me. So different from the usual. Yeah, I mean, the, the Japanese phonetics always work the same way. They're reliable, where English has phonics instead. as a sort of weird, like, context-based system. You know, a language, a language with phonetics like that will always be reliable. Well, thanks, Rogue Whisper, for dealing one damage to yourself. Rogue Whisper was defeated. Wow. Bear Tiger, those things are powerful enough to do damage to Orin. Definitely not fighting them. I don't even know how strong vile plants are. I don't want to find out. <laughs> The main benefit from those level ups, like everybody leveled up twice and gained like 10 or 15 more max HP. It's a pretty big deal. This early in the game, like my 40 max HP. Pteranodons can show up in here and they can cast Fireball and just do 15 damage to everybody in your party. Then your max HP is 40? How are you supposed to survive? is definitely from the harsh old days of D&D 1st Edition. I'm like, how much HP does my wizard start with? Roll 1d4 and add your constitution bonus. I rolled a 1! Okay, your max HP is 2. <laughs> Look.
It's also a very weird uh, paradigm in RPGs of like, your hit points represents like, how much you can bleed out and stay standing or something. It should be just like, you know, your stamina. You're, you're just getting winded in a fight and you can't juke as much and then you get stuck with a fencing sword or whatever. <laughs> Instead of being like, here's Fireball, take 46 damage, it should be like, I cast Grease and you lose your footing. Uh-oh. <laughs> here's the secret Golden Barat, by the way. This is the the upside to picking a female hero. Is look, look, I get... Oops. Not you. I get six more defense. Wow. That means I take, like, two less damage from these powerful attackers in this fight. Speaking of powerful attackers, always Montan. See, Hector needs two more HP. Wow, that's it. That was- we actually were pretty unscathed coming up here. Has Nine more MP? Maxed out? Okay. I'll give one to Mara for... oh. Mara can't carry... Mara can't carry more things. I shouldn't even do this. I don't think Mara is going to cast any spells in this fight. <laughs> the music is so appropriate for this. <laughs> Wait. Give one to the hero. I might use it during the fight. Ki ki ki, burn, burn. The evil fire will sink all the ships. Ki, who's there? Ki ki ki, you fools! You've come at the right moment. I'll throw you into this evil fire as kindling. Ki ki ki. Change to offensive tactics and expel flamer B. <coughs> These flamers are. Oh, they just killed Nara on turn one. Wait, what? Live with one HP, what a legend. Yeah, and this is why we give Mara all the herbs. She's gonna be the healer. All we can do to these flamers, they're a late game... Oh, hero lost their turn due to the war cry, okay. Yeah, what that KB. Okay. Yeah, these flamers are, like, random encounter enemies, but... Uh, their defense is way too high for how early in the game this is. All we can do to get rid of them is cast Expel on them. And M Nara can put them to sleep, but Nara just lost her turn. Yeah, sure, Hector can do like 5 damage, but uh... Okay, Mara cowers. I'm going to heal... Nara. Because I think Nara is going to heal Mara. Oh, what the heck. Uh, Mara just died. Unless this rolls a 9? Okay, rolled an 8, wow. Oh, Nara healed... Mara healed Nara, what the heck? Okay, now Mara's dead. Unfortunate. But she already learned outside, so that's okay. Like, she did what she needed to do. What the heck, Hero died? Uh, I might lose now. This is unfortunate, this is 2,000 experience the Hero's not gonna get. I'm like a fifth of a metal babble behind in experience. I think Bengal was put to sleep. Hector built up power and did 20 damage. The Flamer has like 70 HP or something though. It's like way too much. Oh, Nara doing 22? Hold on. Are these bozos actually gonna go all the way? Flamer put back to sleep? If they can kill the Flamer, they can do it. They did it. Wow. Holy moly, Nara, go get him. Let's go! Nara saved this sketchy lighthouse fight. They actually took down a flamer. Second best lighthouse fight I've ever had. One he was a clench fiesta. <laughs> to take the fire of serenity from the hero's coffin. And toss it into the lighthouse. Ooh! Old times and bards weren't singing mages and more like charming rogues. Mages were like a Russian roulette. <laughs> Take the wing too. 
his wing to go back to Quenember, now that we fixed the lighthouse. You either exploded everyone else, or you died instantly. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's get my rogues alive here. Mara's gonna be my transport mage for the next long while, so I do need to revive her. Don't need to save. We're gonna go in a long row so there's sprite flicker while I'm talking to Taloon. Thank you! The evil lights are gone and the sea is so calm now, and the ship is finally finished! I have one favor to ask of you. Monsters are after me. I'd feel safer traveling with strong people like you. Let me join you! Let's travel all over the world! I appreciate it! Let's leave right away! Boat has joined the party! Starboard the helm! <laughs> nice argument, but unfortunately, delayed blast fireball while you were monologuing. <laughs> now let's head south! I hear an old sea expert who has a valuable map lives in the town of Mintos. Oh, I should have put fairy waters in Taloon's inventory! I forgore! I forgore! Okay, here's Mintos. I'm just gonna tag it for my return list, though. Uh-oh, I don't have any more fairy water, do I? Oops. Uh... I'm supposed to have more. Now it's nighttime. Okay, fine. Here's what we'll do. We go to Endor. <laughs> Stay at the end. Buy two fairy waters. Then we should be good. Like, I wasn't completely broke at the end of Chapter 3, was I? I could have got two fairy waters in Taloon's inventory. Deliver it to the wagon, then. Actually, while I'm at it, I'll travel for free. Should use the fairy water first. And once again, we want to fight with Hector, so game still thinks my average level is 50 plus. Other feature added to chapter 5 is now we can start finding mini metals in various places. And these will allow us to get some extraordinary items for free. So, let's start snagging them. Here's the town of Soretta. We're gonna come here a lot. Because the, the inn and the church are right by the entrance. What every Dragon Quest runner loves to see. Oops. No, the effect of my fairy water wore off. Well, I'm just squeezing every step I can from it. Even though, uh, Bray is gonna join pretty soon. You could pick up Bray early. For the people who do Chapter 2 differently, where they, like, kill Metal Slimes and Bray is, like, level 10 or 11, he'll have, uh, outside in return. You can have him join your party early. The current dilemma is that, uh, Christo has fallen ill. And it turns out, uh, the agricultural kingdom of Soretta has a, a miracle crop called Padiquia that cures any illness, but it's out of season right now, so we're going to cold storage to go get it. <laughs> ice Loth. You know what? It's one little Ice Loth. I can take him down. Oh, Mara is wasting MP, never mind. <laughs> Come on, built up Hector gets the job done. 
Yeah. We're in Team Rocket's base with the uh, automatic movement arrows. They gotta put a security system of some kind in cold storage, you know. And we're on the bottom floor already. Oh, love these encounters on, like, the last step before we get launched on the conveyor. Oops. Gotta go a little quicker. Here we go. Hero obtains the Pedaquia Seed. Mara, cast outside. Mara, cast return to Soretta. I don't know where the king is when it's nighttime, so I'm just going to stay at the inn. <laughs> I've never been to Soretta at nighttime. I don't know what the status quo is out here. We gotta talk to the king. Soretta is a... Uh, a very egalitarian kingdom. Even the king works in the fields because they're so poor. Oops. Oh, oh, the Pataquia seed! It is indeed, finally! Hurry, plant the seed! Yes, Pataquia grows instantly. Hector plants the Pataquia seed in the field. A Pataquia bud shoots out instantly! Thank you! Our country is saved! Take this Pataquia root! Okay, and then use that to go back to Mentos. I gotta scroll my notes. Don't forget this small metal to the west of the well. Nara obtains the small metal. I found the Pataquia root. I couldn't find it myself and returned empty handed. I'm grateful! Quick! Christo needs the Pataquia! Christo's complexion returns to normal at once and you recover. Mm ha! Princess! You're fine, Christo! I'm ashamed. I'm the one who should be looking after you. Don't worry, Christo. Now let's resume our journey to find Necrosaro. What's the matter, huh? Hero, too. Necrosaro. I heard Necrosaro destroyed the hero's village. Is Hero really the. Really? Then we should journey together. Alina's party joined the hero's party. Wow, so we've got everyone together. We're just missing one person. They go out ahead and get in the wagon. Please wait. I'm sorry about I eavesdrops on your conversation. I didn't know that this is the hero who will save the world. A man named Ragnar searching for the hero once stayed at this inn. Alright, they also have a good ceiling on here. The, okay, we're going to... Endor. Excuse me, everyone. I know I must take over my father's inn someday. I've decided to study management under old Howden of Mintos. Goodbye, Primrose. Wow. Hector gifts us the wagon, too. What a nice guy. Alright, so now Bray has joined the party, and he's got an inventory completely full of fairy water. Excellent. I think because I stayed at the inn in Soretta, I have a good day-night cycle. Getting here at nighttime is bad, because... And you have to go around the bed to get this small metal. And an island hermit just living by himself with Linguar. That's so cool. No time to talk, though. We're just here to reach right into the grain jar and pull the metal out and leave. Stop by Havil to add it to our list of return locations. We'll be back here later. Again, sailing along the coast. Oops! Supposed to be preempting using fairy waters. Lost a couple seconds every time we find out the power of the fairy water is gone. It's Actemto again, it's even more destroyed than ever. Just stopping by to fast travel to it later. Need it to be daytime by the time I get to the next place, but it will be. This place is like a... It's a seaside village that doesn't have a name, and you can't fast travel back here. But that's fine, because I'm only going to come here once. This is also where you get, like, the Stone of Drought, which lets you get into the Pirate's Waterfall Cave, where you get the, the Sands of Time, called the Sand Glass of Regression in this game. The Metal Babel Sword is also in there, if you have the final key to get to it, that is. It's a pretty long and dangerous cave, though. It would It's just not worth it to go there in a speedrun, like, ever. 
The, oh no, I missed it by a few steps. I was like, okay, I'll use my next fairy water in Santeen while the game is not lagging. But I missed it by three steps. <coughs> Again, we'll be back here later. We're gonna find out what's north of Santee. Yeah, this is kind of a weird, uh, bumpy canal country, like Venice or something. I think we gotta sail into this bay and then go in here. And it's daytime right on... Wow, this is like the perfect day-night cycle. King's Challenge? What challenge? Anyway, we gotta do this shop first. Buy Cloak of Evasion for Alina. Uh, we gotta sell stuff first. This useless wooden hat. Uh, what else? Right, just some of the saloon goodies. Now we sell Alina's chainmail. Oh, and Hero's half plate too, since we're upgrading their chests. I can sell Hero's broadsword too, because I'm not going to be attacking anything. Dragon Mill's 52. Okay, I'll just get that first. Now I need 3k? Well, selling three aprons will get me that. I'm upgrading my armor first here because I'm going to attempt uh, a very dangerous trip into a very late game cave. These are upgrades that I'm going to be making in this chapter later anyway. There we go. Also, there's a medal to get up here in this woman's house. Who are you? Don't worry, lady, we're heroes. Uh, whoops. This is the wrong jar. Oh, no, it's the right jar. <laughs> right jar is the right jar. Just reach right into the jar of rice, right to the bottom where they're keeping the mini metal. Someday I'll go on a journey to visit the Metal King, and he shall make me wealthy with this mini metal. <laughs> nope, we're taking it. Canal City is quite novel for a, an early top-down scrolling RPG like this. I quite like it. The second drawer has another medal for us. We need to get nine in total in the speedrun. The Sword of Miracles costs six. And we're gonna get three Staff of Punishment for one each. Just because they sell for a ton of gold coins. And they're also useful in battle, too. It's really quite a lot of bang for your buck. I saw a funny jester in a town I once visited. His name was Panin, I think. He could probably make the king laugh. Where could he be now? Okay, now... Return to Havil. <coughs> hmm. Oops. The effect of the fairy water wore off again. Ray. We'll stop by Keelion. We need a magic key to get in, though. We'll be back later. That was Healy, by the way, on the left side. I'll talk to him, because it's really, really lots of lore. Okay, once we're past the sign, I think, is when we want to use another... Oops, Tony doesn't have it. Bray has it.
Okay, and I need it to be daytime here, perfect. So the Panon, the Jester, who I guess is like a stand-up comedian, performs in this town at nighttime, so in the daytime he's uh, off shift, you know, just chilling with the manager. Come with you? Yes. I see. The King of Stancia has the Zenithian helm you'll need for your journey, and to get it, you'll need my talent. By any chance, do you intend to go to Zenithian Castle? No, you don't have to tell me. I understand. I'll accompany you. Do 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 And join the party. And went ahead first and got into the wagon. You can press B to go the other way on your return list. Alright. Ooh man marching teams. So there's some boss fights in chapter five where your entire team um Actually you know what? Let's let's be clever about this. Let's go both the pajama guys together at once. So yeah, there's a lot of boss fights in Chapter 5 where your entire wagon gets experience. Nice Toriyama design, by the way. Uh, we're not going to use Nara and Mara in any fights, though. We don't want to waste minutes of hearing about their level-up reports. And especially Tulun. I did say that... Oh, quick! <laughs> Tulun counterspelled the beat there. That's kind of funny. The beat does not go on, oh yeah. So, we need to get to the bottom of this cavern to get the magic key. But we have the whole wagon here. There's also a lot of monsters like flamers that uh, can attack your whole party at once, so we're just going to march in teams of two at a time here. Panon only costs 10 gold to revive. He's got a cloak of evasion, which increases his evasion rate by about 16%, according to uh, simulations. And 95 HP. So he'll probably be okay. Oh, here we go. Four flamers. No escape. Alright, there we go. Now we're only going to hear about one damage report at a time. Fourth one, 23. Uh oh, there's no escape. Okay, well, Pannon is dead for sure. And then four people are gonna jump out of the wagon. Either we. Okay, we do escape here. Let's reorganize to have. Uh, Hero. Actually, just Nara by herself, I think. No, Hero and Nara. Endo. I also need Nara to be dead, but it's okay. I can get her killed off in the next place. of darkness I'm never gonna need. Let's put that in Nara's inventory. Moreover, there's a button on the bottom of the treasure chest. Do you want to push it? Heck yes, I do. Is it the left jar or the right jar? It's the left jar. Okay, uh, we'll let Christo get the magic key here. gonna be around in, like, every scenario ever. It should be dark. Perfect. Turn to Endor. Oh, MP Gatari Nai. Perfect. Mara's not needed much longer anyway. Oh, oops. Wait. Oh, this is fine. Yeah, Christo can get the stuff. You got the magic key to break in. <laughs> Look how that guy just falls over. Yeah, this guy will take you outside if he sees you, but this guy you can just talk to. He's having an alright night. Upstairs, right to the king's room. Oh, and Prince Reed really did get married. How nice. 
Uh, this one should be the pink leotard. Yeah. And this should be a small metal. The other one's a feather hat. We don't need it. Return to Mintos. Use fairy water once you touch the coast. There's secretly a town here, built on the river! They sell some fancy stuff here. But we don't need any of that. We just need this small metal. Turn to Stanchi and sail west. Kind of thinking about that. When do I use my next fairy water? <laughs> there are nine small metals. Okay. Room miracles. Christo, I guess. Staff of punishment. One for hero. Wait, what? I might want to give one to Christo, actually. He does well holding one, usually. Actually, no, he has a... I'll just give one to Taloon, then. Since he's the cell mule. Come back anytime. Okay. Let's form my party before I go in there. Because this is where I have the whole wagon. Uh, we'll go... Nara, Nara, Endo. Actually, no. Hero, Mara, Endo. This hero is the most tanky person I have. You want, like, one tanky person and one squishy person, generally. Mara's out of MP, so it's okay if she dies now. This is my... Yeah, this is the super dangerous country I was talking about. What hero took exact season died? It's both of my return casters. That's really annoying. I had a magic potion to restore them, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, no one else can equip that Dragon Mail, it's like heavy armor only. Now it's Alina, Nara, Endo. I'm gonna have to Death Warp out of here and I'll be losing half the money I'm carrying, which isn't much. But reviving everyone else is gonna be annoying. Well, maybe not, actually. Well, okay, it will be. It's like, there, there's another, um... There's another small metal right there. I did this in the wrong order. I should've, should've had Alina out first. If I can sail back out of here... Oh nice, these fury faces are harmless. Mara is still paralyzed. Oof. 
Oh, she's taking less damage from the from the spell because she's paralyzed. That's so wacky. Doesn't matter though. We got wiped out. Now uh, the other two jump out. Okay. These are my last two living characters. We just gotta make it across this room. <laughs> no! They're so dead! No! No! We were two steps away, man! Two steps away! I need to get that chest to finish the game. It's an extremely powerful piece of armor. Not reviving Mara. Revive Alina. Oh, revive Panon for sure. I could see if I make it to that chest though. There's another small metal right in it. 130 to revive Alina. Very well, you don't want our service. If you change your mind, you can come back. What else do I need alive? I need Bray alive. It's looking at weird little trinkets I can sell. Something smaller. Sell the leather dress. I want to keep a feather hat around to change Alino's defense power at the very end. I know that sounds weird, but that is how it works. We're gonna keep Naramara and Taloon dead, though. again. It's actually what I want to do, but it'll actually just make more sense to do it uh, a bit later. Well, I'm already here. Yeah, let's go uh, sail up river. Fix my team here. It's gonna be Hero, Alina, Loon, Christo. I think Fairy Water's still active. This is kind of an obscure direction to go in. I like this. I sail up the sea into this inland river. Secret mountain country of Rosevin. What the? My fairy water roar off because I died. These guys are uh, a bit ahead of the curve for me. Sell my big ticket items. Sell the pink leotard. Sell Christo's other gear. Sell one of my staff of punishments. I need to get to thirteen thousand five hundred. Sold the hero's broadsword. Saloon stuff. Already sold most of it. Oh, Nara has a Morning Star. 
Yeah, I can sell Nara's gear. It's gonna be easiest to sell another Staff of Punishment. No, I gotta keep two of them, though. I just gotta. Hmm. Now, Alina does need to keep her Iron Claw. I gotta sell one, sadly. Okay, buy a Sword of Lethargy, Hero, and we're gonna get the best in slot gear for Christo. Sacred Robe, and Iron Helmet. Christo suited up here. Shield, iron helmet. Ah, <sighs> okay. Time to fight Kilion. And hero, Alina, Christo. Almost got the Zenithian armor, what the heck. Stupid lizard exaxes. I'm gonna fight Keleon first, and then I'm gonna try to get that armor again right away. Because it'll make uh, Balzac Plus easier. It's gonna be a bit slower because I'll be I'll be short one staff of punishment on Alina. Actually not really. I can get another one after this, once I get the armor. I don't really need it for this fight. I guess it'll take a bit longer. By the way, hi Ginova. Okay. Oh, equip swing. The Sword of Lethargy. There you go. Panon is equipped with one as well. <laughs> and this is a special weapon that has a uh, 1 in 3 chance on hit to put the enemy to sleep. So, even though Kilion is on the fast side, though... Ooh. Probably just go use no MP. Or so, just attack, please. Okay, Keleon's back to sleep. So yeah, sometimes Keleon is fast. Panon's pretty fast. Oh, nice Kaishin, dang. Look at my levels. You should not be able to beat this boss at this level, but my gear is just absurd. Oh yeah, you can use the Staff of Punishment to do more damage. Although I should probably just attack constantly, because yeah, see, he just woke up, Ke uh, and Hero could put him back to sleep. Ooh, Keleon cast Firebell. He had Firebane in the plot battle, he's he's gotten sloppy. Anon does a strange dance. I think this guy is like oh never mind. Wow. Even with the lower Alina damage, we're fine. And here's some full plate armor for Ragnar. In case he needs that. Anyway. This is uh, another big break. I'll see if I can put the microphone on the A button to hold it for me. Oh, it's working. Great. I'm gonna go get my leftover cheesecake. Whew. 
Happy 420, bud. Oh, we're gonna have to sit through a lot of level 3 Bray leveling up. There's a big Smash Bros. tourney in my town tomorrow. It was supposed to happen, but then COVID happened. It's been delayed by five years. It's only got 64 in Ultimate, though, and I despise Ultimate. So I'd be going just to enter 64, and then I gotta go home and have a nap, and then race Dragon Warrior 4 that night. I'm probably not going. <laughs> but otherwise, I probably would've. There's Snowstorm! That, that would be nice in Grinding Chapter 2, but it's just a little too far out of reach. It's only gonna happen if Bray saw two Metal Slimes die, and then you are gonna be determined to grind m even more until Alina reaches level 12. Well, let's call Sprite Flicker again. Very impressive! Hero, let's fight together to save the world! Okay, Ragnar has joined three minutes later. I'm 20 minutes behind my splits. Still on target for that 735 estimate, though, if that's what it says. Oh, okay. Oops, I don't want to go here. Or do I? Well, n not yet. I actually wanted to go to Serretta first, to heal. The Dragon Mail is actually for Ragnar. I guess I can give him this full plate for now. Sword of Miracles is also for Ragnar. Okay, I definitely gotta save again because I can't afford another Titanic Revival bill if this dive fails again. But with all those levels, my guys have much higher max HP. Wait, can Bray transport us? No, have Hero do it, because Hero... Hero might die. Hmm. Hero doesn't have Repel yet, either. I gotta use my last couple Fairy Waters for this. I'm just gonna let the dialogue box hit me when it runs out. I love how this is the boat music that went on to be in every other Dragon Quest game. Okay, let's try Panon, Hero, Endo. Wait, that's silly. Try Panon, Ragnar, Endo. It's only 10 more defense. I can give him an Iron Shield as well. I'm supposed to have that. Christo, give him an iron shield. Christo, give him an iron shield. <laughs> Thanks for the good luck to Paul Doug. I almost got the thing I wanted from this extremely dangerous cave. I was two steps away and then I completely wiped out. Dragon Riders. Oh, I should have given... Maybe I should have given Ragnar the Dragon Mail. That doesn't matter. He's still the survivor of this battle. Okay. Just do heal Ragnar, please. Okay, now we march... Um, Hero Ragnar Endo. 
If one of them dies, I'll replace them with Alina. Should have gone down the other lane this time. Can go down either. Alrighty. Three face is good, they're harmless. Okay, when you get off the boat, you leave the wagon behind. These are my only two characters right now. I should have formed up four of them, honestly. Falls asleep. Okay. Alright. The Zenithian armor. Can I make it one more step? Nice. Get the extra metal. What do you mean you don't have outside? You do, though. I have to go in and out of the cave again, I think. Yes, I want the Staff of Punishment. Give that to Alina right now. Give that to Ragnar, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is some weird stuff. I don't know how you can get the wagon back. Oh, fairy water has worn off. my last one. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, no. <sighs> okay, get on land, get back in the boat. Should have the wagon back now. Okay. Go to Serata. Thanks to Paul Doug for donating. Open Medicine Foundation of Canada. Elena has a staff of punishment again. And give the dragon mail to Ragnar. He gets an iron mask later. Just a sort of miracles goes to Ragnar. Oops, he has no room. something nice to sell to Taloon. Eating all this lag because I'm doing this on the world map. Okay, I think that's all the transferring I have to do, though. Now I just form back. <laughs> uh, Panon, Hero, Alina, Ragnar. Suit up my characters properly. Sort of miracles, dragon mail, iron shield. Heroes already hit it out. <clears throat> Beta revive Panon. And save the game! Time for our next boss fight. Josh County, I am continuing my quest. I wish you a safe journey. Return to Bray's hometown of Santim. It'd be way cooler if your return list dynamically changed. Like, you, as soon as you add Alina's party to yours, you get Santim on your return list. You could, like, structure the plot or progression of your game around something like that. I just think that would be real cool. Okay. All right, lethargy boys, get them. Uh-oh. Uh, Balzac attacks. I better just get my finger on the reset button. Okay, we live this. Yeah, Balzac attacks twice per turn. He's very slow. 
Ranger just got that 25% lifesteal on the, um, Sword of Miracles. Uh, okay, if we can't put this guy to sleep, if someone dies, it's an instant reset. This guy has 500 HP and regenerates 50 per turn. He's just tickling everybody equally, though, thankfully. One in three chance here on Sword of Lethargy. Oh, come on, hero. Okay, Balzac is put to sleep. <laughs> Lena had a medical herb. <laughs> I mean, she'll be too scared to attack if her HP gets too low. Oh, right, Balzac's very slow. So, um, if he's asleep, then it's definitely use staff of punishment angle. Yeah, Alina figured it out with me. Balzac wakes up. Oh, and out turned the hero. And Ragnar has healed himself just entirely with the Sword of Miracles. Balzac puts, gets put to sleep again. Yeah, Staff of Punishment helps me get in more damage to overcome that 50 regen per turn. That's kind of why I had to go back to the Shrine of Breaking Waves there. So that I could do enough damage to actually win, <laughs> even with Balzac being put to sleep repeatedly. Wow, took him down first try. And this'll be, uh, another big break. Use the microphone for that. It's impossible! My body is supposedly invincible is terribly wounded, but as long as the secret of evolution exists, I shall never fail! I shall... The experiment seems to have failed. A golden bracelet is necessary to perfect the secret of evolution. It's said the golden bracelet amplifies the evil force. When you obtain the golden bracelet and perfect the secret of evolution, the time of the evil force shall come! Ha ha ha! Wow, really? Evolution is the, the source of evil's power? Really? Hmm, these Mystic Dolls are worth a lot of money. Let's see if I can take one out. Oh, wow, that was easy. All right. I don't want this junk going in the hero's inventory. Put everyone else in front. This Flute of Uncovering is optional. But my particular variation of the route wants to get it. Oh, and now I'm going back to Roseville, right? Oh, never mind. We're doing, doing plot advancement stuff. Cast Repel. So Soretta is kind of in the southeast corner of the world, but there's no north and south poles in RPGs, of course. 
And we're gonna sail around the top of the world to end up on the north side, which is where Berland was. You know, Ragnar's home turf. But while I'm going here, though, it's not supposed to be nighttime. Oops. It's also supposed to cast Repel a bit sooner. Or does Bray have one left? No, that was my last one. I had mentioned that earlier. I am gonna... This is the closest I'm gonna get to Izmid. I'm gonna stop by here and add it to my return list. And I'll be back here later for lore reasons. <laughs> There's a narrow mountain pass I can walk into here, though. Hell again. Okay, Alina, give Christo his new weapon first, and Christo can use it. Magma Staff. A much quicker animation than Dragon Warrior 3, this will blow a uh, rock out of my way. Okay, now we go Hero to Loon. Alina. Christo, because he has room in his inventory, I guess. We need the Ghost of Taloon in slot 2, for reasons. Die to barrier tiles. Stick Alina in front for a bit. Alina obtains the fire claw. Great. Get caught upstairs again. This is where I used to buy um, the cloak of evasion. Stay in the end here to reset day night, even though it's like a fresh daytime anyway. Actually, I should have stayed at the end in Izmit. Or maybe I'm supposed to stay there later? Why don't you check the drawer? You'll find something. Hang on. I just noticed Taloon is not in slot 2. Okay, now we're good. What the thieves? Help! You bold thieves! You're under arrest! Come! Five hours ago, I said women are the best at architecture. They have an actual ceiling in Garden Burr. If you cast Return, you bonk your head on the ceiling. The Nest Card Prison Chant. Get out! The Queen will see you! I am the Queen of this country. I judge all accused. You're accused of stealing the bronze amulet. Do you admit you stole it? The prophetess says she saw you steal it. You still insist you didn't steal it. Then who stole the bronze amulet? If you insist you're falsely accused, then I'll let- I'll give you a chance to find one of them, but as collateral, put one of them into jail! And that's Taloon. Taloon knows what he did. He did his economic war crimes. Okay. <laughs> I see. It's time. Oh wait. Well, I just... I'm supposed to save, but I just... I just healed. <laughs> Why don't I just go straight in there? Well, someone else stole it. I'll go get him. Uh, just making sure I have lots of room. Crystal please equip the Magma Staff. I could go out of my way in here to get the Iron Mask for Ragnar for free, but I'm pretty sure I can afford to just buy one next time I go to Roseville, which is after this cave. Oh, don't forget to equip Alina with Fire Claw. Oh, what the heck? 
Alina should have one of the sister's feather hats. Whatever. <laughs> have you ever noticed how much RPG characters like saying, Come! And enough! <laughs> yeah, and a lot of screaming. Yeah, we got it all. I always call this dungeon Mount Moon because, well, I mean, look at it. Like, look at that first room with, like, the big square walls all around. So yeah, Hero's got a lot less HP than Ragnar even this early on, but also got the Zenithian armor on already. Also, don't look at the bottom of the screen or the game will be ruined for you. You get to see the game world getting drawn one row at a time. Yeah, I think a lot of that stuff, uh, Kaeshi, is like direct translations. Like you always hear fighting game characters say, Yikuzo! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> it's like what you say to start a hot-blooded duel. At least the encounter rate in here is very low. Like, as low as it should be. I mean, the encounters in here are rather dangerous, there's just not a lot of them. I feel like this is what the game's encounter rate was supposed to be, but then they just, like, cranked it through the roof everywhere else so that people would just be chewing through this game for, like, 300 hours. Kakatekoe. That's what Ken says when he taunts in Third Strike, right? Kakatekira! Seems sound asleep. He's holding the bronze amulet against his chest. Huh? It's you! No! You won't catch me! Everyone's at full power. I'll just get him. Darn! Wait, he like ran right into me. Okay. Offensive. Wait. What do my notes say? Offensive until stop spell hits. Okay. Well, maybe I put him to sleep with the Sword of Lethargy? Ow, turn one snowstorm. Got him with stop spell. I'm going to cast heal more on Christo so he doesn't get roundhouse kicked like that. <laughs> Bakor is building up power. No oh, Christo casting increase because Bakor did build up power. Perfect. Amazing critical hit. Got 1,000 HP and no regen. I can still do more damage with the Staff of Punishment. Now that we've cast Stop Spell, he can he can cast Upper on himself, and if that happens, you just lose the fight. Because how are you going to do 1,000 damage with just Black Magic from Bray and Mara? Come on. You, you either need the Sphere of Silence, or you need Christo to get off Stop Spell on turn one. But yeah, Alina can toss the Fire Claw for some damage, too. What the heck? Everyone is getting a critical hit. He's like half dead already. Bakor wakes up. Christo flings up the magma staff. Christo's trying out stuff too. Bakor was defeated. That's the fastest Bakor fight I've ever had. Very nice quick trip through this cave too. Two thirds of a metal babble as my reward. Ray didn't get it though, there's no wagon down here. shopping trip back to, um... Well, not quite. I'm gonna do things a bit out of sequence compared to most speedrunners. I'm going to get the Sword of Destruction early. I'm going to fight an optional boss. And I'm gonna stay at the end in Izmit for, uh, lore. Ted lore! Christo's level good. Oh. Crystal learns heal more, hooray! <laughs> Mercy on me! I admit my wrongdoing! 
Splendid! The queen ordered me to follow you. She instructed me to offer assistance if necessary. I'll take him to the castle. You return to the castle. Bye! Christo Hero. Again, keep the garbage out of Hero's inventory. Very important. Ragnar, you found the thief. The soldier who returned first informed me. Use this key to get your companion out of jail. Christo obtained the final key. Also, take the Zenithian shield from this castle's basement. It's yours. My people told me that you're on a journey to defeat the ruler of evil. I also heard monsters used to live south in the town of Roseville. You may find something if you search there. Oh, Alina doesn't have room. Ragnar doesn't have room. Why Alina use this agility seed? Well, she never needs the thief's key, so... Take that out of her inventory. Alina's agility goes up one point. Herb. Rearrange the party here to be, um, yeah, whatever, disorder. And like I said, the Amazons built good architecture in this place, I can't just cast return to leave. manually equip this very nice shield. Oh, and give one of the uh, sister's feather hats to Alina. <laughs> Wait, what? Not order. There we go. And the Conan bearer. Anna, Hero, Ragnar, Alina. Cannon in front because he's expendable. <laughs> so because this is really, really lots of lore 5, I will show off an obscure and optional um, dream sequence. You stay at the inn in Izmit. You can learn about a prophecy in Roseville here. Ismet has become something of a tourist destination because people want to have this dream. Panon has fallen into a deep sleep. It seems to have begun dreaming. Oh, I love this Super Mario Brothers 2 effect. That's Rosa in the tower. And that's Sorrow the Elf coming to see her, playing the flute of uncovering on that tile. Rosa, have you been a good girl? Sorrow. Rosa, I've decided to exterminate all of mankind. The world will soon see its end. Until my ambition is fulfilled, you stay here. Wait, Sorrow! Someone, someone must stop Sorrow, or the world will cease to exist. Please, someone, listen to me. Someone, listen to me. Oh, there's there's another dream sequence here, actually. I'm gonna come back here later. Uh, okay, now for more shopping. Okay, now sell the stuff in Alina's inventory. All of it. Iron Claw. All the weapons, I guess. Fire Claw. And the Staff of Punishment. Oh wait, it's it's actually too soon to to buy the stiletto earrings. Unless I get lucky with critical hits, I guess. Still be able to afford 
Got Iron Mask for Ragnar. Oops. Uh, sell something from Ragnar's inventory to make room. <laughs> Dude, there's literally too much stuff. I think I'm gonna buy an Iron Mask for the hero, too. <laughs> Just to have a little more defense power in this fight. There's, like, nothing else I can spend my money on for something cheeky. Well, maybe there is in the Endor shop, but... I actually can't think of how to get there right now. I'll keep that wooden hat in Alina's inventory, so I can switch her helmets around and such. Okay, Iron Mask for Ragnar. What the... what's in Hero's inventory? Oh, there's an Iron Shield. It's not needed anymore. Now if I'm quick, <laughs> another 13 defense power. Get this golden barrette out of hero's inventory. There we go, the stiletto earrings let you attack twice per turn. Oh right, right, I can save my game. No, I missed it! <laughs> oh well. I do want to save the game here though. Fireclaw would have been so much better for Alina, but whatever. Actually, no, it'll be fine if I get the Sword of Destruction to land. Alright, so this Sorrow Knight who's guarding Rosa's Tower. This is an entirely optional fight, but the thing is, the wagon gets the experience, too. And I need Bray to get that experience. I need Bray to, and to get a little bit of extra experience. You need a little more than just what the mandatory boss fights of Chapter 5 provide to the wagon. But this has the double benefit of giving, like, two-thirds of a metal babble of experience to, well, everyone in front, so... It shortens the, uh, inevitable metal babble grind that's coming up, well, pretty soon, actually. Oh, tactics. No MP, I guess? Uh, let's put this guy to sleep first. Yeah, Alina's gonna do one plus one. Oh, Panon got the sleep. Great. Oh, Sorrow Knight woke up. Never mind, we're back at it. Alina's just kind of rolling for critical hits until I... Uh-oh. Okay. Everyone's spells are contained, but that's fine. There we go. Just put him to sleep. Use the Sword of Decimation. This will take away his defense power. And we're getting them crits already. And it worked. And he's still asleep. Uh, I'm gonna go for a second one, even though that'll cut the remaining defense power in half. Yeah, I want Alina's damage output to get a little better. There we go. Still asleep. This guy can summon Chalanodons that, 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 that attack immediately. Yeah, there we go. Now, now our damage output is looking good. Uh-oh, Sauron Knight's awake. There's Chalanodon, who just attacks for 15. Chalanodon is put to sleep. Yeah, Chalanodon is taken out. Okay, so Sauron Knight just kind of... Well, I didn't lose his turn. The Chalanodon got to do a move. Now my... See, now my damage output is fine. Look how easy that was. You also get the Sphere of Silence, which is a, a fun toy in the Royal Crypt. You probably still don't want to use it, though. You could give it to Alina, but she'll always use it on the B-Band bars, and they start using Sweet Breath to put your whole party to sleep. Yeah, going to the Royal Crypt is, uh... a bit dangerous in the early levels. I also have to do the, the Colossus Walk. Which is... very annoying, so getting a couple extra levels before that is just really nice for keeping it stable. And now Alina's level ups are starting to get really huge. Like, uh, pretty much every character's levels get better the more they level up, but it's like especially true with Alina. 
Oh, I can skip the Zenithian armor split. I already have it. Next split is just grind it to Christo 26. And it's 26 minutes from now. Oh dear. Well, I'm probably still gonna be 20 minutes in the red. Alright, well, that was all I needed from you. Um... Where am I going now? Oh yeah, to Riverton. Now that I have the final key. Return to Serena to safety save. Didn't I get the Zenithian Helm now? Oh. this magic potion doing here? I'm gonna give this to Christo. Because the next chest I open, it's gotta go into Hero's Inventory. I think Mr. Holmes walks through here using a coffin, actually. Kind of makes sense. Wait, who got pecked for 15? Wasn't it Christo? Yeah, it was. Well, I guess my character is also leveled up. So their max HP is just higher now. <laughs> So yeah, this is the Colossus. This is how you get across the river. You gotta climb this Colossus and figure out how to activate it so it walks across the channel. <laughs> These Leonars and Jumbats, they have like, very high attack power, but my front two guys are extremely tanky. Got some very high defense power. There are still some nasty things to encounter in here. The main one are the Blizzags that can cast Beat. They can instant kill their characters. Everyone's favorite mechanic. Oh, the foes are bewildered. Perfect. Oh, it's right there in my notes. I was supposed to get the Zenithian Helm. Welp, no big deal. If I get to the other side of Colossus, I can summon my wagon and refill my, my team. Okay, there's the Demon Hammer. It's a cursed weapon. So, like other cursed gear in this game, when you equip it, you can't take it off. And it also has a downside. Now, what the Demon Hammer does to you is it makes it so your attacks are likely to miss. But if they do land, it's a guaranteed critical hit. I think there's a, a certain application for that. We're gonna use it to go metal babble hunting. Hero may be the only character we can control. Although maybe... I've also heard of people giving the demon hammer to Ragnar. Although, uh... We already know that our computer-controlled allies. They basically attack the thing that can deal the most damage. So they're going to attack the Metal Babbles last every time. So Ragnar is going to be no help killing the other mooks. <laughs> the other, well, between Ragnar and Hero, one of them gets a Demon Hammer, one of them gets a Sword of Lethargy. Which, you know, if it does do one damage to the Metal Slime, might put it to sleep. Yeah, it's better off... yeah, you want to you want to give Le um, Ragnar the Sword of Lethargy. Because he has very low agility, he's always going to go last. So everyone on your team uh, clears out the other enemies and then Ragnar goes last and sees, oh, there's a middle bevel left. I guess I'll try to hit it for one and put it to sleep. 
Whereas Hero with the Demon Hammer can always aim for the Metal Slime, or the Metal Babble. Okay, I'm just gonna jump up to the right. No wagon needed, I think. I think I need to cast Repel again pretty soon. I did win that fight versus the Sorrow Knight with Pannon on my team, so... The game still thinks my average level is very high. Oh, I'm getting the Yolus Shield. Hmm... Okay, what do I take away then? I don't need the Sword of Decimation for a while? Oh no, the Sword of Lethargy is going to Ragnar. There you go. Sword of Miracles is going to Christo. Oops, Christo can't carry any more things. Christo doesn't need a magic key anymore. But I can't give that to someone in the wagon. I didn't go get the wagon. I'll do more equipping when I when I get to Stancia. Trade in Panin for the Zenithian helm. This is Dire Palace. This is the the headquarters for the monsters. I guess this is their capital. We're just slinking around to steal something neat from their treasury. We're here to get a thing that is usually called the Tempest Shield in other Dragon Quest games. Also, there's a small medal in the bottom left chest if you're on some route that like goes back to the Shrine of Breaking Waves later. You could probably get a Hat of Happiness. Yeah, this Tempest Shield has a certain use. Okay, the wagon's back. Oh, right, I have to put Panon in front. And I gotta make room in the hero's inventory. Oh dear, here's that second iron mask that I just don't need anymore. It was like the most short-lived iron mask ever. Come to accept the king's challenge. Yes, the king of Stantia has a contest where whoever can make him laugh will win the Zenithian helm. He wants to cheer up his country because his people have lost hope. In this uh, growing monster climate, you know, rumors of monsters evolving and transforming, etc., etc. Alright, so we gotta wait in line. There is no lineup skip. There's enough time to go over to the Princess's, princess's garden over here and frolic in a circle in the flower garden, but uh, whoops, I got blocked off. There we go, my turn. Your name is Panin? Make me laugh. What's the matter, Hayaku? Allow me to speak. I can't make you laugh. However, I believe the people who brought me here surely can. Please give them the Zenithian helm. They will save the world and bring about the days and everyone will be able to laugh without worry. Panin, you perceive my true intention. I thought if I brought lots of funny entertainers here, they would make my people happy, but I realized you can't cheer up people who have lost hope. Your request is well taken. I place all my hope in you. Take this Zenithian help. Okay. Now, what the heck, it's time to go to Endor to prepare, I guess. Random nighttime, okay. Hero, Ragnar, Alina, Christo. Let's do all my equipping in here now. You get a demon hammer. <clears throat> all three Zenithian gear. You get sort of lethargy. You get sort of miracles. Okay, let's begin. Oh. Ragnar, get rid of that magic key. Give it to one of the ghosts. You can find middle babbles in this first floor, but, um, it's unlikely. <laughs> Some people try to get a metal babble kill on the top floor, and that's how Bray gets all that missing experience he needs, but it's not worth it. Especially if, like, this is the first thing you do when you get here. These random crit battles are hard to win this early on. Oh, speaking of hard to win, I'm gonna have to get to that bottom floor somehow. <laughs> I 
Not the bottom floor. There's a there's a healing pad on the way down. Like halfway down. But I didn't heal, I just went straight from Colossus into here. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh, the foes suddenly attack. Ow. <laughs> All those manual healing, oh man. Alright, this is what the Yola shield is for. It casts a type of expel that... Well, it's defeat element. It's the same element as beat and defeat. But you don't get experience points for foes that are blown away. That was a real good uh, initiative by the hero there. Wow, I'm kind of I'm getting wrecked even in just the first room. And I'll just try to attack the Tyranno bat. They're gonna try to oh what the Christo knows beat already. Killing a Sorrow Knight early has been great. Oh okay, let's go north. So yeah, heroes inventory is full of items that are useful. The Yola Shield has a much higher defense power than the Ragnar's Iron Shield, by the way, so when I'm done with it here, it'll be a strong shield for Ragnar. There's a Staff of Anti-Magic in there, which you could give to Alina for more spell sealing, but it's uh, kind of funky. I knew they are going to attack the B-Band Bars first. Oh, nice, the Demon Hammer landed. The more dangerous enemy there. Crystal Cast Beat. The beat goes on, yeah. And yeah, we're here to grind, so... If we see battles that do not have a, a metal babble, well, we'll just win them. Well, you know, we'll get a little bit of chip damage on... the big grind that we're working on. Our goal here is to get Christo to level 26. <gasps> hey, Teru. Ugh, Metal Babble runs away. So this, this verge right here is where I'm gonna be pacing back and forth to look for Metal Babbles. I have to go a little past it first, though get to the, the heal tile. Actually, let's go offensive. That worked well last time. Nice demon hammer. Hero going first. A <laughs> macho man quote. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like... Yeah, two diverging paths here. The paths of destiny. I can't believe Mitsuru uses Marin Karin so much. She's so useless, says player who never interacted with the tactics menu. Meanwhile, why are people complaining about Christo casting instant kill magic on enemies that it works on? Your computer-controlled allies are secretly studying the monster's weaknesses, you know. After encountering this- like, after studying the same thing for eight turns, or, you know, in eight different turns of random encounters, they'll start to go like, oh, this spell actually works on these guys, and, and we'll do so accordingly. Dang, Demon Hammer is so accurate today. Magma Staff putting in work, too. Ambalba was defeated. I think that's the same name as uh, Funbaba from Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> Ambalba! No! Oh, Metal Battle ran away! Ragnar is paralyzed. I forgot they can do that. <coughs> hmm. Hmm. Water's all gone. Okay, Ragnar will be fine. He just has to walk for like 15 steps. In fact, I'm not gonna walk on the verge here. Oh, uh-oh. Ragnar's still paralyzed. 
These Dragonists are 100% vulnerable to Expel, at least. Ragnar's taking half damage from spells while paralyzed. Dragonets are attacking instead of breathing fire. I love to see it. Yeah, so Hero has resistance to magic and breath weapons thanks to the Zenithian armor. Someone just gained 20 HP from leveling up. It was Ragnar, right? Yeah, what a beast. Oh, there we go. Ragnar's recovered already. Yeah, it was Ragnar, thanks to Paul Doug. Yoga Shield always cleans these guys up. We'll give Alina a chance to kill one. Oh, Hero is paralyzed. Yeah, this, this game has a bug, actually, and your shield does not give you any special resistances. Unless you're not wearing any chest armor. I guess it's like a weird, like, wired in series thing. Or I guess like a, you know, branch to skip ahead if, you know, type of instructions. Christo has spell resistance with the sacred robe, but he has a very low max HP. There's breath weapons that do 30 damage in here, and Christo has 90 max HP, so... Any encounter with multiple dragonets could be like, uh-oh. Metal Babble casts Blaze. Ebanbar casts Firebane. Yeah, there we go. This hero and Christo taking less damage. Ebanbar does not die to beat. Balba emits a fireball, sitting through multiple damage reports every turn. Demon Hammer misses this time. Demon Bar taken down. Metal Babble runs away. Christo attacks for lethal. You don't get the lifesteal from Sword of Miracles if it's a lethal blow. Christo's level goes up. Very nice, plus 5 HP. Maybe I should be using the Hero's MP to heal. Cause I, my Hero can't spend her MP on anything good yet. She hasn't learned Boom yet. Even Bar hasn't seen me, I'm just gonna run. <laughs> See, cause I can just get into this encounter. <coughs> Metal Babble A casts Fireball. Oh, it was a 7 vitality level up. Yeah, that'll do it. 1 damage from Alina, miss from the Demon Hammer, miss from Ragnar, 1 damage from Christo. Christo heals 1 HP. Metal Babble A stays. After taking 2 damage, Alina finds a critical hit. 10,050 experience for everyone on my team. Should be more than a level up this early on. Basically, every Metal Babble will give me a level up. The goal is to kill 7 in total, usually. Although, because I killed the Sorrow Knight, I'm kind of starting with, like, two-thirds of a Metal Babble. The thing is, Christo can also spend his MP on beat, so... Christo's MP is more valuable in a way. Basically trying to figure out, like, how do I... sustain myself long enough? Like, how do I make Hero and Christo run out of MP simultaneously? To make the trip back upstairs to the heal tile more worthwhile. You know, as efficient as possible. And once I've killed like three or four metal babbles, I'll start walking to the end of the royal crypt, which has the staff of transform that I need for plot progression. Thank you. 
Ooh. Maybe my demon hammer can find a kill here. Christo found out the beat works on Dragonets about 50% of the time. That's a lot of staying metal babbles. Oh, beat didn't work. Dragonet B is put to sleep. Metal Babble C cast Blaze. Metal Babble A attacks. Dragonet B was defeated. Metal Babble D cast Blaze. Three of them are staying here. Beat didn't work again. No. I should put them on use no MP. They would have been they would have been helping me attack by now. Metal Babble D ran away. Metal Babble A stays. Metal Babble C stays. The other Dragonet is half dead. The the others should join in and helping me kill now. No the. Okay, Metal Babble C died to the Demon Hammer. One of Alina's stiletto earrings got in there. Metal Babble A runs away. Okay, only one kill after all that. Kind of unfortunate, like beat failing twice. Just those sort of miracles damage would have worked way better. Learn Fend Spell. That's gonna be a key spell for winning the final battle. Fend Spell is very broken, and it's obvious why they didn't put it back in later Dragon Quest games. It's a... It's a lingering effect. Like, it never goes away, like in any of the NES games. Uh, you cast it on one target, ally or enemy, and it makes them unaffected by spells for the rest of the battle. So healing spells won't reach them, no damage spells, and, uh, you know, no, no spells of any kind will reach them. Okay, there we go. Christo has Vivify now, that's great. So the heal tile will not revive dead characters. So as long as I keep everyone alive, as long as I keep Christo alive, Christo can revive everyone else. Iranobat is bewildered. Thanks for the crit, Alina. Demon Hammer missed. Iranobat A does not pass away. You got lucky the first time, I guess, Christo. Ibanbar. Yeah, I was. I guess I was just hoping Christo's beat would take out the dragon its for me. attacks. A cast Blaze. Alina does one damage to A. Christo misses. Metal Babble A dodges the Demon Hammer and Ragnar misses. Metal Babble A cast Blaze. Alina outturns B. B cast Blaze. One more damage to A. The Demon Hammer hits B. The other one's got two damage on him. Three damage now. Metal Babble A goes first and attacks. Alina misses twice. Christo dodged. Demon Hammer misses. Ragnar misses. A stays. Alina finds a crit. I got two kills. Time to start walking to the end. You might find more metal babbles on the way. And if it doesn't work, we just uh, complete the lap and come back to this spot. This is the best spot to hunt for metal babbles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. Look at these giant Alina level ups. Five strength, six vitality, six agility. Well, vitality is just kind of a preview of how much max HP you're going to gain. It's a very silly stat. My hero is a bit underleveled in a way. My hero did not get 2100 from the lighthouse fight, so she's behind a fifth of a metal babble. Alright. Well, that works. My caster's MP was getting low. Dragonit appears. 
spell will clean them up. Hmm, uh oh. Okay, moving on. There's that staircase we went down a while ago. They're all gonna go after the Humbalba first. Yoink, yoink, yoink. Why is the Sphere of Silence still in Hero's inventory? When am I, like, ever going to use that, realistically? Maybe I'll give it to Alina in the tree? I feel like I've tried it before. Ever just try to demon hammer the Tyranno bat. <laughs> Nothing else I can do. Oh, this will be a good magma staff. Yeah, finish off on Balba. Your allies can see how much HP enemies have remaining. Like if if Bray sees the the foe has like 10% HP left, you'll go, yeah, I'll just attack. Try to hit it for like one damage or with his venomous dagger he thinks he has. Uh oh. This is a nasty surprise round. Crystal's gonna <laughs> took max damage from the breath attack. 40 big ones. Uh, oh nice, the dragon had attacked, and the other one got expelled. Oh, Mavis and Mudhead, uh, you're expelled! Wait, not you. Use heroes in. One more overzealous heal for Alina. Metal Babble appearance. Metal Babble runs away. Oh, Alina taking out a Humbalba in one shot. And yep. And the beat goes on, yeah. Demon Hammer misses. What the KD? Doesn't work on anyone. Ambalba is defeated by Beat. Ragnar makes Tyranobat A half dead. Okay, hero's inventory is full, so opening this chest should be no big deal. So it's level 24 already, so two more metal babbles, we should be done. Ragnar obtains the Staff of Transform. Perfect. Couple of wasted seconds from all the arrow tiles and such, but I'm back on the screen with the grinding spot. Hmm. Actually, I should maybe use Sphere of Silence on Vivenbar. Never mind, Vivenbar is always going to be the first to go. Can give Alina the Sphere of Silence and we just watch all the chaos. <laughs> what the? Hema Sword. They're very spell resistant. That's unfortunate. 
They're also kind of tanky as well. Yeah, that was a very helpful demon hammer hit. I guess they aren't any more tanky than anything. <laughs> Ragnar still does okay damage to them. Alina does okay damage to them. Well, I guess one of them might live. They're just both gonna double cast Firebane. Oh! Christo finished off B for me. Perfect. Alright, let's see that horrible B Man Bar spell blocked attack pattern. Never mind. Right, I can use the Staff of Punishment if I want to do damage. Or my party members can win for me, I guess. Uh, this level has gone up. That's a nice level. And I learned Boom. There we go, I finally have something to do. I think these guys will just resist it, though. Could have gone with Staff of Punishment. Doesn't work. Oh, it worked on two of a, two out of three. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> Christo thinks he can add a little more, I guess. Staff of Punishment is right at the top of Hero's move list. Not going to be relevant for much longer, though. next bathroom break, but it can wait until I defeat Esturk, the ruler of evil, who will be my next opponent. But Hambalba is bewildered. Oh, why'd I do boom? Staff of Punishment would work just fine. Well, the seed did not pass away, but boom works on both of them. Okay, and I can just input an attack when it doesn't matter. Lena is so much faster than Hero. Nice Kaisha and Alina. Staff of Punishment. Works. <laughs> I'm leveling up from, like, the, the layup experience. Short game, from the pitching wedge. Metal Babble stays and casts Fire Babble. The Demon Hammer pounds. Right on. Turns defeat. Well, well. The other encounter has become more efficient. Oh, Metal Babble ran away. <laughs> Cloak of Evasion, let's go. Huh. Painless Dragon at battle, love to see it. Oops, the wagon isn't here. The Bambar A doesn't pass away. Oh, now we gotta sit through four damage reports. Ah, come on. Metal Bevel Grind is almost done. I just need to find one more. And most people go until Christo hits level 27, actually. Heal all. 
but I think it's possible to beat Esteric without it. I prefer to get more of my experience in the, the tree that comes after Esteric. That's a lot of easy farming right there. Huh. Dragonit A is put to sleep. A terrific blow from Alina. That 1 in 10 crit rate now. I think I gotta go visit the healing pad soon. The foes are bewildered! Get that babble. <laughs> the demon hammer pounds. Excellent. We're done grinding in the royal crypt of Endor. Christo didn't hit level 26 yet. We're actually not done. Huh. He's still trying. It doesn't work very well on Dragonets, man. Maybe I should just switch to use no MP most of these fights. That grind never ends. No, oh, this is why speedrunning is better than all our matchmaking forever games. I guess Christo casting defeat on the whole group. I mean, if it works on one of them, we're gonna prove our DPS. Oh, C is defeated. Ragnar is gonna attack one of the Dragonets. Metal Babble eludes nimbly! Oh. Regnant B was defeated. Oh, Metal Babble runs away. Oh, there we go. Christo 26. Hmm, 12 minutes behind my PB. This that's pretty close. <laughs> Uncurse the hero. Okay, I'm gonna fix everybody's inventory and then save. Oh, right. Forgot we have a cutscene here. Necrosaro's meeting. Alright, alright chat, what do we turn into? Skeletons? Wizards? Uh, tigers? Skeletons! Skeleton warriors! Let's go. Damn bony boys. Quiet, Necrosaro will arrive shortly. 
Everyone, something terrible has just happened at Actemto. Esther, the ruler of evil, seems to have revived. It seems men dug too deep and reached the evil world. We must go to Actemto now. We'll bring Esther to our castle. Okay, and then you just go around the corner and the strange force will go away. Okay, that's my Necrosaro's meeting split. Alright. Sword of Lethargy goes back to Hero. Sphere of Silence goes in the garbage. Yolo Shield goes to Ragnar. Sword of Miracles goes to Ragnar. Skeletors! Right, return to Actemta. Oh, adding one more place. Made for a nice page. Press B and it's right there. Alright, so I can't use Repel to get rid of these encounters, but it's still the same encounters from Chapter 4, and I'm so overleveled that the game will let me run away from them first try. <laughs> but after that, when we get to the new part of the mine that the humans have just broken into, then we'll get some real encounters. Baby Salaman! Play the night when you're in the mine. My favorite Frank Zappa, uh, sea shanty. Uh-oh. Oh, no, 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 no. That was almost disastrous. <laughs> Garswall rooster. Or is that garlic coil rooster? I don't know why I'm so convinced it's like a weird French word. And it's like, it's garswall. Not garcoil. I played this game in Japanese. I can't remember what name those blue chickens had. I don't know if I saw one, actually. <laughs> yeah, we got them dragon riders back. Eat those guys. They act twice per turn, and it's in a set pattern of attack, breath, attack, attack. These Necrodanes. Uh, you can actually get one to appear as early as Chapter 4 if you really want. Trying to remember. I think you want to use Christo's MP to heal, actually, for the walk. There's a healing tile I can walk on part way. Anyway, uh, remember those silver tarot cards that uh, I gave to Nara as a weapon? You can use them in battle, and you draw like random cards with um, various effects. Most of them are not beneficial, <laughs> but yeah, if you draw every card in the deck and then use them again. It'll just say, Nara draws the card of death, and then Necrodane, the Emissary of Death, appears on the enemy side of the field. So Necrodane has 90 HP, but, like, its stats are so out of whack in Chapter 4 that, like, even Orin can barely hit the guy, and, and it does, like, it'll one-shot your sisters. Necrodane will attack for, like, 40 or 50 damage, I think. Freaking Chaos Hoppers. I need to get my notes here. Cast Zap on this Turk while he sleeps. Hit him while awake to make him waste turns. I make, I make it sound so easy. Seems like I should keep MP on Hero because I can, you know, use it creatively. <laughs> Oops, it's Ragnar and Hero who have taken damage. Uh-oh. Ragnar eludes nimbly! Man, this is gross. I think I'm just gonna... I almost wanna turn around and, like, just 
walk on the healing pad rather than like manually montan all this. Dang, my front row just taking so little damage from these attacks though. Oof, okay. Costly one. Where'd that magic potion go? Who has it? Christo's carrying it. Perfect. It's actually about to come in handy. <laughs> Garswall. Exactly. Sheesh, these double Dragon Rider turns. No, the triple escape fail! Christo's gonna die and I have to leave. Triple escape fail versus Dragon Riders equals Christo dies every time. He takes more damage than he has HP. And guess what? There's a strange force in Necrosaro's palace. So, in fact, I think there is on, on this screen, even. Oh, I might be getting the quick ride out of here. Yup. I can hit reset. <laughs> Dang, that was gross. i to take two runs at the walk to Esterk. That was, like, exactly the halfway point, too. Sure, everyone's got their best in slot gear on. Yeehaw. Thought I was watching Nocturne for a moment. This game trained me for Nocturne. This game's harder than Nocturne. Way harder than Nocturne. At least the speedrun, I think. But like. Bad luck hitting you? That happens like three or four times more rapidly in this run than in Nocturne. Like triple escape fail versus Dragon Riders, Christo dies. Yeah, that's like 160 damage. Anywhere from like 120 to 160. I guess if they all minimum rolled on every breath attack. Do 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30. <laughs> That's the only way Chris still lives. <laughs> One more Mott rejection! Hey, is that Matador on screen? It's a spooky skeleton with a sword. Dragon Riders, my favorite. <laughs> Mott going is a mood. Hmm. I think the game just recalculated my average level. Oh wait, it did anyway, I hit reset. So yeah, that Chaos Hopper was a free kill. I gotta win a battle with uh, Lucia and the party anyway. In the next leg, next, next area. Can't believe I just missed Matador. Shaking my SMH. Agrahorn. Extremely tanky and not even dangerous, just an epic time waster. Hmm. I 
Actually, I don't, I don't think offensive tactics work on these guys. Like, Crystal's gonna try to cast Beat, but it won't work. Or he'll just attack for lethal. Thank you, Christo. See, like, the Chaos Hoppers are pretty harmless. I guess they can cast Chaos, but it usually doesn't work. Okay, here we are back in, uh, Spooky Town. Esturk, the ruler of evil, has just revived because the humans have dug too deep, and this is what they found. It's this massive cavern chamber that's already open. Yeah, and there we go. Look look how dead Christo is. Uh oh. Okay, I need them to not target Christo. Okay, whew. Actually, I should use Hero's MP a little more. Alright, this place has a lot of treasure chests in it. It's got a very confusing layout. It sure seems like a, you know, a Dragon Quest Final Dungeon. Much like Baramos' castle. It's got that, it's got that feel about the place. And it's very foreboding. Lots of hostile architecture, like barrier tiles. Oh, Necrodane has the Sword of Lethargy as well, but <laughs> their attacks don't cause sleep on hit. They just hurt a lot. This is your little, uh, window shopping demonstration of the Sword of Lethargy, I guess. Ragnar taking half damage because he's asleep. Definitely healing Christo to completely full now. Can go upstairs and walk around on the barrier tiles and have a rotten time. Oh, nice. It's a real good surprise round. That would have been a lot of attacks to sit through if I didn't escape. More chests down there. Note that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this skeleton here. Esther made me immortal. As long as he lives, so shall I. I can't hop over these waist high tables to take the treasure chest. I think in the DS version, they changed that area to, like, you know, a three-tiered Incan pyramid or whatever, making it look a little higher to climb up, where the Immortal Servant is actually more of a big deal. I'm much more curious about the Immortal Servant. That is pretty spooky. Okay. Yeah, we're a good enough HP. Let's just fight Rhino King first. Leave now! No! You won't! I have no choice, then! Bengal's pretty weak. Alina will take him out first. Rhino King's got really high defense. And rather high attack power too, I should say. It's hitting even my tanks this hard. Rhino King is put to sleep. Rhino King was defeated. Defensive tactics for Esther. Esther has about a thousand HP. Timely level up for the hero here. I'm gonna learn Zap right when I need to, please. Thank you. Hmm. Christo, you can keep all your MP. You're gonna need all of it. Use the magic. No, I'll save the magic potion for like the very end. <laughs> All right. But Esther is asleep. I thought he woke up. What the heck? Guess I can try sort of decimation. To my own downfall. Crystal cast beat on defensive mode. Very funny. Hey, okay. shrink. Oh, Esther woke up. Perfect. You want to hit him with the sword of lethargy when he's awake, so that he wastes turns waking up. Uh-oh. Esther takes a deep breath. Oh, no. Uh, I'm a bit screwed now. He's gonna do Dazzling Lights while powered up, so it does double damage to everybody. 
taking a deep breath before he fell asleep there it was very bad for me. You gotta keep Christo alive. It's the only way you uh, stay alive in this fight. Um, I'll heal Alina. Oh, I recalculated because of um, Ragnar using... Uh, Ragnar getting a hit with the Sword of Miracles. Yeah, you can cast Zap while he's sleeping for more damage, but I have to use Heal more to heal everybody. <laughs> Especially Christo, because Christo doesn't have a lot of HP. Uh, I might come down to a damage range this turn. Oof. Christo attacks. <laughs> My guys know what is up. Okay. I'm gonna hold down the button here and be right back. No answer. Seems to be a corpse. I can't believe it! Esther the Great was destroyed! According to the prophecy, only the hero, a descendant of Zenithians, is capable of defeating the ruler of evil. Are you the... the hero? Necrosaro, we have bad news. Your Rosa, the elfin girl, has been abducted by humans. What? Curses! Everyone, we must return to our base. Oof, okay. Now we use Christo to heal... Just the hero, I think. I need to death warp out of here, but not right away. Oops, I was actually gonna say, maybe give Crystal more than 3 HP? Like enough to survive a Dragon Rider turn? There we go. Yeah, easy, just like I planned. It was a bit freaking loose, but we got there. <laughs> These Ryverns have very high attack power. They'll wreck anyone but a hero. Hero got poisoned. Okay. So yeah, I need to get a, a key item in here now that Esther's Immortal Servant is out of my way. But also the Strange Force is here and I can't cast outside after I get it. So the way out of here is to, you guessed it, we got a Death Warp. That's why I'm not healing everybody. Okay, Alina taken out. That's pretty good. Triple escape fail, but it's fine. Ragnar taken out. Boom. Gas canister get. Okay, now this chest, I think, is a mimic. Oops. Uh... Well, fail. Gonna clog my inventory for the rest of the run. It's actually this one. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do I do? I think I just attack Christo. Put him to sleep. Oh no. Use no MP. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> that Christo to take him out. You can also just run the, you know, waste turns. Which is what I have to do or else Ragnar's gonna kill this guy. This is why I wanted to keep a lot of MP on the heroes so the Mimic can steal it all to cast defeat. There we go. 
Cast Zap on Hero. Don't attack with your Sword of Lethargy, because you'll put yourself to sleep. Alright, this is easy. Let's pay to revive Christo. And then just use Vivify to revive the other two. Come on, I got plus three luck in chapter one. So that vibe if I could work a little more often. <laughs> Actually, I don't think that's how it works. I've heard it's supposed to be just 50% all the time in this game. Uh huh. That was like six in a row, was it? <laughs> My last vibe if I. Lena doesn't revive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, game. You win. <laughs> hmm. I get to stay at the end again here anyway. Well, I'll just try again. Bonk. Bumping into another boat. May I take a look at that strange canister you're holding? Wow, there's gas inside! This could be... Could you possibly give me this canister? I appreciate it! Come back tomorrow, will you? I think I'll be able to give you something wonderful. This guy is literally me, just napping until it's time to work. If you're not standing, you're not working! Am I right? If you're not getting sore feet, you're not getting a paycheck. Welcome back, I finally completed a flying balloon! I'll give you the first one, it's outside! Now oh, we gotta go back to Soretta for this. Behold, the WC-like balloon music. This is another place to take a break if you want. This game's world is very weird, where if you, like... If you go straight north or straight south, you end up on a different column, somehow. It's it's spooky action at a distance, is what it is. Oh, right. I've got too many characters. Getting in here where there's less lag. No world map. What the heck? Five if I works in a battle when I don't want it to, and then and then this happens. Okay, hero, Alina, Christo. No, I wanted to hit end. Okay, hero. Alina. Christo. Endo. Okay. Oh, this... This canister should not be in here, and neither should the Staff of Punishment. Just putting these in the garbage. Once again, we are... Crafting the hero's inventory to what I want it to be. Should be... Oh, why is the Sword of Decimation, like, so far down there? Alright, and I'm gonna go, like, 45 seconds out of my way to get this... This extremely important thing. Why am I casting Boom? First of all, gonna cast Beat and then I win. Oh, what the heck? Give Crystal the Sword of Miracles again, am I right? Actually, he doesn't even need it. Maybe I could give him... Staff of Punishment. Nah. Okay, there we go. That should be, like, at the top of my list of items. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, Staff of Healing. This is a fun item. If you equip it 
I think the things that you hit actually recover HP instead of taking damage. Ooh. Maybe Sphere of Silence would be useful here, after all. But I also just like Alina assassinating someone on turn one every time. Oh, Chris is gonna Magma Staff to maybe kill two of them? Aw, oh, didn't work on C. Oh, Alina will take out C and then half kill A. Oh, never mind, Alina doesn't switch targets halfway through, I forgore. Nice sort of lethargy proc, though. Look at this, 1,044 experience, so easily. Okay, the Snow Jives either do, like, 10 damage with their lousy basic attack, or they cast Blizzard and do, like, 60 to everyone who doesn't have resistance. Okay, Agar Horns, I refuse to fight. Oh, Green Dragon hasn't seen me. Perfect. Finally, a Dragon Quest game with dragons in it. Easy 405. They also just died a beat, by the way. Beat. Worked on one of them. Oh, here comes Blizzard. 41. 62. 36. Yeah, Alina doesn't resist magic, but the other two do. So yeah, I cut my Metal Babble grinding short because I like taking fights in this tree. Like, almost every single fight that you take, you'll win on turn one. It's like, just better odds than trying to run away. You just get free experience while you're doing it. I guess I'm making up for the 2,000 I lost from the Lighthouse boss battle however many hours ago. Like, two hours ago, I guess. Okay, the Igerhorn you can't kill in one turn. I don't think Beat ever works on them. And otherwise, you'll have to do, like, 200 damage, and then they look scared and turn purple and start taking half damage from everything. I could be using Hero's Staff of Healing to heal during the random battles. So yeah, this is indeed the World Tree. You can search on any of these leaf tiles and you'll add a leaf of the World Tree to your inventory. Oh wait! Just use the Zenithian Shield for bounce, that would be really funny. Uh-huh. Christofficiency. Radiant Wall of Light appears? <laughs> Alina rolling low for initiative, okay. Another easy 1,000. See? Ten of these battles is like killing a metal battle. These red cyclones are very squishy. They'll die to one Alina double attack. And these- this boom gets them like halfway dead too. Like Crystal's trying to... Oh, he gets the gold with Magma Staff! Magma Staff is just doing so good here. So yeah, as long as I don't have a Leaf of the World Tree in my inventory, I can search on this Leaf Tile to get one. I just want one of those in the Hero's inventory because, well, Hero's the only character I can control. So being able to revive someone of my choice during the final battle might come in handy. If something goes awry. Nice looking Alina level up here. Yep, 15 more max HP. So one of the elves on the ground floor is saying, I think I hear a voice calling from above. Come up with only three members! <laughs> yes. The stranded Zenithian Lucia is at the top of this tree. We're gonna rescue her. This tower is like pretty harmlessly easy to climb even with only three characters. So it's a, an interesting challenge. I'm not sure... Oh, Alina attacks Snowjive first. Whoops. Never mind. And the beat goes on, yeah. Ogre. 
You know, I actually think that Beat works on these guys. Otherwise, they're very tanky. <laughs> uh oh. Ogre attacks. That's kind of a strange and underwhelming name for this late into a, an RPG, you know? Alright, you see, now we're seeing green dragons. Here's an ogre. Wow. 782? That, like, wasn't even worth it. Please help me. I'm Lucia. I came here to collect the leaves of the world trees, but was attacked by monsters. They broke my wings. Would you take me back to Zenithian Castle? Yes. Oh, you will! To enter Zenithian Tower, you must be equipped with all the Zenithian weapons and armor. I feel it. The Zenithian sword is hidden somewhere in this tree. Shall we leave? Lucia, join the party! This is pretty funny. It's like ten steps behind you. Good job, Lucia. Oops. Let's go to Conan Burr. Buy the balloon straight west. I think I want to fight with Lucio while I was in the tree. I think I can cast Repel. Here's the town of Gotside. All I'm gonna do is cast Return to go back there. Uh oh. Alright. Well, here's my Lucia fight I can win, I guess. If I don't get destroyed first. Like, these guys have a lot of HP, actually. Yeah, look at that. Survived an Alina crit like it was no big deal. Uh, defeat did not work. See his heal all coming in handy, though. See it has water flying cloth, so she'll take less damage from breath attacks. C taken down. Another Alina crit. Let's go. Oh, Fend Spell? Alright, Christo, do 20 damage with the Magnus Staff. Sheesh. Took two, two turns to win, even with all those crits on my side. Now cast Repel. It should work this time. Alright, now we do a weird little elevator puzzle. Or not. Anyone other than a hero in front. Okay. This place is not a dungeon, we can just cast return to go back to Gotside, the new town that I found. Okay, and now we'll walk up with Hero, Ragnar, Alina, Christo. Okay, you have to have the Zenithian sword equipped, but they won't let you in the front door here. Remind me in 25 minutes when I fight Infernus Shadow to equip Swing, the Sword of Lethargy. Because I won't have the Zenithian Sword in Hero's inventory much longer. Oh look, I spent all of Hero's MP. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have to spend Christos to get through here. Or else I might be using my magic potion early. Rossiel trying to do damage, not very well. Yep, so here is the Tower of Zenithia. If you can climb up to this thing, you'll reach Zenithia, the kingdom in the clouds. This tower has got a pretty confusing layout, which I believe changes in uh, Dragon Quest V and VI. Although there is a Zenithia in both of those games. Dragon Quest VI was on yesterday for the DQRTA marathon, which is, well, still going on right now, by the way.
I think I remember how to find my way through here. I think I got a little bit lost last time I played this, actually. Yeah, this is not the right way. Yep. <laughs> Wrecked. Okay, it's not this room with five pillars. We actually do go down here first. Yep. And I think we go up the stairs, right? Not out onto the terrace. Out onto the balcony. Statue of Bird. These pit vipers have really high attack power. You look at it, they can even harm my heroes through all that Zenithian armor. Oof. Pit Viper B is on guard. Yeah, those pit vipers are surprisingly durable too. Ragnar's leg fell asleep. He'll be fine, though. Yeah, here we go. We're going the right way. And Ragnar has already recovered from paralysis. Most meaningful game mechanic since Dark and Final Fantasy 1. Demi ghouls have big attack power too. They got the same properties as the blaze ghosts I was complaining about in chapter two, where the they're intangible. Sometimes when you attack them, you'll miss completely or even split them in half. You can use expel on them instead. Oh, triple escape fail! This is scary. Ragnar has died. This might be to my benefit, actually. Keep Ragnar dead for now. Now all the attacks will go on to Hero, who has massive defensive power. Who is Barak? That enemy always lags the game when it's their turn. It's like the game can't decide what to do with them. It's like, should I attack or summon a curer that acts immediately? And it's like calculating what that curer might do, I guess. Often blocking is not strictly working. Oops. That counts as spending MP. Okay, we're almost there. Oh, I remembered how to play this on piano. Hmm. 16 minutes in the red, compared to my PB. Alright. Now that I made it in here with the Zenithian sword equipped, I don't need it anymore. Uh... Fawcett and Ragnar's inventory. <laughs> I think this is the... yeah, this is the last functional item I put in Hero's inventory. So we get Leaf, Dew, Sword of Decimation, Staff of Healing. We get four pieces of equipment and, uh... Oh wait, now that I've done that, now that I've been here, I can return to Soretta and heal. Come on, Krista, one time. Magner doesn't revive. Fine, I'll just pay gold to revive Ragnar. And I might need that Zenithian sword back in my inventory now that I think about it. Might not be Zenithian enough to walk in the front door. Yeah, I, I was thinking about using the leaf.
Oh, you can go in. One thing you can do is you can talk to Master Dragon, who will increase the attack power of the Zenithian Sword and give the hero 10,000 experience, but uh, you don't need any of that. You can also trade Lucia for Doran, the dragon, who's just far worse. So make sure to not do that. Okay. Hero Ragnar Endo. It's just like when we were going through the Magic Key Cave the second time where the Shrine of Breaking Waves. There's a lot of uh, group attackers in here. I never say AoE because, like, what's an area in a turn-based RPG? What's an area? Chrono Trigger has area because it moves like Cyclone that will, like, affect nearby enemies. There is, like, a, a sense of space in that game, even though it is turn-based. But yeah, look at all these mass damage spells. Red Dragon's casting Infermost. I'll just stick to my characters who have uh, way more defense power. You know, just cast Heal All on them after the battle. Move on. A terrible blow for 40 damage. <laughs> I think these guys just cast, like, Sacrifice. Or no, the opposite. What's it called? Farewell. They, like, sacrifice themselves to revive the rest of their team. Alright, so much like how Dragon Warrior 2 had the long and horrible Road to Roan, Dragon Warrior 3 had the less long and less horrible Path to the Necrogond. This here is Dragon Warrior 4's Road to Double Hell. The Road to the Evil World. pretty long, but uh, it's not too horrible, especially if you traverse it in uh, teams of two like this. Two most tankiest leading the charge. Everyone else in the air-conditioned Pokeball in the wagon. Bullbasher. These guys are called Hell Battlers in the Japanese version. Oh! Fairy Dragon suddenly attacks by casting Chaos and Sweet Breathing and... Okay, Barak got a, a mean right there. Oh, Heelmore would have done the trick, I think. Maybe have Hero do some of this healing? Come on. This is where other runners take... Other runners actually take some fights in this cave. So that Bray gets that experience that he needs. He needs, like, about... Well, I think about 5,000. But I already got my 6,800 from the Sorrow Knight. My Bray is already set for experience. Impostor. These guys are good experience, because they waste their first turn casting Transform. And, like, they, they turn into copies of your party members in, like, funny-looking big blocky sprites. Ogre Basher, not too dangerous, but has, like, a ton of HP. It'll take you, like, three or four turns to win. I don't think I'd want to fight Barox either. Like all the all these fights are so bad compared to the tree. And you know, I want if I'm gonna get Bray bonus experience, I should do it before the Metal Babel grind, so that the Metal Babel grind is like easier and not as long. So that that's why I think fighting the Sorrow Knight is the way to go. Even though I don't have a good time in this game, this run has actually gone pretty good. I think. And yet, I'm behind my PB. I think my Chapter 2 strat is just too... too wimpy and slow. Uh-oh. That was the triple escape fail versus the Hell Battlers, and now I have to... revive my tanks. <laughs> That's one back. Oh, Bray running in from off-camera. Okay. Hero. Ragnar. Endo. Vivify revives you with half HP, so... Okay, yeah, lesson learned here. Use Hero for healing, so that all of Christo's MP can be saved for Vivify. Oh, 
Oh, that right there is the demon armor, which I think sets your agility to zero. It's kind of a useful curse. But... I don't have a purpose for it. I think my gear is all pretty good. You can go south of the stairs here and get a water flying cloth, which is uh, best in slot armor for Bray, but... Every time I've gotten it, Bray doesn't get targeted... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Bray doesn't get targeted by anything, and so it brings objectively no benefit to the run, so I'm just going to stop getting it. You know, instead of complaining about, I keep running this game twice a year for marathons and I don't PB, well, just stop getting it. You know, give myself a chance to PB. Still have a lot of time. Oh, Zell TV is our next runner. Or the mod in charge of figuring out who our next runner is. Yeah, we're in we're in the last stretch. Ooh, a terrible blow for 105. Gilmore didn't quite heal all of that. Well no big deal. Yeah, so we're almost done the road to double hell, and then there's a gauntlet of four mini-bosses before, uh, Necrosaro's rather short palace with low encounter rate. <gasps> Midoru! Add Alina. Oh, and tactics. Sh wait. They're adding Alina, right? Oh, Metal Babble runs away. <laughs> Like, I don't need to change tactics, so I'm not bringing in a spellcaster. Arrgh! <laughs> Delete bubble. The hero's inventory should be full. Excellent. Equip the mirror shield immediately. I forgot to equip the Yola shield for more defense on my boy Ragnar. Oh, I should have jumped off the north side. Because, yeah, if King Metal shows up, oh, big sloth. <laughs> yeah, uh, King Metal can cast Firebane and act twice per turn. And when you take damage with a mirror shield equipped, uh, magic damage, that is, you reflect half of the magic damage back, regardless of enemy resistance. So Ragnar would take, like, 25 from the Firebane, reflect 10, and King Metal would die. And then I could sit through two minutes of level ups and just lose time. Happened to me in a race before. Best of luck to Ring and the Companions. Ragnar, Alina, Lucia, because she has heal all. She's better at fighting. Um, oh yeah, remember to equip swing. Talked about this. Oh, make sure there's room. In oh my goodness, it's going straight into Christo's inventory. That's perfect. <laughs> okay, uh, I gotta put this guy to sleep first. He's dangerous. Oh, thanks for the defense, Lucia. That's actually so clutch. This guy is the most dangerous of the four mini bosses. He's got some, well, the strongest attacks. Sometimes moves twice per turn. Okay, that was a ridiculous war cry. Come on. Uh, well, I got the defense down that I need to win. He's got regen as well. I do need to get that. I'm supposed to use the Sword of Destruction, but Lucia already did it for me. These double attacks are, um, troublesome, though. Just need my Sword of Lethargy to help me out here. Oh, Hero died. 
That's very annoying. Maybe I can win without him, though? Wait. Uh... The wagon isn't here. I can't switch Lucia for Christo to revive Hero. Can my two attackers overcome this guy's regen? Got 950 HP and 50 regen per turn. They are overcoming it, barely. Probably gonna need some uh, Alina crits, though. Uh, actually, I think they're just gonna lose. Oh, never mind, they won. Ah. Christo obtains the Sword of Miracles. Good, that's who's supposed to get it. And yet, well, the wagon isn't here, but Bray, and who's outside, gets experience anyway for some reason. There, your boss won down. I'm gonna go back anyway. There's strange force on all these places. I think going to Soretta is faster, actually. <laughs> this is like a long chat here with the uh, Zenithian in charge of Final Refuge. Repel and switch Lucia for Christo. Okay, we're gonna have to do some annoying uh, Montan healing after walking on barrier tiles in a bit. We also have to solve the uh, mirror movement puzzle here. Just go forward, walk these guys into the table, then go around. Seventy-five damage to everybody. Wow, it's morning and I don't even feel a bit tired. Maybe I am going to the Daryl Open. Be bad at melee. Not melee, at 64. Check the floor behind you. No, I'm gonna look to my side. You should have turned your back on an enemy, you fool! I think you just want to use no MP and take this guy right out. Oh yeah, this guy can block while attacking, except it's like a super block that absor like reduces damage by 95% or something. His, his defense is already low. He's got regen, so just attack and hope the Sword of Lethargy puts him to sleep. Oh, uh-oh. Healing spells increase your initiative, usually. Wait a minute, hero's damage is too low. I forgot to equip swing the Sword of Lethargy. No wonder it never worked. <laughs> no wonder Infernus Shadow almost bopped me. Better remember that for the race tomorrow. What the heck? Hero died in both of the barrier fights. Well, let's see if Christo revives Hero before I win. Doesn't revive. <sighs> Lena taking a beating. Lena blocking. Giga Demon blocking. 
blocked by Alina, I should admit. Nice Kaishin. Hero doesn't revive. This is uh, some of the worst Vivify luck I've seen in a long time. Oh, maybe not that long. Hero doesn't revive. I mean, I'm actually saving time. I'm saving time by not sitting through level up reports. I actually should go talk to Master Dragon now. So that hero, like, I missed out on that much experience. <gasps> One of the shields seems to have broken. And of course, there's still Strange Force here. I have to walk out of here. Hero doesn't revive. Hero revives! Wow. Okay, uh, I just realized I need to do some annoying inventory management. Guess I'll do it here. I'll put the Yola shield back in Hero's inventory, so I have to give my due to, to Loon, I guess. The next barrier boss is an interesting one. This is not simply one guy. It is the Black Dragon Bob Andrug McKenzie, who can split himself into multiple manifestations. The old Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. I've actually never had anybody die to Giga Demon before, ever. That was kind of remarkable. Okay. So set our tactics to offensive, because it turns out this guy is vulnerable to beat and defeat, and Yola's shield is the same element as that. The expel spell works as well, but they all start out in three separate groups. Each Andarug has 300 HP, so um, if Alina kills any, maybe she can... Maybe, maybe Alina can kill one of these for me. While Christo and I try to instant kill the others. Yep, Alina crit works. I've defeated Andarug on turn one before. Turn two is pretty darn good. Got full credit for all three of them, too. All mankind deserves to be exterminated! Glory to Necrosaro! Again, but the Strange Force works and contains return, so we gotta walk out of here manually. a short ways north and put the dew back in hero's inventory. I am going to need it. I always use my dew versus Radom Vise and then get another one. So I am going back to uh oh right, this goes to Ragnar. Just in case I want to change up his defense power. Yeah gotta watch out for that appraise function from Taloon. Alright now in here it's hero's MP. Hero doesn't need to use much MP. I kind of think of this fight as, like, the actual final boss of the game. Because the final battle is kind of like following a script and it, uh, should work. It's pretty interesting, actually. The final boss has seven phases. <laughs> Just the very definition of this isn't even my final form, like... If you guys thought Perfect Cell was cool, the final boss of this game is way cooler, I think. <laughs> in terms of a uh, fascinating transformation. I'm impressed you reached here, hero, but it's too late. Soon Necrosaro shall awake as our ruler. Only hatred shall remain in his soul. I shall demolish you. 
I'm the real villain of the game. I ordered the abduction of Rosa. Ha ha ha. So this guy is what drove Necrosaro over the edge. And has inspired him to come down to double hell and become the ruler of evil. Radam Vis is just called Evil Priest in the Japanese script. Very underwhelming name. But he's also supported by these three demi ghouls who do a huge amount of physical damage. Okay, luckily we got rid of all three of them on turn one. That's great. But as you can see, my whole party is limping here. Radam Vis is pretty fast. You know, he casts two spells per turn. Pretty good chance Christo is gonna die. We don't have group healing. And for most, uh, his Sacred Robe might save him, actually. Might save him here, actually. It did. Excellent. And look how clutch my Dew of the World Tree is here. Alright. Let's cast... Start casting Fend Spell on my party members here. If Alina's HP goes too low, she'll just guard every turn and spend the whole fight cowering until I use the Staff of Healing to heal her, so I'm gonna cast Fence Spill on her first. Christo's taking less damage from spells, he'll probably be okay. He's got a Sword of Miracles to help heal himself, and so does Ragnar. Use the Zenithian Shield, which casts Bounce for the hero. In the DS remake, they added more stuff to the story, so you recruit Sorrow and find the real evil dude who started everything. Yeah, Chapter 6 in Chapters of the Chosen, where you gotta fight those those two bozos, I forget their names, every time you want to enter the Chapter 6 area. That's about all I learned about, um... Uh, yeah, Chapter 6. <coughs> yeah, Sorrow's like another hero. I hear he's actually quite powerful. Learns Heal All, excellent. Well, I think if I get one more level, I learn Vivify as well. Okay, and Bray should level up from this and learn Bike Kill as well. It's a buff spell that uh, makes the attacker do double damage, although they lose the ability to critical hit. And there we go, Bike Kill. Four barriers are done and Bray is ready. Uh, wait, this hero needs an Ithian sword in their inventory? I don't think so. Okay. Let me go to Zenithia and get another Dew, and I will talk to Master Dragon. Don't come in here with Lucia and your active party, by the way. Oh, you want the Dew of the World Tree? Don't tell anyone, okay? I'm gonna talk to Master Dragon just to see how Hero should have turned out. I should get one more level from this. Just out of 12,000 from boss fights. Man. I'm Master Dragon. I rule this castle. I oversee the world from this place. Unfortunately, I cannot stop Necrosaro's ultimate evolution. By the way, the Hero, as an Ithian and human descendant, I bestow upon you my power of hope. Zenithian sword starts to glow fiercely. Go now, beneath this castle is the entrance to the world of darkness. Now, there should be a different dream available in Izmit. This will be my final heal. And I'll remember to go buy another sort of lethargy as well. Green has fallen into a deep sleep, seems to have become dreaming. <laughs> Cry! Shed ruby teardrops! Cry harder! Harder! Rosa! You! What have you done to her? Sorrow, you've come for me. Please listen to my last words. Please give up your obsession and come with me. Rosa! Those humans, I will let them suffer for this. I promise. Love showing off that extra scene. Speaking of Rosa... We go to Rosaville now for... The final big shop. I'm supposed to just sell Ragnar's Sword of Miracles and replace it with a Sword of Lethargy. <laughs> I guess I'll just do that, it's fastest. I gotta make room in his inventory here. Actually... 
Yeah. I mean, it pays for the sort of lethargy that I get instead. Okay. Uh, throws a, the Nithian Sword to Taloon. He wanted to collect the greatest armaments in the world, so there you go, buddy. You can have one of these, too. Pretty sure I don't need to bother with items anymore, though. Oh, let's, you know, save the game. Is there any other cool thing I can buy? Check out Ragnar's defense power. Uh, it's under 130. That's what I want it to be. Alina's is way too high. Yeah, I just gotta go hatless. That'll be when I get there, though. Oh yeah, and one of them has the Baron's Horn. Yeah, the Magic Potion. Lots of herbs that went unused. Cool. Remind me to use those herbs when I when I get to the final battle. I wish you a safe journey. I was hoping Hero would oh right, level up enough. Oh yeah, having Yola's shield in the hero's inventory is actually good there. Uh, right, because I had the Staff of Healing in hero's inventory, I can mercilessly spend the hero's MP to heal. And then Christo can have maximum MP available for, for healing and revive attempts. <laughs> Vivify attempts. Surprised to see me here? I've been running games for really, really long a thon for longer than you've been playing Smash, I think, Exor Doodle. <laughs> Didn't know you were a fan of the channel. Good to see you here. Maybe we should learn to speedrun melee adventure mode, or like Project M Subspace Emissary. I'm pretty sure, in fact, one of the runs that have been done on this channel is like Super Smash Bros. Brawl, all trophies, no hammers. It's like a 200-something hour estimate, and parts of the route including making a custom stage with conveyor belts and a sticker factory on it that just, like... It just has, like, computer Bowser, like, jabbing a Jigglypuff in the corner forever or something. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just, like, farming stickers while the runner goes to sleep for seven or eight hours. Found this channel not too long ago. Yeah, I've been... I usually submit something for every single event, which is usually, you know, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, or this game. In fact, this this game was my first submission for the really, really long -a series, and I thought, well, it's a long game, it's about as long as some of the other stuff in there, and it's usually not getting into other marathons because it's pretty long. And I think it's kind of funny to just have an NES game tucked in this marathon with a lot of, like, PlayStation 2 and PC games. It was 81 hour estimate, okay. I thought there was something in this marathon that had like a 200 hour estimate. I'm probably thinking of the one that started it all. Buffon's Baton Kaidos 100%. <laughs> which includes getting the shampoo, which requires like 200 hours of in-game cooking to hatch. They had like the little picture in picture of what's going on with Bot and Kaidos 100% <laughs> while the other runs in the marathon are going on. I think there's a tragically little video of that very first really, really long event, unfortunately. 
Oh, this has been a very nice walk. Just, like, nothing holding me up. Okay. Oh, I have to take the herbs from Mara and use them, though. Okay. That's our condition. We're all, like, so close to maxed out here. Just use it on Christo. He's the most at risk. Okay, we keep the mirror shield on Ragnar. We take off Alina's hat to get her under 100 defense power. Hero's got everything she needs. Double Sword of Lethargy and Sword of Miracles. Oh right, the magic potion. Give that to Hero. <laughs> In the silly towers of Hanoi Swap. Who has it? Christo has it. I want every possible advantage. Restored by 12 points! Oops. Ragnar has the due. Why do I still get nervous before this, even though it's just gonna be same old, same old, right? I have just awoke as the ruler of evil. Er, can't remember anything, but I know what I must do. I must exterminate you all! Defensive Tactics. Message Speed 1. The mashing is finally over. Cast Fend Spell on Necrosaro. Not on Ragnar. So this will make Necrosaro unaffected by all spells. At least this form. It's gonna change forms a lot of times. Okay, use Sword of Decimation or Heal Allies. Christo should cast Increase here. <gasps> I forgot to change the order on my guys. Okay, well, we get one Increase anyway. Doesn't work. Okay, let's remove Hero so I can slot him in the correct spot. Christo's attacking instead of doing the second Increase. Oh, wow, I dodged an attack like that. That's funny. Insert hero in position three. That's where he's supposed to go. Trying to get sort of decimation to stick here. Doesn't work. It's got a 37.5% chance to work, I'm told. from Alina. This first form has a thousand HP, I think. There's my second increase. I wanted to see that. Doesn't work. Okay. Uh, remove Alina. Keep trying to sword, sort of decimation this guy. Necrosaro is put to sleep. Doesn't work. Switch Christo for Lucia. Different healer. Christo has Vivify though, so if I try to bring out a ghost to coffin block my guys, and Christo will start wasting MP on Vivify for them. Add Nara's ghost in position two. Try Sword of Decimation. So, I cast Fenspell on Necrosaro, right? <laughs> Oof. Lucia should heal herself. Bray should cast Black Kill on my party if Necrosaro is below 50% HP and the Sword of Decimation has worked on him. And I had to take Alina out because her critical hits will take me out of this phase too soon. Okay, it finally worked. Necrosaro is put to sleep. Switch Lucia for Bray, and I'm going to use my Staff of Healing on Necrosaro to keep me in phase one longer while I'm still setting up here. Bray has Black Kill on Ragnar. Ragnar's attack power doubles. Uh, switch Nara for Alina. This is maybe a little greedy, but I can use uh, my Staff of Healing on Necrosaro more. Healing Necrosaro. Alina's attack power doubles. Necrosaro wakes up. Necrosaro goes to sleep. Uh, actually, wait. Remove Alina. Staff of healing on Ragnar. Break ass by killing hero. There we go. So my three main characters have tripled their defense power and have um, 
And I'll have by kill. You're doing double damage. Now I can use Staff of Healing to heal my entire team for free. As in, without spending MP. Switch Bray for Lucia. Uh, use Sword of Decimation to try to get through this phase faster. And, uh... I want to keep more MP on Christo. He'll be... Handy in the later phases of the fight. Lucia is more, how you say, expendable. <laughs> also, she has the defense spell. Might help me on uh, cracking Necrosaro's very high defense power here. There we go. It worked. Alright, I'll just use my Staff of Healing to stabilize. Phase 2 has less HP. Oh, 650. Now we're on phase 3, 1023. Oh, it's got an... Uh, let's hide Alina. This guy can cast Beat and Sweet Breath and such. I want to try to put him to sleep. Oh, he's already asleep. I didn't realize... Um... I didn't realize Ragnar got in there. Yeah, sometimes, um, when you last hit a certain form, if it's with a Sword of Lethargy, it's rolling the 1 and 3 to put the new form to sleep, which is just great. Yeah, I want to get through this phase quickly. This is actually the most dangerous phase. 1,024 HP. No regen. Here we go, head falls off, I get a free turn at the start. And this one is also on, um... Well, this one's definitely on a, like, universal clock. It goes Meditate to recover HP, Violent Blaze, as Freezing Waves, which is Dekaja. That's gonna remove all my buffs if that hits me. Attack, Violent Blaze, Scorching Gas. I don't know where we are in the turn order. I don't know how many turns have gone by. We'll at least get this off and this off. Ragnar flings up the Sword of Lethargy. I'm gonna cast Iron Eyes to see where I am in the turn order here. This will make me... Oh, wow, it was Freezing Waves the very next turn. Alright, so now I get three turns to... or two turns of attacking, I guess. Yeah, I'll just try to get through. I should... you should put Alina on the wagon, usually, so that she just doesn't take damage. But I just want to, like, kill the phases faster. No, oh, Scorching Gas. Okay, and then we get Meditate next turn. We see a Staff of Force is helping us do damage. Oh, right, this is the other reason why you want Alina in the wagon. You want Ragnar and Hero to last hit each for him to hope the new one starts to sleep. Okay, definitely hide Alina now. Sword of Decimation is more likely to work on these green skin forms. It's like double 37.5, I guess 75%? Actually, I think I've heard it's 87%. Oh, sort of Lethargy is not gonna work, though. Oh, Lucia died. What the heck? Well, she tanked a hit like a champion. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Add Christo. Start casting Vivify. Hero can Staff of Healing yourself. I think just casting Vivify while I'm setting up here... Oh, nice, it worked. <laughs> uh, remove Christo. Attack! Lucia will probably cast Heal All on Ragnar. Or herself. Christo took a beating, what the heck? Wait, Lucia attacked. Ragnar is still doing the thing. Lucia scrambles into the wagon. Necrosaur is asleep, great. Okay, we'll have Lucia jump back out. She'll probably heal herself. 
I've got enough MP, I can just cast Heal Wall on myself. There we go. Okay, wait, don't add Alina. Um, add Christo. <laughs> Christo's wounds heal. Trying to get a sleep touch on uh, the others here. We'll just use my Staff of Healing to top up Christo, though. There we go. Alright, Ragnar gets the last hit. Do we put the new form to sleep? <laughs> Cell looking. Uh, yeah, exactly. One of the longest NES games, one whole megabyte. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was put to sleep. Awesome. Well, let's just go all out then. Summon Alina for some early damage. I think these later forms have regen. Oh! Necrosaro already woke up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Run away! Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Ragnar got another upper. Let's go. Super indestructible. Ragnar. Oh, Christo taking some chip damage from gas. Unfortunate. Okay, just keep attacking. Put this one back to sleep, I guess. Oh! Here we go, the last phase. This guy's super dangerous. He attacks twice and either just attacks or does one of two different breath attacks or has freezing waves. Meanwhile, Ragnar's gonna be wasting turns tossing the Sword of Lethargy around. Didn't start asleep. Okay, so we're gonna cast Iron Eyes three or four times. So Ragnar can learn that the boss is immune to sleep as a spell. Stop tossing the Sword of Lethargy. Just attack, my guy. It's your only hope. Here's a preview of what we're gonna have to endure. <laughs> so our two main guys are probably gonna lose their buffs, but Alina still has black kill and two increases. So we gotta keep her safely in the wagon. We'll bring her in if either of these guys get the Sleep Touch attack with the Sword of Lethargy and put this Raging Monster to sleep. We should be fighting this guy at level 40, but here we are at like 28 instead. Alright, attack! Alright, well the attack worked out good for me. Please go to sleep. Yes! Okay. Bring in... Lucia to heal the hero while I cast Heal All on Ragnar. Okay, switch. Actually, just remove Lucia. You can only do one wagon move per turn. This final form has 1,024 HP, but yeah, I need that to happen. I need um, Sword of Decimation to work, which it did. So now I can start doing damage. Oh, there goes my buffs, but it's okay. I guess I can do critical hits now. I'm taking more damage from the breath attacks than, like, physical attacks anyway. There's no point in bringing in a healer. They cannot keep up with all this, uh, breath attacking. Okay, that's really bad. Hero died. Yeah, no way Ragnar survives this hit. Looks like it's not gonna work. All right, you bozos. The four of you have to win somehow. <laughs> And there goes Alina's buffs. Dun, 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 dun. There's no sort of lethargy. They can't put him back to sleep. It's it's over. <laughs> right, Necrosaro has bounce up, so whatever spells Bray and Lucia throw at him will just get reflected back at them. Tragic. It's been a while since Necrosaro beat me, but it, it just comes down to rolling the dice like that. Oh right, I should be switching Bray for corpses. Yeah, because Christo reviving one of the Sword of Lethargy guys, that's my out. That's how I win. 
Like, even if Alina double crits every turn, I still lose. I don't think I saved before, uh... ...or throwing myself at the boss. I'll just pay money to revive everyone and then save. Wait, I already used my magic potion. <laughs> I didn't gain any experience on the way. Oh, I could do an inform and sit through everybody's TNL. How's our time looking? I only have time for one more attempt and then I'm gonna hit estimate. Alright, so the, the answer is don't even save. <laughs> Just take another run at it right now. As soon as, as soon as I revive my, you know, important character. Pretty sure I saved before departing. At least I think I did. I feel like I'd, like, stayed at the inn in Izmit. And I warped somewhere, and then warped there. I thought I saved before heading out. Okay. Oh no, Nara and Mara are not at full MP. Oops. Actually, I think you want to do this again. It's the Hero Ragnar only. I wish the Mirror Shield actually reduced magic damage. Oh wait, we've been over this. Doesn't work. Oh. Uh, whatever. Just get him. Play doll is put to sleep. These things have a lot of HP. So, Sword of Decimation will be very worth here. Christo's beat works on them too. I don't have the Yolus shield in Hero's inventory though. Maybe Expel works? Oh. Bray's level goes up. <laughs> Let's go, Bray! Woo! Three more HP. Yeah, Hero just needs enough MP to cast Fend Spell on the boss and Iron Eyes four or five times. Attacks before you're ready. This guy has a really big fire breath attack. I hope he doesn't do it. Swinger. These guys are even more durable than Ogre. They're so big they're covering up the UI. Stop being so big. That is some unreal damage, by the way. My guys have some of the... the best armor in the game. They're still getting wrecked. Ragnar's got Dragon Mail to reduce breath damage. That's the best you can have versus Necrosaro. The only other option is going to Endor to buy a Sword Edge armor so that you uh, reflect some of the physical damage you take, except 
if I set up correctly, then Ragnar shouldn't be taking much physical damage anyway. Who is this guy? No answer. Seems to be a corpse. Was this guy about to challenge Necrosaro, or is he one of Necrosaro's minions? Who fell in a... like... a trial by combat. You can find the Sage's Stone in this palace, by the way. It's a bit out of the way. But, uh... It wouldn't help me keep up with all those breath attacks. Like, they do more damage than the Sage's Stone restores. <laughs> the Baron's Horn is in Alina's inventory. We're doing the walk again. When you see the Baron, remember the horn. <laughs> Alright. Do not save in the Imperial Scrolls this time. Do you wish to save? Nope. Go now. I kind of needed that Baron's Horn to, you know, summon the air-conditioned Pokeball with all my allies in it. Ooh. That took a while to load. That doesn't bode well. Oh, the clay doll did not get out of my way. That's rough. Casting Sleep More. Flings up the sword. Oh, put him to sleep anyway. Okay. Right, yeah, using the sword of lethargy can work. Actually, my hero knows sleep more as a spell. I should just, like, cast sleep more on turn one. But I kind of like attacking more, because that also does damage and puts the enemy to sleep. Every time. No drawbacks. Oh! I haven't cast my heal spells yet. Okay, Duke Melisto hasn't seen me. Great. I needed that. I should see if I could make, like, a 3D sort of sprite. What's it, What's that called again? Voxels? <laughs> like, imagine how awesome this palace would look from the front. It would be like a... like a symphonic black metal album cover. It would be... it would be so dank. <laughs> it would be so kvelt. True kvult. Look at all these spikes. Look at all this pointy stuff. <laughs> you know what? I think that is not the first time I've forgotten the Baron's Horn. Yeah, I did a run where I walked through Necrosaro's palace three times and fought Necrosaro twice. I feel like I've gotten good at all the inventory management stuff. So, yeah, not a lot of bad stuff happened in this run, though. Like, Chapter 1 was first try, Tournament was first try, uh, Lighthouse was first try, sort of. No, it was one and a half tries. Somebody died on the way up. Oh, these Ryvern Lords, that's some real damage, what the heck. Trying to breaking waves, I died two steps from the Zenithian armor. So I came back later. After beating Keleon. Um, 
Oh, the, the trek to Estark was like, it was one and a half trips there as well. I lost some time there on the way to Estark. Yeah, I don't think I can PB with this uh, slow chapter 2 route. Maybe I should go back to my routes. I probably will for the race tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh my goodness, the race is in like 12 hours, actually. <laughs> I always give the Baron's Horn to Ragnar. His inventory was full when I picked it up, though. I have had Flamadogs kill me on this hill, by the way, with a triple escape fail. Lost Hero and Christo in a single battle. Okay. Mara's Herbs. Once again, not relevant. Ragnar's like, hold on, let me break out that thing. Alina still has low enough defense for my party correctly this time. Yeah, Hero has the inventory of relevant things. Gah, who are you? I'm Necrosaro. I have just awoke as the ruler of evil for the first time. I can't remember anything, but I know what I must do. I must exterminate you all! Fence spell on Necrosaro. Oh, I was mashing B to escape from all those fights, but I've still been on message speed 1. There's increase number 1, seeing that Alina's defense power is not high enough. Necrosaro is put to sleep. Great. And I'll try Sword of Decimation next, even though I should probably be healing Alina. There's my second increase. Random crit by Ragnar, and Necrosaro is put to sleep, and the sword worked. Uh, okay. Switch Christo for Bray and start healing Necrosaro right now. Bray cast Black Kill on Ragnar. Switch Alina for Nara's Ghost. Use Staff of Healing on Necrosaro. It's a lot. It's really annoying to try to. Oh no, Necrosaro is almost dead. Or this form is almost dead. Uh, switch Ragnar with Taloon's Ghost. <laughs> Necrosaro is so close to dead that Bray is trying to punch him out. There we go, by kill on the hero. Switch Nara for Alina. Is this Staff of Healing on Necrosaro? Okay, that's by kill on everyone. Switch Bray for Lucia and attack. I thought his HP was too low, but it was actually too high. Alright, perfectly done. Uh, actually wait, keep Lucia in. Maybe her defense spell will help me. Can't remember the last time I came at him, yeah. <laughs> Use my Staff of Healing to heal Alina for free because her HP is not low enough for Lucia to notice. Necrosaro is put to sleep. Oh, there we go. Um, remove Alina. Put this thing to sleep. <gasps> Oof. The 
screen, the, the layout would have instantly turned red if it worked. Necrosaro is put to sleep. Uh, we'll have Alina out while he's asleep. His defense didn't work. Sword of Decimation didn't work. Still asleep. Doesn't work. Maybe I should just attack. Oh, defense worked. Thank you, Lucia. Uh oh, he's awake. Run away, Alina! Okay. Necrosaro's head disappears. Actually, always attack on turn one. If I can put this thing to sleep, that'll be great. Some free damage. I think all these green forms get some regen. Oh, nice defense by Lucia. Necrosaro's asleep! Kill him, kill him, kill him! And if he wakes up, we cast Iron Eyes. Uh-oh. Put him under, put him under. <laughs> okay, yeah, just skip the dangerous phase, great. What are you doing, Necrosaro? You have skipped leg day, is what you've done. But Alina is in the wagon. Okay, I'll I'll I try to top up Lucia next time I put him to sleep. Otherwise my two attackers can just go go go. I get a sleep touch. Mm, not this time. Nice damage output. <coughs> oh, nice. Dead Lucia, Staff of Healing the Hero. No, don't add Alina. Um, so I'm here to heal Lucia and then put her away. <laughs> Lucio with Alina. Let's get me a little bit of layup damage. Then we'll take her out. <gasps> sleep touch, sleep touch! Come on! Come on! <laughs> Let's just have Alina in for now. Uh oh. Oh, put him to sleep again. I'm like very slightly overcoming his regeneration. I'm gonna remove Alina anyway. Sometimes, like if I tell her to jump in the wagon, she might still be slower than Necrosaro. Duh. 
doesn't work. Okay, my guys have been debuffed. Not Alina, though. She was in the wagon. 108 damage to Hero. Okay, Grosaro is asleep. Summon Lucia. Sword of Decimation. Grosaro. Okay, wow. Um. Switch Lucia for Alina? Yeah, it's it's damage, I guess. And then just attack as much as possible. Uh-oh. Oh, Necrosaro back to sleep. Okay, that means I can add Christo at the back to try to rebuff my guys. Maybe. Or just to help attack. Okay, I think if Necrosaro is below half HP, we switch for Bray, and Bray will try to cast by kill again, because Necrosaro already has bounce up. By kill on Ragnar! He's almost dead, I think. I think, yeah, two more turns of attacking, I think I have him. And I just put him back to sleep, by kills on everyone again, he's so dead, he's so dead. Switch Bray for Christo would have been lethal for sure, or that'll do it. Okay, not quite GG yet. Time will be when I walk out the front door of Zenithia Castle. Ooh, is this my end? I'm burning! My body is melting away! Oh. <laughs> Thanks for the nice run, Nacho. You just said that about the DQ6 run that ended before I know. I'm Master Dragon. I oversee the world from this castle. The hero is an Ithian and human descendant. Thanks to you and your friends, the secret of evolution, along with Necrosaro, has been driven deep down into the abyss of the world. With the threat gone, peace will rule the world again. The eight chosen ones. I thank each of you. Ragnar, your performance was splendid. Alina, you performed with bravery and courage. Bray and Cristo, I commend your devotion to Alina and your contribution to the quest. Mara and Nara, I'm sure your father would be proud of you. Tolun, continue to benefit the world and its people with your genius in terrain. And you've proven to be an extraordinary leader. You won't have to return to the Earth. I shall allow you to live with us in the Zenithian castle. Eh, was wrong? You wish to return to the Earth with them. Very well, I'll honor your wish. The friendship which has grown among you during this journey is so firm, no one can ruin it. Hero, I assure you. <laughs> they are all nice runs, Brent. Yeah, the hard part of ending this run is, like, getting out of Zenithia Castle. Because everyone's, like, partying on the stairs and such. So you gotta go around to the right, into here, down the hall, where the goo was. And that's how you escape. Time's in three, two, one, here. I got a 7.40.19 on my timer. Five minutes overestimate. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty good run. It felt good the whole time. Felt pretty solid. And it got denied in a few places here and there. We even got the lore in there. We got to stay at Ismit twice. Anyway, the credits are six whole minutes long. I wish I could play the whole thing on my automaton, but um, it stopped working. I put some brand new fresh batteries in it, turned it on, and nothing, nothing. Well, I really should go to bed, but I don't feel tired at all. What shall I do? I love playing this on automaton, but I can't. I, I need mo I need an automaton again, dude. Oh yeah, the cheesecake. That's what I'm gonna do. Maybe I go to the Smash tournament today, but probably not. I need to need to sleep at some point to be able to perform for the race tonight, which is in like actually 12 hours from now. Go tune in to RPG Limit Break. The Dragon Quest RTA yearly marathon event is on right now. I'm racing this game tomorrow night, and this 
this is all the practice I got after being addicted to Fantasy Star Online again for the past three weeks. Anyway, I'll go uh, check out the Discord here, see if the entire credits is going to be on. Get some good rest. I would love to. I, I know I will. Go and rest our heroes. <laughs>